It is the final day of the Air Things Masters. Today we will find out if the first winner of Major in the Champions Chess Tour is either Timo Rajabor or Levon Aronian. So let's get ready for some action and welcome to the big final of the Air Things Masters. Welcome to my humble abode. This time I'll be playing from Moscow, but here is where I live. This is my usual work spot. I just want to see how he's suffering. Oh, 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 that Mystery. is serious oh. We need a very good mouse. There's the old mouse I used for all the other tournaments. It can be a little bit dark in here. This is a crucial moment now. I think Levon is bobbing faster than ever, Franka. <laughs> I'll certainly try to be in killer mode from the get-go. For winning, is not enough. I, I need some more. It is the biggest day so far in the Champions Chess Tour with the first major final in the tour. The winner will automatically qualify for the final tour, uh, the final uh, in September and take home $60,000. And to guide us through the excitement today, Women's Grandmaster Ivanka Hauska and Grandmaster David Howell. And David, Timo Rajabov in the lead. Is it going to be an easy way to the victory for him today? It's not going to be easy. Timur Rajabov was mightily impressive yesterday, but Levon Aronian, he is a lion, he is a fighter, and he'll be throwing everything at this last day to try and strike back. Now, what should we expect from Levon Aronian today? Well, he needs to make a comeback. He needs to play aggressively and he needs to launch those surprises. But there is one person that he is going to utilize the power of, mm. and that is Pontic. And Levon Aronian indeed did tweet. Aww. He says, last day of the Air Things Masters finals, follow chess champs, and then Pontic strikes back. <laughs> just, I, I love that dog. Do you think uh, that is maybe why he's posting these pictures now, David? He needs to get that sort of fighting energy from Ponchik before a very important day. Definitely. He knows that he's a player that thrives on inspiration. Yesterday, he just struggled a bit. He wasn't really in the rhythm. Um, but today, maybe inspired by his dog. Um, that's just the impetus he needs to win a game. That's all he needs to do, mm. win a game. Exactly. So it was a very tense first day in the final, but after three draws, all the tension was released in the final game. It was a tense first day of the Air Things Masters final. Aronian went all in for the win, but his ambitious play backfired. He's four minutes down on the clock, he's got a pawn less. Um, it does look like Timur Rajabov defending very solidly. He knows this has gone wrong and it's all his own fault. He was the one trying to win. He had the opportunity to repeat the position, um, to be very safe in this game. But he gave up a pawn, he pressed for the win. It's just all gone wrong for Levon Aronian. I remember that this line is very dangerous for Black to play, but I didn't remember why. So it's a mistake on my part. What about that last game? How happy are you now? Yeah, I mean, I'm not celebrating in advance because I know what it is. Uh, I've played against the Wesley as well, the, the other event, and uh, I was quite happy about the first day and then the second, uh, everything was really different. But it's a tough match. All of these games are very tense. It is indeed a tough match for Timo Rajabo. He was the winner of the first match in the final, winning that last game after three draws, and he did win finals day one. We do also see Daniil Dubo and Maxim Vashielograv. They are fighting in the fight for the third place in the tournament. And after Daniil Dubo won the two first games, Maxim Vashielograv, he came back winning the two last ones. And they are tied before the final day. But if David, if Aronian is able to win because he has to win today's match, then we will have tie breaks. And what will happen? That's right. So after losing yesterday's game, he needs to win the match today. If Aronian does that, then we will go down to tie breaks. They'll play the best of two blitz games. That means we will slash the time. They will only have five minutes per player on the clock for the whole game, gaining only three seconds per move. And if we still can't separate them after that, we will go down to Armageddon chess. White will have five minutes, Black will have four minutes, but White has to win to claim the title of the Air Things Masters. The winner will take home $60,000, the runner-up $40,000, and we see it's also a big fight for the third place where the winner of that takes home $25,000, and it is the top eight players on the money list that after two tournaments will automatically qualify for the next tournament starting February 6th. All right, well, uh, we did hear 
um, Timur Rajabo saying in the interview that he wasn't starting to celebrate, it was still a tense fight, but is that easier said than done, Yavanka, when you are in the lead, to not relax and just go for those draws? It is easier said than done, but, you know, we have seen how impressive Rajabov has been. He's been the ultimate universal player, aggressive when he's needed to be, defensive, and uh, yesterday he really proved that he's practically unbeatable, so mm. I think he can do it. What's going to be his tactics today, David? Timur Rajabov, he will be trying to get those types of positions where he can control things. He doesn't want to take too many risks. If he gets an option between a very dangerous move or a safer move, he'll always take the safer one, at least at first. But will that come back to bite him? Sometimes if you play too passively, that can backfire. Aroni is going to hope that Rajabov does get a bit nervous as mm. the games tick on. So it is a big day for chess. It's a festive day, Ivanka. And this is basically what our question of the day is about as well. Yes, so if any player wins, it's going to be the highlight of their chess careers. And we are asking the same question to everyone at home. What is your favourite chess moment? Mm. And it can be as personal or as impersonal as you like. And uh, Please tweet your answers using the hashtag ChessTemps. And of course, we'll feature them on the show. But the lucky winner will win one of these Air Things devices. I'm absolutely obsessed with this. And it measures the air quality in every room. And uh, brilliant prize. And please tweet us. Hashtag chess champs. He did retire from chess a few years ago, but has made a very successful comeback. Timur Rajabo, he was qualified to play the candidates to pick the next contender for Magnus Carlsen in the World Championship match. He did pull out due to the pandemic. And what a shame that is, because the way Timur Rajabo is playing, that could have been so interesting. Let's get to know him a little bit better. Timur Rajabov. Born in the same city as the great Garry Kasparov, Timur Rajabov burst onto the scene as a hugely exciting youngster. But as a rising star, he failed to live up to his promise and seemed to lose his attacking verve. Now 33, Rajabov, who has been badly affected this year by war in his home country, is firmly back on track. Timur Jabo, he is definitely back on track now, fighting to win a big tournament, the, the first major in the Champions Chess Tour. And it's looking good for him, David. If he really is back on top of chess after a few years, a little bit behind. Yeah, he's looking sharp, he's looking confident. Most players, after a long break, you feel that they just feel a bit rusty. But he, I mean, he's got this ruthlessness, this killer instinct, and it definitely looks like that break has revived his love of chess. And we do see that there on the screen. He has been as high as world number four. He's definitely, at his peak, been one of the best players. He's currently at world number 10, but he's won a massive tournament. He won the World Cup in 2019, this knockout tournament. Um, and he, we've seen it here as well. He's so good in these knockout stages. If he adds this Earthings Masters title to his collection, he'll show that in online chess as well, he's a force to be reckoned with. Levon Aronian, he is a super popular figure in chess. Uh, he's had a very, very successful career so far. He is a superstar in Armenia and also the main man on the Armenian chess team that has won three chess Olympiads. So let's get to know Levon Aronian. Levon Aronian. Armenia's number one has had a tough year, seeing the tragic death of his wife and his home country embroiled in war. But Aronian is back with positive energy. The famously laid-back Armenian is seen as the joker in the pack of world chess, a supremely creative player who can better anyone on his day. Levon Aronian has been through such a tragic year, losing his wife in a car crash in March, but he's made a tremendous comeback. And here he is fighting to be the winner of the first major in the Champions Chess Tour, Ivanka. What an impressive chess player he is. Yeah, he is a fantastic chess player. There's just no denying it. He's won so many events. He's also a very gifted tactician. He's very universal and he has a st chess style that absolutely I adore. He mm. takes the centre and then he pounces. He's been quick, he's been calm, 
He's been confident here and he's peaking at the right time. So that's why he's in the final. Mm. And if just looking at the stats there, his peak world rank ranking is number two in the world. That's serious. And he's currently at the world ranking of number seven and he won the World Cup in 2005 and 2017. And I think winning the Air Things Masters for him would just again prove how dominant he is also in online chess as well. It's not been an easy transition to make, but he can do it. Mm. We see here peak rating 2012. That was also the peak rating when Timur Ajaba was number four in the world, David. So it is a few years ago since they were at their peak. Are we seeing them sort of rise back to the very, very top of chess now? Yeah, that gives hope to everyone, I think, no matter what age. Um, these guys, they've been at the top for so long. Um, they both had different paths as well. Aronian, he was world number two for so long. Um, a bit of a dip there, but he's coming back after that difficult year. And um, likewise for Rajabov, having taken that break, so impressive. Imagine rising up to the top of world chess after retiring. It's, uh, yeah, so these guys are something a bit special. Definitely, and they have been two of the biggest names in chess for, for 10, 15 years. Met each other so many times, David, and this is their head-to-head -head score. Yes, and we do see the head-to-head -head scores there. Timur Rajabov is slightly ahead. Timur Rajabov with seven wins to Aronian's fives. Um, yeah, that does count yesterday's win as well, but it is very close, and Aronian should take heart from the fact that he has beaten Rajabov in the past. That's what he needs. He needs a quick start today. He needs to put the pressure back on. Two very equal players, and they are sitting also in two very equal time zones. We see the clocks ticking down to the first game in the second final match. They are heading into, well, six o'clock approximately now for both of them. And we have figured out this is the perfect time to play chess. Yeah, these were the only two contestants who actually played at this time control. So yeah. perhaps there's no coincidence there in the final playing at the beneficial time of 6 p.m. Mm. And what seemed to be their uh, mentality from the get-go yesterday, David, when we did see three draws? Yeah, a bit of a shaky start, a bit of a cagey start. Both players, just these two great fighters, just sizing each other up, looking for weaknesses, just trying to probe, trying to make the other one a bit more uncomfortable. Um, in the end, that pressure did tell on Aronian. Mm. Three solid draws, both players playing very well. Just Aronian, he was the one to crack first. If we are to uh, set some expectations for today, Ivanka, do you think we will start off with that high tension again with the draws? Or do you think we will see more fighting chess from the get-go? I think we will see a different type of fighting chess. Uh, the players yesterday were circling around each other, probing mm. for weaknesses in their opening preparations. This time, I think the onus will be on surprise, especially from Levon Aronian. He needs to take the game into his own territory and he needs to do it quickly because at the minute, Rajabov has looked unshakable. Mm. The 38-year-old and the 33-year-old in this Air Things Masters, David, it is those two who is fighting now in the final. One of them will be the winner. Is it surprising that it is two of the guys in the 30s and not two of the guys in their 20s in yeah, the end here? Slightly surprising. Again, that gives me hope. I've just entered my 30s. <laughs> um, yeah, I think chess players, they do peak a bit later than most sportsmen. You traditionally think sports people, they peak um, in that, that their physical peak in the 20s. But these guys, maybe they're just showing experience is even more important, especially these quick time controls when it's all about instinct. What does that experience have to say, Ivanka, when we do enter a final, when tension and pressure is so high? Well, this is the thing. Experience gives you the accustomed, um, you're accustomed to playing under pressure. You're accustomed to the nerves and you'd actually know what needs to be done. You're able to kind of just split that excitement mm. from the chessboard. So I think it does help. And as David says, it kind of with experience comes greater pattern recognition and they're able to draw upon that when the, when the going gets tough. Mm. And all four players are now ready by their computers. Daniel Dubo and Maxim Vajelagrav fighting for third place. Place. And then we have Levon Aronian with a smile on his face, facing Timur Rajabov in the final. Rajabov winning day one. Levon Aronian, he has to win today's match to take it to Tarbix. And it does start off with the white pieces. What should we expect from Aronian in this first game, David? I think this is a perfect scenario for Aronian, especially with the white pieces. He can be so dangerous. He's going to go all out attack in this first game. He knows that if he things backfire though, um, then losing a first game might be terminal for his chances. I think Levon Aronian, he will go on the attack, 
But if there does come a moment when st things start to turn against him, he'll try and play on the fact that Rajabov will be nervous. N Rajabov is the one with something to hold on to and protect. And it's like seeing two football managers here. One has dressed up in his suit with his, uh, <laughs> with his jacket and then you have Aronian. The more the football coach maybe that likes to use his tracksuit and... He's a lot more relaxed, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. Somehow it just seems a little bit casual, but uh, definitely this is a little bit deceiving because look at him. He is super focused. I think he's munching on some sunflower seeds just to get that energy going. And uh, he is getting himself in focus, ready for killer mode. But uh, Rajabov, we have seen such a cool customer. I've never seen the like. And here we are, the final, the very final day of the Everything's Masters. It started, David. It has started, and we do see some very quick moves. Levon Aronian, he plays, he opens the game with his King's Pawn. Um, Rajabov has actually reacted in a kind of copycat manner as Black. This is a very solid opening. It's known as the Italian opening. Um, both players very well rehearsed in these lines. And Levon Aronian there, pushing a pawn in the centre. It will come down to who gets greater control of the centre, whose pieces can get into the game quicker. Um, the one strategy actually here by Levon Aronian that I think is obvious immediately is the fact that he's kept all the pieces on the board at this early stage. Yesterday, we saw lots of trades early in their games. Queens often disappearing very early on. But this time, Levon Aronian, he's keeping as much tension as possible. Both kings there as well, castling away, just shifting away to the right there. Um, very nice and safe. This is going to be a long game full of tension. He's going to hope that Rajabov either isn't as familiar as he is with the plans or that Rajabov just doesn't deal with the tension quite as well as he does. I think it's very interesting to look at uh, Levon Aronian here. He, he seems very calm, almost smiling a little bit. Do you think he's trying to, uh, hoping that Timor is watching his webcam and sort of saying, I'm, this is no problem. I'm coming for you. Yeah, I think uh, Timor, maybe yesterday he did have an eye on Aronian's webcam and Aronian didn't look too happy. So maybe he's going for a different strategy. Mm. Uh, <laughs> they're definitely mind games in these one-on-one -on -one knockout battles. It's all about the psychology. And um, meanwhile, Aronian playing very quickly. He's actually got a minute more than he started with in this game already. He's definitely done his homework. He's talked to his coaches about this position. Will Rajabov react correctly? Well, interestingly enough, uh, Levon Aronian actually played this exact same variation wow. in an earlier game, not against Rajabov, but against Grishuk. And that game finished in a draw. So definitely this was one of those weapons in his armoury. Yes, and already we see kind of a key moment, and that's why Rajabov is thinking. And if we bring the board up, we can see there's one key element to this position. There's one really tense situation going on, and it's caused by this bishop, this bishop creating a pin along this diagonal. The black knight, it cannot move because the black queen would then be attacked. So this pin, it's very awkward. You normally want to get rid of it as soon as possible as black. And that is why he's pushed his pawn forward, kicking away this bishop, this bishop retreats. But look at the black king suddenly. The black king has lost some of its shelter, lost some of its protection. It normally wants to have pawn wall in front of it. These pawns, they've pushed a bit too far forward. So this is a long-term weakness. Can Aronian get at that black king later on? Or will this not be a weakness? Will the fact that white's bishop is now a bit blocked in Will that be more of a factor? Um, Levon Aronian, this is known as a risky variation. Um, it's normally something that I was told as a child is not good for white, but lately it's come into fashion in these must-win situations. And Yeah, exactly. Something you would play only when you really have to win. Is that it? Definitely. Mm -hmm. It's a very tense position, actually. You know, It's all about control with the black trying to control absolutely all the pawn breaks. And uh, white is trying to catch uh, Rajabov on the wrong foot. So, yeah, I, I also heard the same a piece of advice that this was not a great opening for White, but, you know, having seen the list of who's playing, it's become very fashionable in this last few years. Yes, and actually one of the most painful memories in my chess career was on the black side of this exact position. Um, actually, the, not that last move, but I had um, a game. I, both sides needed to win, actually. And as black, I did push that pawn in front of my king. It did backfire. The Black King later became weak in that game and I did lose. I did mm. go down to defeat. So will Rajabov be able to improve on that? The Black King? <laughs> Personally, I just think, especially in speed chess, when you don't have too much time to protect the king, to worry about defending, it's easier to attack than defend, remember, when you don't have much time. I do think that might become a, uh, an mm. issue a bit later on. Meanwhile, Aronian, so calm and so quick, still at 16 minutes on the clock and just shuffling across the white rook there um, to a better line. 
I think Aronian Jovanka has called a Mr. Centre before. He will be looking to push forward and explode the centre with the pawns now that the Black King is a bit weak. Mm. And if, with this being an opening that is, uh, you know, uh, sort of warned about for White, as you said, could that also mean, though, that uh, Timor hasn't looked at this too much and that could be one of the strategies for Levon to, to surprise Timor, obviously? Yeah, definitely. This is certainly one of the kind of surprises that you kind of launch, especially when someone doesn't isn't employing their main repertoire. Rajabov isn't kind of known for to be one of these kingside pawn players. Instead, he's kind of been very challenging with the Sicilian. And uh, now this is why uh, Aronian has chosen a quite a fashionable line, a quite a critical line. And he's just asking Rajabov, show me your familiarity with the position. Um, so much tension here. And I really do like the kind of idea that uh, white has provoked black to expose their king. Yeah, it's very pro provocative, um, this type of position. And Yesterday, we did mention that maybe Aronian was playing on his opponent's home turf in his opponent's comfort zone. And this is definitely not the case today. Aronian, he's going to be far more comfortable. Actually, for most of his career, he's played the black side of these types of positions. Um, only lately, he started to play an experiment with the white pieces in this opening. But he just has that greater experience. And that is telling at the moment on the clock, Timur Rajabov, um, almost four minutes behind now. But he does make a move. He does copy white again, bringing the rook to the centre of the board. That's not a move that I would normally make. Um, Certainly I... not, David. You're right there. This has actually not really been seen too much at the higher levels. Everyone is kind of playing towards the centre. It's all a bit cagey. But here we see a completely different approach. Yeah, and if we bring up the analysis board, we can see maybe why Black's last move, bringing this rook across, isn't the most popular move. It's because the most... Uh, well, the most vulnerable spot in your opponent's camp is often a pawn that's only defended by the Black King right now. It's only defended by the Black King. The Rook was guarding it last move. It is no longer protecting this pawn. So White, long term, does have a target. The Bishop eyeing up this pawn. It's very uncomfortable pawn here. Um, meanwhile, White does develop. Later, I expect to see White try to open up the centre because when things start to get juicy, when uh, you know complications happen, when they get messy, it always favours the side with the safer King. And at the moment, that is definitely not Black. All right, we do see on the screen here, on the top, it says 0-0. Zero, zero. That is obviously the score today, as this is the first game. And we can also see in the yellow the numbers there, Timo Rajapov leading the match, winning yesterday. So he is one point up, and Levon Aronian, he has to win today's match to take it to tie breaks. And a good start for him then, I guess, with white pieces here. Yeah, I really like his strategy. Whether it works or not long term, that will come down to... Um just their nerves a bit later on and how well they can calculate how well they're, uh, how sharp they're feeling. But this early stage, it does look like he stumbled across a better strategy, at least than yesterday, uh, more promising strategy. He's kept the tension, all of the pieces, all of the pawns still on the board. Um, definitely, that's not what Rajabov wants to see, especially when you're leading. You just want an easy kind of, uh, you want a game that you know what you're aiming for. Here, there's just so much to worry about. And he did raise his eyebrows a little bit from uh, after that move by Timor. Is it a surprising one? <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised by it. Um, black there retreating his bishop up to the corner. Bishops are very long range pieces. So the black bishop is on decent square there, but it was already on a decent square. So maybe a bit of a indecisive decision there by Timur Rajabov. He's just thinking, okay, I don't really know what else to do. So I'm just going to retreat my bishop. Um, yeah, Levon Aronian was surprised by that, but he will recompose himself and focus on how to open up the position now. Um, may, I expect to see a bit of manoeuvring for the next few moves. Um, and yeah, we have seen, I've, I've definitely, I think I've seen a few smiles on Levon's face so far just before the game. And uh, But now we're seeing him doing his normal routines, stretching and getting into the game. Do you think he's actually enjoying this, Yamaka, being back in a big final and fighting for the big prize? Yes, uh, definitely. And I think uh, Aronian is one of those players who just loves chess as mm. well. It comes naturally to him. And he just with his stretches, this just allows him to be fully absorbed into the game. And he knows that his opening strategy has worked. Mm. I, I, I sense with his satisfaction that Rajabov perhaps is making a few unusual moves. But however, the position is so tight that it actually probably doesn't quite matter at the minute. It's just that sense of uh, comfort that Aronian is getting. He just knows, okay, he just has to make a few normal moves and 
as David mentioned, the plan is to take the centre, but you've got to do it at the right time. So there's going to be a lot of more waiting, manoeuvring around. Yeah, and Levon, he will be looking to open up the position, but he does know that maybe just maintaining that tension a bit longer will play on Rajabov's nerves. Um, we should also mention to viewers who are new to us, um, we do see a purple bar just ab above the players' um, cameras, and it does say that White has a small advantage. So the bar says 0 0.4 at the moment in White's favour. That's not a big advantage. It just shows maybe that if both players played perfectly, White has slightly uh, the better chances. It just shows as well, maybe White's position easier to play. And there we do see White's knight retreat. White's uh, put his knight on the back row there um, next to the White King. Maybe keeping that White King very safe, but I think that knight will plan to jump forward to a better square later. It will jump into the centre. Um, meanwhile, Timur Rajabov, he's lower on the clock and it does feel like the plan is harder for Black with this vulnerable king. And he, de he decides, OK, it was hard to find an idea. So when in doubt, let's trade off some pieces. Let's hope that that brings a bit of safety. And Timur going to try and swap off the light squared bishops there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a very instructive kind of move. You tend to want to swap off those light squared bishops. I've seen that on many occasions. And uh, I think the general rule of thumb for black is that if you're able to swap off those bishops and capture the white bishop with a piece, then uh, this tends to favour black. Yes, um, especially with the weaker king. It means your king will be less of a target if pieces come off. And if you don't damage your position in the process of trading those pieces, um, I think Levon Aronian, he has a choice here. He could allow those bishops to leave the board. He could also run away with the white bishop. So, um, yeah, if we bring up the board, we can see the two choices that await Levon Aronian. He could capture this bishop right now. But as Yovanka mentions, Black will just take this bishop back. And Black maybe is feeling more confident after that transition. Instead, the move that I would play and the move he has played is to avoid that trade. He's keeping all the pieces on the board. This bishop now lining up against the knight, against the Black Rook perhaps as well. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to kick, kick this bishop away. This bishop temporarily is on a very strong square. Uh, meanwhile, I think Levon Aroni, he's getting ready to start pushing his pawns in the centre. That is the big idea. So, so now we're kind of seeing a little bit of a dance. You know, we saw it before in yesterday's match. There was a queen dance and now we're seeing the bishop dance because the bishop has now retreated. And uh, Levon is thinking, no, I'm not having any of that. And instead centralises the knight. The knight is getting ready to jump into some delicious looking squares on the black side of the board. Yeah, I mean, I'm really liking what Levon Aronian has done over the last few moves. He's keeping the tension. Those white pieces, the knights and the bishops on that right side, they are perfectly positioned to later try and jump forward and well, try and attack the black king simply. Um, meanwhile, it's still hard for Timur Rajabov to come up with a plan. Um, there we see his typical pose mm. that we saw yesterday and throughout this whole tournament, closing his eyes, trying to work things out. Um, he just visualises things better with his eyes closed, he mentioned. Yes. And one thing I have noticed about both these players is that uh, Rajabov likes to relax by drinking very regally, I have mm. to say, some cups of tea. And uh, we, do have a, we do have a tweet from Taunajum Luangamba who says, how many cups of tea will Rajabov drink during the matches? Thinking. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's also another observation from Krishnan Gopala who says, with the seeds and water inside Lev Oronian, he is blossoming on mm. confidence. Oh, that's beautiful. So, so you know, the players, we're actually getting to observe their eating habits here, yeah. actually. This is, it's something that's actually is very intriguing to me, like what kind of diet should a grandmaster yeah. follow? Because you need, your, you need to keep your energy stable. Mm. You can't have these crashes and these uh, dips. And... Um, yeah, I mean, we can see it here, like uh, Levon Aronian is eating seeds and... Uh... I actually, I heard on several occasions that world champion Magnus Carlsen stopped eating sugar uh, yeah. before, mostly before his world championship matches. Yeah, I heard that as well. I, I remember he used to drink orange juice oh, yeah. and uh, that suddenly stopped. And he also used to snack on raisins. Again, that stopped mm. because the, just the energy provided was too inconsistent. It would give him this big rush and then a big dip. Mm. And uh, obviously, if you're going to have a, a big dip, then your concentration, your focus will suffer. And that could be potentially quite catastrophic. And maybe better to also save it for when you n really need it. Because I also remember I remember one time when Magnus Carlsen played in an armor, he had to finish off a match with an Armageddon, and then he brought up a, a Coke, a Coca-Cola, to get the, 
the blood sugar up. Yeah, exactly. Especially towards the end of today as well, being the final, the players, they know that the last couple of games, they won't have to worry about those kind of dips in energy afterwards. It's all about that mm. final game. So, yeah, they'll be aiming to peak at the right time. Magnus Carlsen as well. He's so professional with his weight, kind of when he wakes up, he knows that he, his body, his mind will peak maybe four to six hours after he's woken up. So he always adjusts his body clock um, accordingly. These players as well, um, they definitely seem to have a routine that suits them and mm -hmm. brings out the best. It's not actually, uh, they don't actually only play the tournament and the games, maybe the four hours that they're by the computer. It's something that goes on the entire day, yeah. both before and after the games, I guess. Four hours, it's yeah. their sleeping pattern, it's their preparation in terms of studying their opponents. Everything's planned in advance. And, yeah, uh, but it kind of makes sense. I mean, this is the thing with chess, is that people are always very surprised, but then they wouldn't be surprised if sportsmen yeah. are doing it. Yeah. You know, they have the physiotherapist and uh, well, what have you not. Mm. And I do know that uh, when some teams play in the big Olympiad, which is held every two years, some teams take their own physiotherapist with them Whoa. just to give them relaxing massages. Oh. <laughs> Does the British team do that? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure we quite have the budget. <laughs> but the Russian teams, they bring a physiotherapist. They often bring a chef with them. Wow. Yeah, they have a yeah. huge team around them just to make sure that the players are in uh, peak condition. And meanwhile, uh, we do see a bit more manoeuvring. This time it was Black who decided not to trade off those light squared bishops. White's bishop has had to retreat. Um, but in the meantime, Black's position hasn't necessarily improved. OK, Timur Rajabov bringing both the Black Knights now over towards that right side. The two Black Knights are very near the Black King. Remember, Knights are a King's best friend. Those pieces, they'll do a defensive job. Um, so Timur Rajabov just preparing in advance a bit of uh, prophylaxis there. Um, he knows the attack will come a bit later on, so those knights are ready to defend their king. Um, yeah, sensible play by both sides. But only seven minutes left on the clock for Timur Rajabo. He today has spent a lot of time. Yeah, um, yeah. yesterday he was maybe quicker than mm. Iranian um, at some stages. And... But we have seen uh, uh, Rajabov actually use a lot of time. It's just we've also seen him be extraordinarily calm mm. in that time pressure. We've seen him play brilliant moves with just one second left on the clock, which still takes my breath away <laughs> how unbelievably composed he is. I, I've never seen anything quite like mm. it. But uh, yeah, a very tense position. I'm Because it's Rajabov who's playing, playing so well under time pressure, I'm not necessarily that concerned yeah. with the time difference. Well, we did talk to him in the interview after the games yesterday as well. We asked him about what we're seeing so many times. He's leaning back and closing his eyes, obviously thinking about the next moves. And he said it was natural for chess players to close their eyes. And you disagreed a little bit, David, that in, in online chess, Maybe we're seeing a new, very successful tactic here. Yeah, maybe this is why he's succeeding. I mean, it's something I've never done. I'm quite a visual player. I like to be seeing the board. I like to just know for a fact exactly where all the pieces are at, at all times. And um, yeah, maybe that's why he's excelling, especially in these very complicated positions. He's closing his eyes, completely fresh start. He's calculating very far in advance mm -hmm. um, just by being able to do that. And um, yeah, you often see players leaning forward, very tense. They just maybe just, that stops them from, react from reacting so quickly, from yeah. staying calm and yeah. he's succeeding somehow. Yeah, I, you know, I think he's using a lot of over-the-board techniques that we've mm. kind of perfected and he's applying them to online chess. And I think because online chess is so intensive and <laughs> you get so excited, everything is magnified that maybe chess players are actually forgetting these techniques because like David says, when I'm playing online chess, I'm also leaning forward. I'm holding the mouse <laughs> for dear life and I'm there getting ready to... To just pounce. Mm. And maybe it, this is the new way to play. You just take a step backwards, yeah. just calm yourself down and kind of then reach for the mouse. Yeah, look and learn from Timur Rajabo now, thinking about his next move. And there it is. Yeah, the Black Knight actually jumps forward. I thought it was pretty well placed where it was, but he decides, Timur Rajabov, that the knight is even better. That knight um, on an active square, that knight now jumping into white's half of the board. Um, I did like what Aronian was doing there, Aronian's last move with white, just shifting the queen across one square. But can he react to this knight jump? Um, if we bring up the analysis board, we can see there's a big decision ahead for Levon Aronian. And that is all to do with this knight. This knight is a thorn in his side. It's a nuisance. It's in his half. 
But getting rid of it does bring consequences. If White ever captures this knight with his bishop, then we might see a capture of this bishop back. Um, for example, if black captures this way, suddenly the knight in the center is forced to move. If this knight moves, if it's forced to retreat, suddenly the black bishop becomes extremely strong. This black bishop, its scope has been increased. Um, also, black's pawn just holds a lot of squares. This pawn chain, we've talked about pawn chains in previous days. This pawn chain is very hard to break down. Um, it's a long-term strength for black. Therefore, I think white as Levon Aronin. He will not capture this knight anytime soon. Um, if he does, it's likely to backfire. He's going to be looking for other plans, but playing around this strong knight is not going to be easy. Mm -hmm. It's a very sophisticated position. Uh, <laughs> this is, I, I have to be honest here. This is one of the reasons I kind of gave up playing with my king's pawn because I just couldn't get the handle of this position. There's so many pieces on the board. There's a lot of wait and see. You know, basically white is going to maneuver still a little bit more and still go for the central break, but it's going to be at the right time to catch them on the wrong foot. Um, okay, so that is why you see Levon has centralized his rook. He's planning to push a pawn in the center just to kind of create maximum tension. And, uh, but still, he has to wait. He, he's not quite ready for it just now. Yeah, um, he is building up. Um, when in doubt, we often talk to our pieces. We ask which piece is happiest, which is least happy. White's rook in the corner there, it wasn't very happy. So he does centralize it, just preparing for any action in the middle there. Um, so a very sensible move by Levon Aronian. But the position is still closed, remember. No pawns and no pieces still uh, have been traded. And we're already wow. almost at move 20. This is a very rare sight in modern chess. Uh, we saw games yesterday, speed to move 28, and lots of pieces have been uh, had departed from the board. Um, this time, no trades. Levon Aronian mm. go for a different strategy. Um, will it backfire? I'm, I'm not sure. I, I still like White's position, but Black's last moves have been very sensible. Now Black improving his queen there. What should we expect to be the first pieces to be traded off then? <laughs> Good question, Kaya. <laughs> difficult question. <laughs> it actually is a difficult question. I mean, it could be pawns. Uh, I'm expecting a pawn to be traded off in the near future. But again, the big question for Levon Aronian is, is the time now just to open up the position mm. and push that centre pawn? Or does he need to be even more patient and perhaps retreat a bishop or something and carry on with the plan of waiting. Yeah, so there are two main options in this position. If we bring up the board, um, we can show, we can illustrate what Yovanka is uh, kind of anticipating here. And that would be potentially the move, pushing this pawn forward, trying to make use of the fact that he's got his rook uh, supporting this pawn. Maybe, Kaya, the first trade of pawns will happen in the center here if White does this. But he has to be careful that if we do see a trade in the center, um, okay, White has options, then maybe White's pawns will be weak as well in the middle. So this could backfire. He has to decide whether this is the correct moment. If he doesn't go for this, then we expect to see more maneuvering, <laughs> more waiting. Um, maybe the White Bishop will just retreat to a safer square. Bishop's still long range pieces. It will be great on that square in the corner, uh, but will it be better than where it is now? It's so many questions for Levon Aronian. Um, he's still got a bit of a time advantage, but he has to decide, is now the moment to strike or does he continue to tiptoe around and mm. just play the waiting game? Is this simply just a very different uh, position than we had in the games yesterday? Completely different. Um, we did ask Levon Aronian for something new. He needed mm. to do something different. Um, we're yet to see the full results of that, but I think he'll be happy with the fact that at least the game is still going. It hasn't kind of fizzled out, simplified too much yet, because in those simplified positions, Rajabov was maybe the better player. Yeah. So, so do you think Levon, with the white pieces here, had sort of uh, seen this position and then thought, OK, in, if I go to the final and final day, I'll bring this out? Or is it just with the situation in the final, him having to make a comeback that made him choose this opening. Well, he did in fact choose this exact variation oh, yeah, against right. Alexander Grishuk. So I think this is something here that he has prepared. Mm. And uh, um, I don't think he knows what exact move order he has to play. I think he's just basing it on his familiarity with the position and just basing it on the fact that, okay, I'm going to adopt this plan. Um, as you can see here, there's, see here, there's like a lot of uh, hesitation at the minute. Both sides are waiting. It is very tense. It dis Okay, well, having said that, we have to get back to the board because we have seen Levon Aronian has made a decision. He's not, he's not maneuvering anymore, David. He is going for it. The pawn has finally been pushed. 
Yeah, we might finally see some trades after almost 20 moves here. Levon Aronian, he's decided this is the moment. And now the game, the kind of structure of the game, the uh, just the essence of the game is going to change completely. Now it will be all about which pieces are better placed for the action. We will see some trades in the center here. And actually, we do also see just below the players' cameras, the top suggestions by the computer. Um, the computer thinks that Black should trade that pawn in the center, should capture that pawn that has just advanced. Um, if Black doesn't do that, then there's a risk he might have a disadvantage. And actually, I think this is the most natural move. That being said, it's also a very committal move. If Black captures this pawn, he has to worry about maybe White's knight taking. And one of White's knights is going to jump into this square. For example, if Black gets greedy, if Black captures in the center, so many pieces in the, in the middle of the board now, so much tension, <laughs> but White can start to jump forward, attacking the Black Queen, attacking this pawn as well. Um, also the White Rook suddenly released along this line. <laughs> Anything could happen here, it's complete chaos. Um, but both players now, the clocks are ticking, Rajabov under five minutes, he has to work out. Does he capture this pawn in the middle? Does he just sit still and do nothing? Um, he could also, uh, the computer suggests, bring the Rook to the middle and just continue playing the waiting game. But that is very hard for a human to do when you only have four minutes to sit and hope for the best and yes. just do nothing Ex because... It's just not human instinct. Yeah, it totally is not a human instinct. It's actually a very difficult position for Rajabov because I did try my hat. Okay, he has captured the pawn. He is going for it. Finally, a piece has left the board. You know, I did like uh, Iron Lord's 3-2-1's three, uh, tweet, which said literally no pieces have <laughs> left the board. It's so unusual. It's so complicated. But here we have our first trade. And uh, yeah, he is really going to go well the position is just going to explode isn't it David uh, it's such a difficult decision to make because Black's king is really exposed and so if he does open the position too much and he's not well prepared for it then he could just this position could just collapse basically mm. Yeah, it's like one of those really dramatic movies where the music, it starts really slow, <laughs> and it starts slowly building up speed, and then <laughs> suddenly the drama happens, and suddenly... <laughs> like in Jaws? Yes. Exactly. Oh, no. Yes. Oh, no. exactly. Yeah. Kaya. I don't know why I had the image of a musketeer. Oh. Like, and I went, oh, my friend. <laughs> I just saw the I just saw the shark, like. It's coming. <laughs> and, yeah, the action is coming, and um, Levon Aronian, I'm slightly surprised he's spending some time here. I would have thought, having been the one to decide to open the position uh, with his last move, he would have a plan ready, a plan in place um, for Black's capture, which we did agree was probably the most natural reply. So um, will White capture that pawn back with his knight? Will he capture back with a pawn? Um, big decision here for Levon Aronian, but he does need to try and maintain his time advantage because we have seen Rajabov. He has been the better player uh, when the clocks tick down, when they're both under one minute. Mm -hmm. So with that uh, picture in our head, that with that shark, who uh, is the shark here? Who's sort of going for it now? Well, Levon has struck first. Mm. So it, now it's, it's all about, the position is just going to explode. And uh, like David says, I'm slightly surprised that when that, that Levon didn't actually prepare an answer to this, that he's thinking about the position right now because the clock is ticking down past the five minute mark, which we all know is a magical number when the players start to feel the pressure a little bit. So when you play in such a committal way, you do have to have an answer ready. So I, I'm expecting, well, I was expecting a knight to a knight to capture the pawn. What are you expecting, David? I was expecting the same. Um, normally I love to install those knights in the middle of the board. I did highlight a moment ago as well, white's knights do have some potential to jump further into the position um, if he captures with that knight. That being said, Levon Aronian, he is Mr. Center. He likes putting pawns in the middle of the board and for his pieces to control the squares around those pawns. So that's possibly why his instincts are to say pawn takes pawn here um, in, the, in the center. But either way, he needs to start trusting his instincts a bit more. He spent almost three minutes now on this last move and that's, that's not a good practical decision. The mm -hmm. game won't be decided over the next three, four moves. It'll be decided a bit later on. So he does need that time in the bank and okay he finally goes <laughs> he oh, wow. finally plays a move that i did not even consider i must admit and ivanka does that surprise you bishop takes knight it did surprise it did surprise me i wasn't expecting that uh, as well but you know okay fireworks are now happening the king the black king is about to be blasted into the open so there's so many lines but i think that this decision is going to come at the cost of a pawn 
Yeah, so basically this is a pawn sacrifice for Levon Aronian. If we bring up the board, we can see that Black has a choice here. Black can capture this bishop or he can capture a knight. Temporarily, he's a piece down, um, so he has to make this decision which piece to capture. I would be very tempted to capture this bishop first with a double attack against this white knight. This white knight has to move. The knight will jump forward, um, attacking, attacking the Black Queen, and when it's captured, suddenly we see a lot of tension. Um, and also, on this line, Notice all the pawns here. There's, both sides have the craziest <laughs> pawn structure I've ever seen. Um, <laughs> is... It's very nice, though. I mean, look at it. Pretty as a picture. Pawn, knight, pawn, pawn, knight, pawn. Okay. What should be our, our name for this one? Um, the drunk pawns. Ah. <laughs> um, okay, the party. The party line. <laughs> exactly. Um, the party train. Yeah. Um, if this happens, though, Black's Queen will have to move. The Black Queen under attack from White's Rook. If it retreats, then maybe White has the time to capture this pawn back finally in the middle of the board. It does look like maybe Black's King is slightly weaker than its counterpart. Black's King is slightly open with some squares, um, some open lines around it. White's King, meanwhile, nicely protected by this wall of pawns. I think this would slightly favour White, but we'll see. Uh, Timur Rajabov is the one to make this decision after Bishop takes. Does he capture this Bishop? Or does he capture this knight? Mm -hmm. Big, big decision. T taking the knight is maybe a bit more solid. Yeah, so both players now settling into the tank and trying to figure things out. In fact, uh, we did kind of mention our concern with Levon Aronian having played such a critical move that he didn't have, well, a quick uh, answer to that. And uh, also we have a tweet from Patrick Chopal who expresses the same worry. Levon plays d4 and after a natural pawn takes pawn, he's burning time. He's off today. I'm not sure he's off today. I think he's just been a little bit cautious. Yeah, I think both players may be just warming up at these early stages um, in the first game. Both players have played much slower than they did yesterday, and that's purely because of the nerves. <laughs> um, Levon Aronian, meanwhile, OK, he has to react. Timur Rajabov did go for that move that we suggested. Will we see that crazy pawn structure? I, um, <laughs> I loved it. The party train. Party train. <laughs> we want to see a party train. <laughs> Jump with that knight and attack the queen. Yeah, again, I'm surprised that Levon Aronian is thinking there. He was taking a pause to have a drink, but he's burning quite a lot of time relative to how much he has left. And I think his move's quite obvious. That white knight in the middle is attacked by two black pawns right now. That white knight has to make a move. And you and have to go forward. There's yeah. just no option. If you're going to go backwards, well, what are you doing? This is an open position. Things are heating up. Black has an exposed king. You need to go forward. So... Yeah, and just, just to kind of remind ourselves of the clock situation, Rajabov has just under two and a half minutes. Levon Aronian is coming up to three minutes on the clock. Yeah, and I think there's just no choice. Just jump forward. It's not even Aronian's style to retreat here. We very rarely see him give way and kind of backpedal unless he really has to. And um, he was the one who chose this, this kind of... Uh, this position, this kind of mess in the centre. He was the one who initiated things. So why would he even hesitate about this decision? Why would he even consider retreating? That white knight should jump forward, for better or for worse. Um, he's also giving Timur Rajabov more time to think about the consequences, to try and calculate further ahead. Mm -hmm. um, Levon Aronian does look like he's lacking a bit of confidence today. Yes, yeah. yeah. uh, thinking. And it is a big day for these two. It's a big day in the Champions Chess, or it's a big day for chess, with the first major final in the Champions Chess. And this is related to the quiz of the day, Ivanka. Yes, we are asking everyone at home, what is your favourite chess moment? If you want to join our competition or just join in the fun in general, please tweet us using the hashtag ChessChamps and we'll feature your suggestions on the show. And the lucky winner will win one of these AirThings devices, which measures the air quality on in the room. And I must admit, I'm totally obsessed. I love That's seeing so this. Yeah, it's yeah. a great way to head into the new year, measuring air quality and yeah. maybe doing something about it if it's bad. Wow, and meanwhile, we have had Levon Aronian shock us. Whoa! Maybe shock <laughs> with a really unexpected move. That knight, The white knight was attacked twice, remember, by two of Black's pawns, and he just ignored it. He's pushed forward in the centre with his own pawn. This pawn move, the computer hates it. It thinks that this is a big move, a blunder, but white has some ideas. He's attacking Black's knight, and maybe if Black captures this pawn, he's got the idea of dropping his queen into a monster square, bringing his queen forward, the white queen, attacking Black's king. It looks like a queen sacrifice, but the black pawn cannot capture because it is pinned. This white bishop would then attack the black king. So this would be, I mean, this is so creative. He's threatening to kind of semi-sacrifice his queen, but not quite. And suddenly black's king would be a huge target. This is Levon's idea. Will it work? That is yet to be seen. He's pushed his pawn forward 
opening up the diagonal for this queen. I do think maybe black has calmer options here. And the computer there, we see the top move. It's not obvious though, pushing a pawn forward to block this white queen. Um, this is not easy at all for a human. This and is with Black's only, only one minute move. on the clock for yeah. Team Murajabo, this yes. is the move he has to find. Exactly, that is the move he has to find. There's only one path to victory. The rest of the options lead to a very unclear position and he has one minute on the clock. Wow, yeah. this is so, so suspenseful. Will he, won't he? Um, and he hasn't seen it. He, he doesn't find um, the best move there. Um, suddenly, White's queen has jumped forward, attacking the black king. Um, as we mentioned, this is check. The queen cannot be taken, remember, because that black pawn was pinned. <gasps> and we see suddenly a huge turnaround. Timur Rajabov, he missed the winning move. And now he's losing. White, that white queen, it is going to do all the damage. Black's king under attack. I don't know why Timur Rajabov is thinking here. Um, surely he has to move his king right now. Um, uh, sorry, surely he has to move his knight right now to block the check. If he moves his king, I think he will be losing. And there we see the black knight has blocked that check. Um, and white's bishop drops back. White is threatening checkmate in one move. White is threatening to use his queen to jump up and take that black knight. The black king would be trapped. So the white queen and the white bishop teaming up there. Um, suddenly, white is winning. How can Timur Rajabov defend this position? It's not easy. He can actually win a rook right now with black. Um, mm. He can use his pawn in the middle there, the black pawn. Okay, he's, he's gone for it. Yeah, he's gone for it. And uh, we're going to see black go up one rook. But the problem is his king is just too unsafe. Uh, it's uh, it's such a, such a beautiful idea, actually. Yeah, a beautiful idea. White has actually sacrificed, well, temporarily, white is a rook and a bishop down. But he is checkmating his opponent. He's got a winning attack. Um, Timur Rajabov, he must have missed this. He panicked when low on time. He underestimated White's attack. And there's just no way for Black to defend. I think Black will have to even give up his queen, potentially, to defend against this coming attack. Mm -hmm. uh, remember, White is threatening checkmate now. Yeah. Um, and 10 seconds for Timur Rajabov. And he has wow. to make a move. I, I predict he's perhaps going to push a pawn just right. to try to block off that. OK, he has instead given up the bishop. So now White can simply play bishop takes bishop. This yep. is intense. Yeah, um, Black giving up a bishop there, but it doesn't change anything. Um, suddenly White gains a bit of material back. He was still threatening checkmate. Black's pawn drops forward. So the Black Queen now is defending the knight at the corner of the board. So checkmate is temporarily prevented. But um, we do see just below the players again, the computer suggestion. There's only one winning move for White. Again, it's the most natural move. Mm -hmm. White should capture the black pawn that has just uh, stepped forward. Levon Aroni, he'll be looking at that one. He knows his attack is winning now. But he's, okay, he's taking a break to just calm his own nerves, I think. Um, he knows he's winning, but he knows the path is still quite narrow. He still has to be accurate to finish off Rajabov here. Um, if we see White's pawn capture the black pawn that's just moved, Aroni will win the game. Um, will yeah. he find that move? Yeah, he will definitely do that just by, you know, that, what a beautiful idea. And uh, now I agree with you, David, that is the most natural move on the board. But I'm, I'm impressed by uh, Levon Aronia's genius <laughs> there. This is a move that totally <laughs> escaped our radar. Didn't, we didn't even think about it. And OK, it had a hole, but it was a gamble and it paid off big time. And now when you're attacking, it's super important to remember you've got to invite all your pieces to the party. And so we're expecting White to capture the pawn that has just moved forward and then introduce, uh, then after some rooked trades to introduce a knight. Yeah, I must admit, I did see that move earlier. I just thought it didn't work. Um, but Levon Aronian, he saw deeper than I did. And it was a bit of a gamble, a calculated gamble earlier, Levon Aronian, just rolling the dice, saying, OK, it might not work, but the pressure's on you. The clock's ticking down. Can you find the defence? And Rajabov didn't find the defence, but can Aronian now take advantage of the fact that he has this huge attack, the Black King, under incredible pressure right now? He has frozen a bit. He's ticking under one minute. Um, he needs to keep, <laughs> I mean, he just needs to keep his rhythm. He found some fantastic moves over the last few turns. He needs to just capture that black pawn and then work out the consequences. He's doing it the other way around. He's trying to work out the consequences first, but there's simply no other option. White should take that black pawn off the board, attacking the black queen, and then start to think. Um, but, yeah, <sighs> okay. It's like a rush of the blood to the head, right? <laughs> He's desperately trying to figure out the, the, the calculations, but also at the same time, calm the nerves. Because when you play a beautiful sacrifice like this, your heart starts pounding and you get super excited and your brain starts thinking, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win. 
<laughs> and uh, he just has to calm down. He's got less than 20 seconds on the clock. He can move the on. on. I don't even see another sensible option here. No, he, he has 10 has seconds. seconds. Keep going. He has to capture Make that the move. Horn. Make the move. Okay. And he did. <laughs> and he did. He has done it. <laughs> so Black's Queen is now attacked twice yeah. by the White Pawn and the White Rook at the bottom of the board. The Black Queen has had to sidestep um, White here, Team uh, Levon Aroni. No. This is the position he was trying to work out. Yes. Can he find a winning move? He has to trade the rook. He either has to move the rook or he has to trade the rook. One second. The easy, oh, he's done. Oh, gosh. I, oh. Thought, I actually thought he did move. Oh, the bar shift's completely over. Is, is it a blunder? A no, I think, it's, I think it's a mouse slip. I think he wanted oh, to Oh, look at him shaking his head. I, I think he... Do we see a I devastating a mouse slip? I, I, think, I think he tried to go... No, it's definitely rook. not a mouse slip. He okay. moved immediately. He replied immediately. So he must have seen this before. Um... Okay, I think he's just miscalculated here. Black's now given up the queen. So Black has actually sacrificed his queen, but in return, he has two rooks and a bishop for white's queen. So Black is up on material. Rooks worth five points each. Um, so together, that makes ten. The Black bishop as well worth three. And white only has a queen left. Levon Aronian, he just... He must have missed something there. He just miscalculated. Um, I, I'm shocked. That was Black's most obvious defence, and... Um, Levon Aronian trying to save this game suddenly after having a winning position, trying to give perpetual check, trying to continuously check the Black King. But Black's King, it does have a defender around it. Hu another huge turnaround. We've seen two of them already in this game. Wow, this is one of the craziest games so far in the Air Things Master. And it is in the final. Levon Aronian, he needs to win a game today yes. to win the match. And this is not looking good for him now. No, now we have a situation where Black has a two rooks and a bishop. And you have to remember the words of my dear old father. He says, a queen by herself does not give checkmate. Mm. He usually said that to me with a little... <laughs> Yovi, look at the board. It's just a queen. <laughs> the wise man. <laughs> Can he hope to save a draw here, though? Uh, there's, there's potential for a perpetual check because while the Black King is unsafe, you know, the computer, of course, is like this all-seeing oracle. It sees everything and works out all the nuances. But, you know, Rajabov is human and, OK, he is making a dash with his king. Yeah, the Black King trying to run away there. We did actually see Levon Aronian shake his head quite mm. violently. He knows he's lost control. Um, Timur Rajabov just trying to escape with the Black King. If he can stop the White queen from giving check, if he can just somehow get that king to safety or find a perfect way to combine the black pieces. Remember, black has these two rooks and bishop. That's three pieces. If he can co coordinate them correctly, then black will win this game. But at the moment, black's rook, especially in the corner, the top left corner, that is asleep. So it doesn't help stop the checks. Um, and although the computer might give black a winning advantage here, a plus 2.5 advantage, it's not easy. Queens are tricky pieces. Um, this one, I still think Levon Aronian with white has decent drawing chances, but he will be kicking himself mm. for, for not finishing off. He was actually trying to be too clever. Yeah. That move that you thought was a mouse slip. I think he was just trying to be too clever. OK. Well, uh, we have some tweets. Naughty Chess says, this is crazy time management. And uh, Yon, Yonan M, who says, Levon made this Italian middle game explode. Wow. Oh, it's we, over. We have seen a draw. The position repeating itself. Both players, surely they'll be disappointed with that game. Um, Timur Rajabov was actually winning in the final position. He just couldn't find a way to escape the checks. Yeah. Um, but also you so have to drama. kind of, when we cut situations like this, you can't be too harsh on Rajabov because, you know, he was losing. He, know, he knows that he was losing. And then to kind of make that adjustment and just to kind of go, OK, I'm now actually winning. That's difficult. I, I actually struggle with that transition. But look at these two. You can... Definitely see Levon Aronian. He is very, very disappointed. He obviously know, knew at some point he was in a very good position here. I think actually Timor also looks disappointed. But we have to remember a draw is an okay result for him. If he draws the match today, then he will be the winner. Wow, what a game. I think that must have been one of the most interesting games in the Air Things Masters so far, David. And there were many, many turning points. Yes. But where did Levon suddenly get that uh, winning position? And where did he just 
just he blew it. Yeah. And um, yeah, it all came to a really shocking, surprising move um, here in the studio. We barely even considered it. Uh, we did think in this position that White would have to move this night. This night is attacked twice by both of Black's pawns. But instead, Levin Oronian, he went on the attack. He pushed his own pawn forward. Um, opening up this diagonal for the White Queen, also attacking the Black Knight. This move was missed by us, missed by Rajabov, I think, and Rajabov did not react correctly. He got a bit greedy here. Black's best move, it's not obvious, but Black's best move is to push the pawn forward, attacking the White Queen, just gaining a bit of time. Instead, uh, Timur Rajabov, he captured this White Knight. He called Levon's bluff, but now we see the key, the secret behind White's move to bring the Queen up, giving check to the Black King. The pawn was pinned, so the Black Pawn could not capture this queen. The king had to sidestep. And after a bit more, uh, well, a couple of checks, give, taking off this pawn, white now found maybe the move that Rajabov missed, dropping this bishop back, the bishop and the queen together. They set up this mating idea. <laughs> Black now grabbed a rook. So much drama <laughs> happening in this game. Black captured this pawn, giving check. Um, the king had to sidestep. Black won a rook. So Black currently a rook and a bishop ahead. And he had to try and find a way to prevent this checkmate. Queen takes knight, still a threat. Timur Rajabov, he did well to cling on here. He gave up a bishop, then he pushed his pawn forward. Um, and this is where uh, Levon Aronian, he just stopped too long. He spent too long on the clock. This move, this next move, pawn takes pawn, it's the most obvious move in the position, the most natural. He spent far too much time here, and that is why he blew the game. After Black's queen sidestepped the attack, White now dropped his rook onto the wrong square. Yovanka thinks maybe this was a mouse slip. Rook takes rook. Looked like it was a winning move. Instead, Levon Aronian put his rook two steps too short. And after Black captured, White's knight jumping forward. All the pressure now on this square. Look at this. But instead, Black found a way to defend. He sacrificed his queen. Rook takes pawn. The, Black, uh, the white knight captured the queen. And suddenly, after everything was simplified, we got a position where white had only a queen left, not enough pieces to checkmate. Black is actually winning, but the black king did not escape from white's queen's checks. And eventually a draw after a roller coaster ride there. minutes the second game in the final uh, between Timur Rajabov and Levon Aronian first game ending in a draw Levon Aronian he has to find a win in one of the three last games and here we have it the first game ending in a draw still three games to go and Levon Aronian he needs a win in this match to take it to tie breaks Could be the moment to put on some motivational music for both of the players, maybe mostly for Levon Aronian. And we have asked the chess players, do they actually have a motivational song to get them going before important chess games? Usually I like uh, rock and pop. I mean, my favorite group is uh, Marea, a Spanish group. It gets me more excited to go to the game. The songs uh, change uh, at every tournament. This is sort of my ritual. So there's going to be one, one tournament, one song that I will obligatorily listen to uh, just before going to the game. Right now I'm listening to Bee Gees. I like in general pop songs, you know, like that. I mean, I know they're not the best songs, but they're very catchy. And uh, some, I sometimes listen to rap too, like Eminem. Although he doesn't have the best songs either in terms of lyrics. This playlist is called Momentum. So the last song in that respect was Atom from Crystal Fighters. I'm not uh, really like the, 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 the man of the music and stuff. I, I just put sometimes some, some things, but especially mostly the rap things and so on, they, they get you in shape, especially if the mood is like so-so and you need to fight. We do have some huge news in the Champions Chess Tour. Meltwater is becoming the title partner of the Champions Chess Tour. And we are now joined by Benedikte Christiansen, Head of Strategy in Meltwater. We are so, so happy to start this partnership, Benedikte. First of all, can you tell us what is Meltwater? So we are a media intelligence company that actually started back here in, in Oslo in 2001. And the notion back then and still is mm. that uh, the world is drowning in data. Yeah. Um, so we created a, a software 
that allows us to analyze over 500 million documents. So news articles or social media posts every day that our clients or customers can utilize. Mm. And this sounds like a perfect partner for the Champions Chess Store being an online, very innovative chess tour. Uh, why did you decide to partner up with the Champions Chess Tour? First of all, very exciting to be able to uh, collaborate more closely together with Play Magnus and mm. Magnus Carlsen as well. Uh, but overall, we see an uh, interesting link between what Meltwater do and w the game of chess. Yeah. Because if you look at the way they play chess, they are trying to constantly analyze the, the gaming environment, uh, the opponent, uh, trying to anticipate the next move mm -hmm. and looking at Meltwater we do exactly the same thing but we do it for companies in a yeah. b2b atmosphere rather than Magnus is going one-on-one -on -one in his matches right so David analysis and exactly what Benedict is talking about is a huge part of chess as well yeah definitely analysis I mean as you mentioned it's pretty much all that we do every day, day <laughs> yeah. to day we're always crunching those numbers in our minds yeah. and I guess you found a very effective way of doing that in life, in data. And um, I also have a question of my own. I'm trying to get better at social media. What should I do? Ah. Ah, definitely. <laughs> you should start to make your own uh, profiles a little bit more uh, attractive, uh, ah. potentially. Mm. But <laughs> smile <laughs> more. <laughs> so do you, as a company, actually, do you in a big way recognize yourself with chess and maybe even what's happened the last year with the pandemic, chess just mm. going online and just just finding up new stuff all the time. Mm. And definitely in light of Magnus Carlsen as mm. well, that we are becoming a personal partner towards. Uh, he is embodied in terms of our values, uh, which is uh, having fun with what you do, uh, being best at what you do, yeah. but also having respect with what you do and who you do it with. Mm. And I do hear rumors that if the world opens up, that the final of the Champions Chess Tour might be placed at Meltwater's headquarters in San Francisco. Is that right? You're right. Uh, hopefully it will be um, safe to travel, mm. uh, thinking about the COVID-19 restrictions. Uh, but what we would like to do is to invite existing clients, uh, potential new clients, to come and look at the elite chess players in our headquarters in San Francisco. Yeah, David, what would that be like? Travel to San Francisco for a chess tournament? <laughs> I mean, I hope I get an invite too. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, yeah, the players, they would love that as well. I mean, that would be a fantastic way to celebrate, um, I mean, this collaboration and also just chess, online chess mm. and over the board chess just coming together and um, mm. yeah, that would be perfect. Mm. What do you think, Bendik, about the Champions Chess Store and this online format and what chess actually has been able to do over the last year? A very tough year for, for everyone, obviously. Definitely. And, but it's been very interesting to see how the sport has been developing itself as with the rest of the industry, sporting events, organizers as well. Uh, so I think we, we just have to do the best we can and adapt. Mm. And, and David, if we are to have the final on site in San Francisco, we wouldn't forget that this is an online tournament. So the players would actually face each other on their computers, just sitting across from each other. Even better, but they might be able to spy each other, yeah. spy on each other. There'll be mind games, you know, they'll be trying to see who is, uh, who's kind of, um, whose coaching teams are there. There'll be so, such intrigue yeah. and... Um, I hope we can make this happen. Yeah. Likewise. Yeah, that would be uh, so much fun. I mean, traveling, of course, is not possible quite yet, but hopefully. Uh, so what does Meltwater have coming up in, in a very exciting 2021? Mm. So we just uh, went uh, public mm. uh, and the listing there at the Euronext Growth. So obviously a very exciting year for us. Uh, and also the collaboration we have here with, uh, with Magnus mm. Carlsen and Play Magnus. Mm. David, for chess as well, 2020. Uh, 2020 was actually a very, very good year. What's your expectations now also for chess in the next year? Um, well, I mean, the thing I'm most excited about is this Champions Chess Tour, well, the Meltwater Champions <laughs> Chess Tour now, um, because it does give us uh, kind of a bit of certainty and especially the top players, they need that to just keep going and especially after such a big boom this year. Um, so, I mean, it's fantastic that Meltwater are making this possible and um, yeah, hopefully we do get an occasional uh, over the board tournaments, maybe the World Championship match with Magnus, mm -hmm. as you mentioned. And, going to be a lot to look forward to. Mm. And you did give David some excellent tips there for <laughs> social media. Is Mouthwater also helping the Champions Chess Store and Play Magnus when it comes to uh, the social media stuff? Yeah, so we've been collaborating with Play Magnus for a couple of years now, and this is basically an extension of that collaboration. Mm. Uh, but for them, it's important to uh, 
be on top of their internal strategies, external strategies, but also report to their collaborative partners. So mm. definitely we will be hands on with this collaboration as well. All right. Well, this is a fantastic news for the champions, Chester. We are so, so happy to partner up with Meltwater. The new official name starting from the next tournament will now be the Meltwater Champions Chester. So very, very exciting news today. Uh, we are waiting for the second uh, game in the final between Rajavo and uh, Levon to start. Before we do that, it's time for uh, David Howell to teach us some more chess. And today, it's about something I'm looking very much forward to, the Queen's Gambit. A lot of you at home might have seen the Netflix series, The Queen's Gambit. The Queen's Gambit is also an opening in chess. Let me show you how it starts out. White, on the first turn, pushes the pawn forward two squares to the center of the board. Black, in reply, might copy this, also pushing the pawn forward two squares. And now we see why it's called a gambit. White sacrifices a pawn. White pushes a pawn two squares forward, attacking the center, attacking black's pawn in the middle, and now black has two choices. Do you accept the gambit or do you decline the gambit? The most common is actually not to capture this pawn for black. Black could support this central pawn by pushing a pawn in front of his king one square forward, defending it, but also defending it with another pawn. If black is feeling ambitious, if black is feeling aggressive and greedy, then black can take this pawn. It is a free pawn, it cannot be captured back immediately, but white does get the center. White now occupies the center with two pawns, and also with the bishop opened up now, it threatens to win this pawn back. This tends to be uh, regarded as quite good for white. White has central control, and especially these grandmasters, especially in the Champions Chess Tour, having the center at this early point in the game is a big advantage. We will see the Queen's Gambit a lot in the Champions Chess Tour. It's one of the most popular openings. So there it is. That is the Queen's Gambit opening, as we are joined again by Ivanka in the studio. And uh, Ivanka. Is this opening actually now becoming more popular with the Netflix series Queen's Gambit? I think it always was incredibly popular. I mean, I know for me, it's something that I've seen many, many world champions play it. Mm. And it was something when I was a child that I was really envious of people who actually played this Queen's oh, yeah. Gambit. The position seems so natural, so easy. Um, but definitely now with the Queen's Gambit, of course, everything yeah. has been magnified. So I fully expect everyone to start playing. Mm. The Queen's Gambit. Yeah. And could it be something to consider for Rajabo now in the next, the second game with the white pieces, the one with the black pieces? Yeah, definitely. Actually, we saw the Queen's Gambit twice in the games between these guys yesterday and both times were with uh, Rajabov on the white side. So I think odds on to see the Queen's Gambit again. Ah. That was perfect timing with that video. And would that be a good opportunity then for Levon Aronian to get back? He needs a win at some point today. Yeah, he definitely needs a win. Uh, last yesterday's games, we saw a big Titanic battle mm. in one specific opening line. I think that we're going to see some deviation there. I think it was just too well analysed by both players. And we ended up with a very kind of immaculate game where the draw was the optimum result for both sides. And of course, Levon Aronian, that doesn't really play into his mm. hands. So he needs to make some changes. And we did see that spectacular game here in, in the first game, David where Levon Aronian had big winning chances. He didn't convert it into a win. Instead, it was a draw. And here we see all the players. Well, they are getting ready for the second game. Timo Rajabo with white pieces against Levon Aronian. Maxime Vachelagrav, he won the first game against Daniil Dubo today. So he is up by one point as the second game in the final starts. It does. The second game in the final starts. And will we see the Queen's Gambit? The answer is no. We do not. Levon Aronian going for a different strategy to the one he chose yesterday with Black. Levon Aronian playing an opening that I very rarely see him play. He's played the Grundfeld defense, one of my favorite openings. It's a very counter-attacking opening. And actually, Timur Rajabov himself, as Black, um, has played this quite often. It's as if Levon Aronian, he's playing all of his usual openings, but with the opposite color. Mm. In the first game, he played one of his favorite openings from Black. He played it from the white side. Now he's playing this position. He's had it so many times as white. He's playing from the black side. Um, Levon Aronian playing mind games here at this early stage. Timur Rajabov, he could not have predicted this opening. Well, on that subject, there is one game on the database played on Christmas Eve, how would you have it, where Levon Aronian did actually play this opening. 
but it is just like one game out of hundreds. So yeah. definitely unexpected. Yeah, a real shock. I mean, I, yeah, I've never seen Levon do this. Uh, we did find one game on the database, but yeah, that's once in a blue moon, I think, normally. Um, it is influenced by the match situation, though. He knows Levon Aronian, he needs to try and win this game. Um, and actually, he did have the white pieces in this opening against Maxime Vachon de Grave a lot recently. So it, he will have studied this opening, but it will feel a bit unfamiliar playing from the black side. And we do see Black's Knight there um, early on, jumping into the middle of the board. The Black Knight was actually attacking White's Bishop, so the Bishop uh, has stepped back. Um, a lot of tension at this early stage. I expect to see a trade of Knights very quickly. Um, Timur Rajabov, meanwhile, choosing a variation that is known for being very solid and actually has a drawish reputation. So Timur Rajabov, he knows that if he draws the next three games, he will win the tournament. Um, he's definitely trying to take a risk-free approach against this surprise. Um, Levon Aronian, can he still whip up something unexpected? Can he still uh, kind of ask Rajabov to get to a position with a lot of tension like we saw in the last game where maybe um, Aronian can find a way to trick him? I'm, I think this is a great opening choice by Levon Aronian, but likewise, a very solid reply by Timur Rajabov. Mm -hmm. And uh, the beauty of it all is that we actually have our own <laughs> Grunfeld <laughs> specialist. The opening is called the Grunfeld. And this is something that I've uh, known David to have been playing for practically all of his life. Yeah, I've played this opening since I was six years old, I think. So um, <laughs> definitely most of my life. Um, we do see lots of tension now in the centre, especially with the pawns. Um, meanwhile, Levon Aronian bringing his knight out. That is not supposed to be a very good move. Um, normally, you don't want to bring your knight out too early. You want to get your king to safety first. But um, maybe the move order isn't so important. It will be about whose king can get to safety first. We see a trade in the middle there. Uh, pawns leaving the board. Black's queen jumping out very early on. Um, normally, again, this is, this is why these guys are so good. They're breaking the traditional opening rules. We tell people when they're starting out chess, don't bring your queen out too early. She's the most valuable piece. Anytime she gets attacked, she'll have to retreat because every piece that attacks her will likely be less valuable. Um, so bring your queen out. It can lose a bit of time, but Levon Aronian, he does this as black very quick, quickly, very confidently. And Rajabov, he is playing for the draw. He's playing safety first chess, offering a queen trade there. Levon Aronian immediately says, no, no queen trade for you. And the black queen does retreat. Um, again, cagey stuff. Um, Levon Aronian, definitely his strategy in this, this second match. So his strategy today is to keep as many pieces on the board as possible. Um, I think that's a great strategy and he has been prepared. He has seen this position before. Look how quickly Levon Aronian is playing more time than when he started with. Yeah, we've actually seen that as a continuous pattern throughout the tournament that Levon Aronian has played very quickly, very calmly and uh, very confidently as well. Um, to my eyesight, I'm not... Not, not a specialist in this opening. It does look a little bit odd with the queen retreating to a square in front of the bishop and uh, also not necessarily focusing on getting the king to safety immediately. Is this some, a new radical approach to this opening for black? Yeah, I, I must admit, I've never seen that last move for black. I've seen um, everything up to that point, but that last move for black is brand new to me. Um, I thought that black was pretty much obliged to trade those queens, but Levon Aronian saying no. Um, he does have different ideas and... Um, if we bring up the analysis board, we can see maybe why Timur Rajabov is thinking right now. We can see his issue. OK, I was going to say his issue are these four pieces just not developed, not moving. He decides to develop one of them. He brings his bishop out, creating a huge potential threat along this line. All of Black's pieces lined up on the same diagonal. And that is why Black is saying, OK, I have to get rid of that bishop immediately. Levon Aronian kicking this bishop, um, attacking it. We do see a trade. Finally, Levon Aronian does allow this queen exchange. and The queens have left the board going against Levon's strategy. But despite Black's doubled pawns here, um, we will see some trades in the centre. And long term, personally, I like these bishops. Um, White is very solid for now. White has no real weaknesses. But Black's bishops, if the position opens up, they could become a factor. Um, I think Levon Aronian, he'll be happy with the, well, just with the course of this opening. Um, Timur Rajabov, meanwhile, it's clear to me he's playing for the draw in this game. Mm. <laughs> okay, so tactics are definitely starting to show then Timur Rajabov. He will be the winner of the Air Things Masters if today is a draw. If all games are draw or if they win one each, Levon Aronian, he just needs to get that win at some point. And this would be a perfect time to do it after having those winning well, possibilities in the first game. Yeah, I mean, the one thing I'll say about the first game is that although he came up with these genius ideas and he got a winning position, 
the way to finish off, the way to break through Black's final defences, it wasn't actually easy. Mm. It wasn't obvious, mm. um, especially with one minute on his clock or even less on his clock. So we can forgive Levon for not quite finding the win there, but he knows he had it in the bag. He knows he had that open goal and he couldn't quite um, get the shot off. And um, yeah, I mean, he will be disappointed. That being said, he created a chance and that's much more promising um, considering yesterday when he didn't really have a winning opportunity at all. So already after one game, Levon Aroni, he's created a winning position for himself. He knows he's capable. Um, he just needs to do that all over again. Mm. And it may be in this game, um, but with Queens off the board, it's going to be difficult. Okay, Black there developing a bishop, his dark square bishop. Black's dark square bishop now on like, the longest possible diagonal. Um, long range pieces, these bishops and I like, I like what Levon Aronian is doing. I expect to see here White maybe decide what to do with his king. Does he leave it in the middle? Does he castle? White needs to start connecting the rooks. White's rooks are the only pieces not doing anything right now. All right. Do you think Levon spent some time? He only has 15 minutes in between games. Or do you think he spent some time looking over it? Or was it, I mean, did he just have to forget it and start looking into the next game? Yeah, personally, I never look at my games mm. during the same tournament, um, especially if they've gone badly, because I don't want my own confidence to be knocked. Um, but these guys, we've seen it before, um, even the world champion Magnus Carlsen, they sit at their computer, they just continue, um, they check where they went wrong, um, just in case it comes up again, I guess. Yeah, but, yes. um, but in this situation, would it have been wise for Levon Aronian to have checked the computer and seen that he missed a, quite a, I'm not going to say straightforward, but quite a significant win. Yeah, um, it might have knocked his confidence if he had looked at the computer and seen what he had missed. But these guys, they're very good at switching off and just focusing on the current position, the game at hand. Um, what Levon Aronian maybe needs to do is just take the next few moves, play them as quickly as you can, just get back into the rhythm. Um, just completely forget that last game. It might take him a while, but um, yeah, either way. Um, it's not going to be easy to recover mm -hmm. from that from that missed opportunity. And now Levin Oronian having his first real think of the game after White's dropped a knight in the middle of the board there. Yes, and uh, White, yeah, that White is attacking a pawn. And then we have the kind of eternal question, these two bishops against a bishop and a knight. And also White has very nice pawn structure. Like I, I've always likened these kind of pawn structure in the centre with a, a big pawn in the middle and two supporters. I kind of call it the wall. I've also heard it being called the hat. Yeah, <laughs> that's I've, I've heard it called the triangle. Uh, yeah. yeah, well, it doesn't really matter, actually. You can take your pick. But uh, I, I, I've t I kind of turn it the wall because it's like it's blunting the dark squared bishop that black has. And um, who do you kind of, I know you've kind of expressed a preference for the bishop, but I mean, how, how powerful are the two bishops when you're facing such, well, a wall? Yeah, it's difficult, actually. I think long term, the bishops will be great. Um, Yovanka, you mentioned this bishop at the moment blocked in, black's dark square bishop. And if it does trade itself, then suddenly we see opposite colour bishops, white's bishop on dark squares, black's bishop on light squares. They will just balance each other out. They'll be like ships in the night passing each other. And I think this will go down to a draw. That is why Levon Aroni, he's actually sacrificed a pawn with his last move. Just temporarily, he's brought his light squared bishop out. This, remember, is the, the unrivaled bishop. White has traded off his light squared bishop, so black's light squared bishop becomes much more powerful. This piece is the key. Um, if white grabs the sacrifice pawn with his knight, snatching a pawn, then suddenly we might see a double attack. In uh, Black will hit this pawn, but more importantly, hit this mm -hmm. knight, and black will win a pawn back. That is why white, with his last move, um, preventing black from dropping a bishop into the middle of the board. I love my bishops personally, but white is doing a very good job of using his pawns to control the bishop's best squares. Um, and potentially long term, we will see this bishop maybe get hit with a pawn push on one of these sides. Um, it's just the fact that the bishops, they're lacking great diagonals right now. But the longer the game goes on, the more confident Levon Aronian will be. Meanwhile, yes. Rajabov, he's just looking to tr try and trade or kick away both of yeah. those bishops. I, I, I would say... Uh... For me, this is a, one of the most important things, actually, to just kick out that bishop that's just developed on the light squares because I'm also looking at there is an open line and I really don't want there to be a black rook on it coming down and causing all sorts of mischief. So if you look at it, if white can't actually challenge that line because that bishop 
has just been developed. Yes, it's going to eat that rook. So that's why I'm looking at like pushing it back. I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, you need to you need to occupy open lines with rooks. So getting rid of this black bishop is key for white to, in order to use this open line. And likewise, actually, black wants to use this open line, but there might be a bit of X-ray vision here. The white bishop um, controlling this square indirectly. Um, both sides. Actually, it might come down to who can occupy that open line first. Um, both sides trying to make the use of this one open line in the position. Um, it's not going to be easy to get a rook there. But if Levon Aronian can do that first as black, he will be feeling confident. Um, meanwhile, he's in the move and he's spending a bit of time here just coming up with a plan. Will he castle the king? Will he protect um, a pawn that white knight is now attacking? Lots of choice. It does look like Rajabov maybe has found a good way to just hold on to the position, try and mm. simplify things. <laughs> so many trades already. Yeah, um, yeah it's not yes. going to be easy for Levon to win this one. Certainly not easy. But I mean, we have a question from Cooking Chess, which I'm personally quite interested in hearing your answer to, David. He says, is it better to hate losing or is it much more important to love to win? Ah, mm. that's a good question. <laughs> I think if it's about enjoying chess, then loving to win is the key. Um, I mean, if you're just playing safe, sometimes you'll make a lot of draws and it's not always the most enjoyable. But if you're looking at results, if you're looking at getting to the top of world chess, these guys probably it's just as important to hate losing. What mm -hmm. about you, Ivanka? Which one do you uh, love or hate more? Well, uh, no, I hate losing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like you, Ivanka. I don't really, it's not too important for me to win. I just hate losing. Yeah, just, just uh, well, winning is good. You, you yeah. kind of uh, actually one of the things, one of the dangers we have we have with chess is the more you play chess, the more you kind of hate losing, and the kind of the victories actually get minimised. Mm. You kind of think, well, I was much better than the opponent, so maybe I was ex it was expected of me. But that's actually the wrong attitude. You yeah. gotta love it as well because then your enjoyment just goes through the roof, even. Even if you've won in a bad way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> like you tricked your opponent has been a bit of a game where you were a bit shaky. You still got to love it. You know, that was, that, that kind of really is a good incentive. Mm. But uh, having interviewed a lot of the top players, they all tell me that they're all, when it comes to losing, they don't care. Mm. They, they've lost so many times. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, but we have some moves on the board, David. Yeah, and I was uh, I was just so surprised by Levon Aronin's uh, de decision a couple of moves ago. So actually, the white knight in the centre of the board, that extremely strong white knight, has disappeared. But Black had to give up one of his own bishops for that knight. So we did see a trade, Black's dark square bishop for the white knight. It means we are left with only one set of bishops each, and they're on opposite colours. That means they will likely balance each other out. And black there, Levon Aronian, planting his bishop deep in white's camp, deep in white's territory. Um, that black bishop, it might try and support itself with a pawn. If we bring up the analysis board, we can see Levon Aronian's idea. If white just plays a lazy move, a nothing move, um, kind of an irrelevant move, black will push a pawn further. And this bishop and this pawn will be anchored it's going to be impossible for white to ever get rid of those two pieces. Um, meanwhile, maybe as white, what I would be considering is, do you grab a pawn? Do you get greedy and take this pawn? It's maybe not the most important pawn. Um, white would be a pawn up, but these two pawns, they're doubled. So actually having two isn't necessarily better than having one. But greed is sometimes good, especially in endgames and long term. I'd be tempted. <laughs> yes. I'd be uh, tempted to grab that Wolf one. of Wall Street there. Greed is good. <laughs> <laughs> Take those pawns. <laughs> you can survive. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's an interesting, interesting choice. Uh, I would be, I, I, I do really enjoy what you're, you're saying there with the bishop being anchored to the pawn. I can see the danger there. But I'm also slightly afraid that my bishop is going to get locked out. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to disagree with you there. Okay. I wouldn't grab the pawn. I would uh, focus <laughs> perhaps on getting a rook. Okay, so, uh, well. <laughs> you were right, Yvanka. I was wrong there. Um, White did not get greedy. Um, I think if Rajabov, if he was maybe in a must-win situation, he would have grabbed that pawn and hoped for the best. But um, instead, he chooses to bring his rook across, mm. attacking Black's bishop. I expect to see that pawn, which could have been captured, just step forward and protect the bishop. Mm -hmm. Is there any hope for Levon Rodian in this game? Or is it simply now maybe about looking forward to the next game with white pieces? It's going to be difficult in this mm. one. Um, mm. Just so many trades already. Um, 
both sides just with the bishops, the rooks. Neither side has real targets in the opponent's camps either. Um, they don't have any past pawns. That means pawns that have no rival that can race yeah. towards the end of the board. But what about this little move that's just being played on the board? Because I was just thinking about it because, you know, I've been obsessing about that open line and rooks really need their open lines. And so I'm like, well, what happens if white is the one to take control of that? Perhaps then I could start to make life a little bit unpleasant True. because after all the rooks are still on the board if the rooks were all completely gone from the board then the players will basically agree shake hands agree a draw and that would be the end of that but uh yeah I, um i agree with you i do think that the position will probably fizzle out into a draw but still i think that there's a lot of play left with those rooks on the board yeah, you might well be right. Um, maybe I wrote this game off a bit too soon because White, Timur Rajabov, he has found a very nice manoeuvre. Um, so if we just bring up the board, we can see what White has done so well over the last few moves. White is occupying this open line that we mentioned, uh, that we highlighted a bit earlier. And the problem for Black, the problem for Levon Aronin is he can't challenge this. Um, for example, on his last move, if he had tried to bring his rook across to challenge for this open line, suddenly... Uh, we'd see why White's bishop is so well placed. White's bishop would just simply capture this rook. And if black is unable to challenge to this line, we do see white pushing in the center in the meanwhile. If white, black is unable to challenge for this, for this line, then maybe black's the one on the defensive long term. White will be the only one who can win this. And um, with this last move, Rajabov pushing forward in the center, the black bishop, which looks so beautiful, maybe it's just actually trapped in enemy lines. It's not doing too much. White will just play as if that bishop is not doing anything. He'll just ignore that bishop, kind of play around it. And um, it doesn't have too many targets. Mm -hmm. So actually, yeah, I, if anyone, I'd slightly prefer white. I still think a draw is the most likely result. Mm -hmm. um, how yeah. about you? You choose white here. Yeah, I choose white here. But only, well, it was uh, actually the fault of one of our helpers here, uh, Grandmaster Jan Ludwig Hammer. I went to one of his lectures and it was a precisely about this type of position. Ah. And he's like, no, 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 no. He's, he got so enthusiastic about these things that I actually start to kind of go, oh, well, I can't quite like, <laughs> quite yeah. like the white right side. And he kind of said that it's all about the mini plans. You shouldn't be focused on the big picture. It's all about slowly improving your position. And what's really, really important is that you have to control the dynamics. So if white is trying to win, then he has to control the activity. And this is probably why we're seeing Levon Aronian just break out. That's a very bold decision there. He's giving up a pawn, which we know are, <laughs> <laughs> well, you might take it or you might not take it. <laughs> and uh, he's trying to get active. I, I would grab that pawn now. You'd grab that pawn. And actually, it's noticeable, Rajabov, who looks so placid, who looks so calm all the time, he did frown there after that last decision by Levon Aronian. And Aronian giving up a pawn, that's also reflected in the computer evaluation. We see the bar has gone across to white side. It's gone to plus one for white. That's because white can just simply grab a pawn now. And, um, and he does do that, white snapping off a pawn. I'm struggling to kind of understand what Levon Aronian has in mind. Um, why has he given up this pawn? Yes, he's breaking up White's important pro, uh, important pawn centre. Lots of P's in that sentence. Uh, <laughs> the important pawn centre. Um, but at the same time, White's pawns are on dark squares. That, especially that pawn um, that has just moved, that's just captured blacks. It can be defended by White's bishop. Mm -hmm. um, I, that's a very mysterious one to me. It does look like that was influenced by um, Levon Aronian's must-win situation in yeah. the match today. Um, it's yeah, strange to give up a pawn and then only then think. Exactly. That, that's a little bit baffling. I mean, I, I, I think he was so obsessed with this open line that was providing me with a lot of joy that he's like, OK, well, I'm just going to give up a pawn and block off that bishop and then try my hand at uh, just neutralising those rooks. Because there is one thing we noticed, that if all the rooks were gone, mm. even with that extra pawn, it would still probably be a draw. So I think he's banking on that. He just kind of wants this game over with the black pieces. And uh, yeah, but, you know, a pawn is a pawn. A pawn is a pawn. And also, if we bring up the analysis board, we can see it's not just any pawn. This white pawn is not actually very far away from becoming a new queen. Mm. If this pawn gets to the end of the board, it's only three squares away. Mm -hmm. It will become a new queen. Um, also, we do note that if black tries to attack it, tries to win this pawn, white can simply just drop back the bishop and this pawn will never drop. It's always going to be protected. Um, it does look very odd to me that Levon Aronian is thinking now, having given up that pawn, I would expect a quick move from him. Maybe he'll still go after this pawn. Maybe he'll just start pushing one of his own pawns forward. Um, lots of choice here for Levon Aronian, but 
the stakes are higher mm. now after his last decision. And he is thinking for, well, almost two minutes now, Levon Aronian. You were struggling with the piece there, David. Can I challenge you in an English riddle? Oh. Okay. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Someone taught me this a few years ago. It okay. goes, how much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Your turn. Oh, wood, 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 wood. <laughs> <laughs> how much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a wood chuck could chuck wood? Yes, you got it. Uh -huh. All right. <laughs> I'm getting better. I'm yep. learning new oh, skills I, every I day. Okay, I know, oh, wow, you lost me there. I was just too busy thinking of my own. I wasn't even <laughs> well, listening. You have one too. I do. Okay, I, well, let's I have hear a few. It. I have a few. Let's hear it. So I have, what noise annoys an oyster? Oh, a noisy noise annoys an oyster. David, you try. Noisy oyster? Was that it? What noise? What noise annoys an oyster? What noise annoys an oyster? Oh, oh, I get it. What noise annoys an oyster? Yeah. Ah. Noisy noise. An with noisy noise and noise an oyster. Yeah, a noisy noise. A noisy noise, noise and noise an oyster. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's hard. And then I have another one, but that's not really a word riddle. But it's like one one was a race horse. Two two was one two. When one 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 race. Two two one one two. Oh my gosh. One one was a race horse. Two two was one two. Yeah. When one 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 race. Yeah. When one 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 race. When one 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 race. <laughs> then two two one one two. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was, I, sorry, I, for, I completely forgot your woodchuck thing, so sorry. Yeah, well, that's fine. Okay, it's fun. Let's yeah, riddles. I, I hope everyone at home has a go at this as well with their families, <laughs> with their friends, because my head's already spinning after that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can definitely send them to us. You can join in the fun by tweeting us using the hashtag ChessChamps. And uh, we'll try and get David to read them out on screen. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> should, you give, should you give it a final attempt then, Yvaka? How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> it actually has an ending too. It would chuck as much wood as a woodchuck could if a woodchuck could chuck wood. Okay. Someone's been practicing, Kyle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, meanwhile... Wow, we're having time to do a lot of these riddles because Levon Aronian is uh, thinking for a long time here. Yeah, and ah. he, he does eventually play maybe as well the most natural move, the most obvious move for a human. He's trying to regain that pawn that he did sacrifice. But the white bishop does step back. Indeed, the white bishop guarding that pawn. What has Levon Aronian missed? Why did he sacrifice that pawn and then only then think for five minutes? Mm. Um, it's odd to me. Um, if we bring up the analysis board, I think the, the only thing I can even comprehend here, the only thing that I can guess um, that he missed after White's bishop steps back to defend this pawn is that he wanted to challenge this open line finally with his rook now that White's black's bishop does not cover this square. But the idea he must have missed is maybe that White's rook can just march forward. And yeah. the only way to fight for this open line is to give White an even stronger pawn here. <laughs> White only two squares away from becoming a queen. Um, it does look like this is the move Levon Aronian has missed, this rook jumping forward to this square. Um, it's hard to even come up with an idea here for Levon Aronian. That's why a bit of desperation. He's pushing a pawn forward in the mm -hmm. centre, trying to open things up. Um, I don't think it's going to achieve too much, to be honest. Um, I do think White will just maybe just capture this pawn long term. If White can activate this rook in the corner, this white rook doing nothing, the only piece doing nothing, if White can activate it, he will win. Mm -hmm. All right, and we do see the bar, the computer is really liking uh, White's position here. You were just calling it out earlier that just simply looks like a draw. Is, is it sort of Levon who's giving Timur some chances here? Yeah, he gave a pawn mm. and that is critical stuff. And uh, he didn't even get the necessary dynamics to balance out that pawn. So yeah, we are definitely seeing Levon Aronian struggle here because... White has two now two advantages, has a pawn up, they're very good, also has control of an open line, even better, and uh, a passed pawn. That's three advantages that Levon Aronian has to deal with, and it's totally self-inflicted. Mm. Yeah, I mean, maybe one thing we should mention as well for people who are a bit new to chess, some of the viewers at home, um, if we do bring up the board, we can see White cannot castle, White cannot bring his king to safety, um, and that is because you cannot castle through check. Black's bishop, this very strong bishop, does cover one of the squares that White's king would have to pass through. Um, therefore, White's king cannot castle. Um, and if White's king cannot castle, then maybe the king does block the entry into the game of this white rook. So that is the only thing, really, that uh, maybe Timur Rajabov will struggle with, activating this rook. We do see a trade, meanwhile, of pawns um, on this square. But if this rook does enter the game, maybe it enters the game by pushing a pawn forward and um, it just enters the game on that line that it stands on right now. But if it does, then 
I just don't see how Levon Aronian can really fight back. Um, Levon Aronian, meanwhile, down to four minutes now. The clock is against him. The board is against him. Seems like, he's, uh, seems like he's desperately looking for a way to win this game. Uh, not as we maybe implied already planning the next game. He's just, he wants to get that win as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. He does, but mm. um, maybe he's just still struggling to kind of forget that last game and the mm. roller coaster of emotions. Sometimes you just need to take a time out just after such a wild ride in that last one. He just needed to say to this game, OK, he's got black. A draw is not too bad. He still has two games to, yeah. to fight back. And It was actually a mistake that we've seen twice from Levon Aronio from a kind of psychology point of view. He's forced the situation. He's forced his hand. And uh, Rajabov didn't actually do anything genius, actually. All he did was just play chess and uh, Levon Aronin was the one to crack and to try for something more. But it was not the right decision. And Rajabov himself, he's confessed that he's a counter-attacker. So actually, he plays his best chess when his opponents are trying to make things happen. Um, it means that he, there's less pressure on him. He can just react in a way. So, for example, here, Levon Aronin, he was the one who sacrificed the pawn as black. Timur Rajabov, he's just reacting. He didn't actually need to do anything. He didn't have to kind of find some special way to win a pawn. He didn't have to <laughs> um, mm -hmm. calculate very far in advance. A pawn was just given to him and he's just going to cling on to it. Um, yeah, it's just looking very difficult for Levon Aronian right now and Timur Rajabov. He will, okay, closing his eyes again, he will just be trying mm -hmm. to envisage a way to get that white rook in the bottom right corner uh, mm -hmm. to get that in the game. Meanwhile, we do see in the bottom of the screen the second game also between Maxim Vajelograv and Dubov fighting for that uh, third place. Maxim winning the first game today. They drew the match yesterday. Looks like Dubo is doing okay in this second match. And actually, all games in that uh, match was decided yesterday. <laughs> Dubo winning the first two and Maxim winning the two the two seconds one, are we see? Is that simply because playing for the third game, of, uh, the third place, is not, uh, of course, as important as winning the entire tournament? I think it's actually more just a reflection on the player yeah. styles. Here, these we here we have Aronian and Rajabov, two very practical, very classical players, and then on Dubov against Maxim Vashlikov, their styles are just tactical, make mm. that mess on the board, and I don't think I don't think either player knows how to play for a draw. Ah. So uh, I think what we were going to see there was naturally a lot of washbuckling mm. chess and uh, it was like a movie script wasn't it you know, <laughs> Maxime Vashe Le Grave <laughs> on the edge about to lose you know he Come brings on. it back with one victory and then a second one to tie the match um, who knows what's going to happen on that, on that match yeah yeah, if you ask me who in world chess is a solid player, it's definitely not Dubov or yeah. Vashley Graf. Um, both of them, they love to win more than they hate to lose. I think that's why they're such big, uh, such great fighters. And yeah. I think actually early in the tournament, I made the mistake of saying that Dubo had played solid. <laughs> and there it was against Team Raj oh, uh, it was against Before Timur. he was going to face Rajabo. And, yeah. and Team Raj corrected me and said, wow. What do you mean by solid? Yeah, Kaya? solid, probably the wrong word then to use about Dubo. Great play was maybe what I, I meant after he actually beat world champion Magnus Carls, knocked him out of the tournament in the quarterfinal. So impressive stuff there by Daniel Dubov. But not yeah. solid. <laughs> not solid. And um, he has struggled ever since those first two wins yesterday. Um, yeah, I mean, Dubov and Vashil Graf, it's, it's just so refreshing. It's so rare to see such two elite players and five games in a row, no draws. I mean, that's... Fantastic. Um, that's wonderful to see. And actually, <laughs> um, talking of no draws, Levon Aronian, he is pushing forward. Um, he is trying to create some fire on the board now. Uh, Black giving up a pawn there, another pawn. So Black currently two pawns down. Okay, it was just a bit of a trade, though. He deflected the white bishop. He distracted white's bishop um, from the protection of that pawn that Black has just gobbled up with his rook. So White's still a pawn ahead, but it's a different pawn this time. White just having a three versus two advantage on the right half of the board. Um, long term, that could be a factor, but at least Black's rooks are slightly more active than mm -hmm. they were. And at least that past pawn that was a big potential problem has uh, disappeared from the board. So, uh, you know, the Black rooks have a lot more freedom. White's White rooks, oh, dude, I just love white rooks, I have to say. I'm really enjoying how that white rook on the left has just got a free line just to zoom up and down. And uh, again, Rajabov doing everything correctly. He's now moved his king and clearing the path for the other rook to come and join the game. Yes, yeah, so white's other rook now, this rook in the corner that I mentioned earlier, this rook 
is about to enter. Um, okay, black going for a trade on this side, but white's rook later, this one will start to find some good squares. And once that does, white will have no problem pieces. White will be a pawn ahead. But meanwhile, Levin Aronian asking for a trade on this side. If white captures the rook, then maybe black has an open line. He has a target suddenly. Mm -hmm. Finally, he has a target. He has something to hope for. So Timur Rajabov, does he go for this trade? Does he allow it? It's actually hard to prevent it. Um, you could run away with your rook, um, but suddenly black is the one controlling this line. And um, I think a very clever idea there by Levon um, Aronian mm -hmm. is black. What would you do here, Yavanka? Would you allow this trade? Would you capture this rook? No, I, I don't like it because, you know, one of the fundamental plans actually that uh, Jon Ludwig Hammer was telling me was that you needed to control your opponent's dynamism and perhaps... Now, seeing Levon Aronian's last move, maybe this king move was actually a mistake because it allowed the rook to get active. And uh, yeah, I, I would probably, I don't, I don't, it's I don't know. Say, right? I, it's, it's difficult. It's, it's difficult. Every, every move has a disadvantage. If I swap off rooks, then I give black the line to attack. If I just move my rook, sideways then look at that rook what a horrible what a horrible piece it is it's not doing anything um and if i i have to do something with that rook um if i move it up then maybe i'm even risking that black will have a, a great pass pawn okay so actually we do see um that decision has been made for us um, okay yovanka <laughs> not being sure that i'm not, i wasn't sure either um what to go for and actually timor rajabov he made that decision quite quickly um he did go for the rook trade but now we do see black's rook shift across to the side there we did mention that black finally in the game has a target white's pawn um that corn on the left side of the, uh, that pawn at the left side of the board there um, is under attack. Will White's Rook have to go to a passive square to defend it? Will White's Bishop defend that pawn? Either way, the last two, three moves, they've kind of improved Levon Aronian's chances, I feel. Wow. Um, I mean, the computer disagrees, <laughs> but I do think that with opposite colour bishops on the board, um, the fact that Black has finally some activity or something to hope for mm -hmm. uh, means that Levon Aronian, he's slowly starting the fight back in this game. And we do see that uh, the second game between uh, Maxim Vajelograv and Daniel Dubov has actually ended in a draw. <laughs> we the jinxed first it. draw. <laughs> we jinxed it, I know. So it is Maxim uh, who is up uh, in that match after winning the first game today. Mm -hmm. All right, and we do have a move. Yes, and White's Rook has gone from one very <laughs> blocked in square to another very blocked in. Uh, square. So White's Rook there just tied down defending that corner pawn. Was this a decision that you like? Because to me, I. I... I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what is that rook doing defending? That rook needs to be active. I, I would much rather have used my bishop to defend that pawn. Yes, and um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely not a move Rajabov wanted to play either. And Levon Aronian, meanwhile, replying immediately. I'm surprised by that last decision, black bringing his rook up. It's not clear that the black rook is actually better on that square than where it was. I would have started to improve the black king. Mm. I would have brought that black king into the middle. Um... Yeah, very okay. interesting. It Actually, is. could the white king suddenly start running up? You know, <laughs> I, I didn't like white's rook move, I'll, I'll be honest there. But if white gets bold with the king and starts running all the way to that side, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> so you start your journey and, for example, if black checks you, you say, OK, I'm not scared. Let's keep running. <laughs> keep running. Yeah, that's the one. You've got a target in mind, Yvanka. Exactly. Run for home. Run as fast as I can. I'm going to try and eat that pawn. And then maybe... I'll have to eat my words and go, well, actually, that rook move was very sophisticated because it's now supporting a pawn, which is rooks, which is what you want to do, rooks behind pawns. So Yeah, so if this black pawn disappears, then suddenly white's rook will look like a genius supporting yeah. a future president, a future, <laughs> a future queen. Second uh, wife. Second wife. Second wife. <laughs> um, so, yes, um, it does look like maybe this is a very interesting moment for Timur Rajabov. It is brave, though, to start running the king forward when you're in already kind of the lead in the match. It does entail some risk if you bring your king too far forward. It's a chance it might become a target, but... Um, yeah, it does look like a very tempting opportunity for Timur Rajabov. And he's probably mulling that one over right now. That's why Rajabov is spending the time. Um, will he run that king forward? Um, if he does it, Yovanka, okay, he, he doesn't go for it. Um, instead, pushing a pawn. Another sensible move. White has that three versus two pawn advantage on the right side. Normally, the side that you're better on, that's where you want to start advancing. And uh, now Levon Aronian, he's the one using his king, the black king, 
um, to step forward into the mm -hmm. centre. Um, I think he could have done that last move, but he does, uh, he does stumble across that plan now. And the onus is back on Rajabov. How to make progress? White with the extra pawn, but with the passive rook. How does White try to win this game? Yeah. If I were him, I'd just be quick and consistent. I'd keep pushing pawns on that right side now. Once you've said A, you might as well say B. Um, why not push those pawns? But he will be trying to uh, ensure that Aronian's plan with that king advance um, mm. isn't too scary. Um, yeah, very tense situation here. And Rajabov may be starting to feel the nerves and the clock ticking down. I didn't even realise that Levon was so low on the clock there. No, I didn't realise that either. Just under two minutes, uh, that's got to be painful because it's a very, very complex position because whilst the rooks are on the board, anything can happen. And uh, the king is now centralised itself. And uh, yeah, he's following your recommendation. Be stubborn <laughs> and persistent with your plan so those pawns are going to keep rolling on the right. Yeah, both sides very consistent with their plans. Um, White, Timur Rajabov decided it was best to push pawns. Aronin decided it was best, best to push his king forward to the middle. And both sides sticking with that. Rajabov again pushing a pawn on the right side. Aronin's idea was to push his central pawn, kicking back um, White's bishop. And that has happened. But the problem is, what next for Levon Aronian? He needs to remember, justify the fact that he is a pawn down. And he needs to do it quickly while White's rook is still in the corner there um, on a very poor passive square. Mm -hmm. um, I think maybe he'll be trying to just find a new target of attack. Um, if we bring up the analysis board from Levon Aronian, I'm looking for him to maybe try and get at this white pawn, the base of white's pawn chain. This is a very nice chain. Often you need to break down the base. And OK, he brings his rook back. Maybe that rook is going to swing across and try to harass this pawn, try to attack this pawn with the help of Black's bishop. Um, a bit of a non kind of uh, non-committal move there from Levon Aronian, putting his rook back in the corner. And remember, it was actually there just two, three moves ago. So... Um, I do think maybe he could have been more productive with that, uh, with that rook over the last few turns. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so is it now time for White just to go forward with the king and start uh, pushing those pawns on the right? Yeah, it will come down to whether these pawns are pushing forward, whether one of them can become a queen or whether one of them can at least tie down Black's pieces. Mm -hmm. um, it's still everything to play for. Um, the computer does favour white, but I do think in practical terms, black has decent drawing chances mm. at least. Yeah, it's just one of those situations where the bar is just... It, it has been more than two advantage for Timor. Uh, but yeah. where it's just practically, and when you're playing it, not that easy to No, see. it's not that easy. I mean, here it's all about activity. It's all about mobilising the rooks, you know, because you have to remember, if... If white wins the second pawn, but the rooks get traded off, then in all likelihood, the position will be a draw. So I don't think the computers quite recognise that at the minute. They don't have the foresight to see deeper, but humans can and they do understand the dangers. Yeah, that's one area maybe that computers do still struggle compared to humans. Um, the computer, it knows that white has the advantage but that doesn't mean that white will necessarily win. As a human, you know whose position is actually easier to play and maybe you know the type of advantage. So here, white's advantage is long-term with the extra pawn, which is great, but maybe there's just no winning plan at the end or maybe there are just too many obstacles to overcome in the process um, of trying to push that advantage through. And meanwhile, it's still hard to come up with that plan for white. Um, white's rook, meanwhile, still very passive in that corner square. Um, Levon Aronian, meanwhile, playing a bit of a waiting game um, just retreating the king. He retreated his rook last move as well. He's just saying to Rajabov, how do you improve your position? I don't think you can um, improve it quite enough. And there we see Rajabov as well, playing a bit of a waiting game, rerouting his bishop. Um, maybe the white bishop there at the corner, it wants to target black's pawn in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, black's pawn in the middle is the only pawn on dark squares. It's the only potential target yeah. For White's bishop. Yes. And, do, and uh, one of the things that I notice is that uh, what White really wants to do is to actually to provoke Black to push that pawn forward just to get really eager and go, hey, let's trade. Because in that case, White will go, no, no, I'm just going to push my pawn. And there'll be a situation where we have three versus one on the, uh, on the right. Yeah, so if we do bring up the board, we can see what White is hoping for. If White, for example, brings the bishop back, 
eyeing up this pawn a bit later on. And black should not get tempted to push this pawn forward because suddenly white says, no trade for you. Um, white's king will blockade the pawn in the middle. Meanwhile, white now has a, pretty much a three versus one advantage on this side. White will start pushing forward. White mm -hmm. will have a winning advantage. So black has to just sit still and do nothing. That's what Levon is doing. His strategy is just to wait. And we see that reflected in the game. Um, black retreating with the king. His last few moves have actually been king forward, king back, king forward, king back. Mm. Uh, he's, <laughs> Levon is definitely waiting here. Is he inviting for a move repetition here? Is, He'd is be that... happy with one. Yeah, he's just trying to pass the time because he feels like everything is solid, that there's nothing to be done, so therefore just pass. Yeah, and meanwhile, talking of passing moves, <laughs> uh, Rajabov there just waiting with the white rook. The white rook is not necessarily on a better square than it was. Maybe the white rook's aiming to step across one square um, to attack a black pawn, mm -hmm. but Aronian saying, I don't care, I don't believe you. Uh, the black yeah. king goes back to the middle. Um, a good kind of blitz strategy that I was kind of taught by uh, one of English grandmasters, I think Keith Alcor, he says that when he plays position like this, where objectively it is a draw, what you do is you keep passing. Mm. You pass, you pass, you pass, you pass, and your opponent kind of thinks, OK, well, the position is clearly headed into a draw, so therefore it, they get careless. Mm. And this is where you do like five passing moves and then one dangerous move. <sighs> And the <laughs> they might not sense the danger. They might be exactly. lulled into that false exactly. sense of Exactly, and they said they, they win so many times with this strategy. Um, the, 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 the key is actually to restrain yourself when you spot the dangerous trick, not to do it immediately. you kind of got to hide your intentions. Mm. Yeah, and meanwhile, I do like what Timur Rajabov has done. Um, so White has relocated his bishop to that left side. That bishop now holds together White's pawns on the left side, liberating the White Rook. So the White's Rook was tied down for so long. Suddenly, White's Rook... Um, has the freedom to bring itself across the board. It still needs to choose a better square. It's not clear where the rook belongs. Meanwhile, I do not like that decision. It's a very ugly decision by Levon Aronian. Putting that pawn on a dart square, I don't mm. really understand it. Why is that pawn on a dart square? Yes, it's holding up white's pawns temporarily, but that black pawn that just moved, it's a target long-term for white's bishop. Yeah, um, and it increases the, the risk factor, right? When If the rooks were to get exchanged... Then suddenly, oh, lo and behold, there is a pawn to munch on for that bishop. So I don't like, I agree with you, David, I don't like what's happened there. Yeah, and I have noticed, having played against Levon myself several times, occasionally he does get slightly impatient. And uh, maybe Black touching that pawn um, up there on the, on the, um, sorry, on the left corner, on the right corner, uh, that Black pawn, touching that pawn, it might be his downfall a bit later on. Meanwhile, Timur Rajabov um, improving his rook. I do feel that that pawn move by Levon, it will cost him long term. I think he actually had not quite a fortress, but he had a structure that's very hard to break through. White lacked a winning plan, um, but he's kind of given him a winning plan. He's given his opponent a target by putting a pawn on a dart square. And meanwhile, Levon Aronian just retreating his bishop there. He doesn't know how to improve his position. He's just hoping that Timur Rajabov as White can't improve either. Mm. Do you agree more with the bar now, saying 3.6 advantage for black? This time... For white, sorry. Yes, this time um, I think it's not just a long-term advantage of having that extra pawn. I think white has something to hope for. Yovanka mentioned trading rooks. White couldn't have traded rooks a few moments ago because it would just be opposite colour bishops. Black would blockade on the light squares and white wouldn't be able to break through. But suddenly with one black pawn, um, I mean one black pawn in the corner there on a dark square, Suddenly, if the rooks come off, that pawn, pawn will likely just drop off the board. Um, so in endgames, we always got to be very, very aware of what trades are favourable, what trades we can't go for. And Black, he's lost his margin for error. If the rooks come off, I think White will win. Um, and there we go. OK, White's bishop stepping forward, Black's king in the middle of the board. The bishop, look at it, it's gone after that black mm. pawn at the right corner. <laughs> it's double it's... attack, double attack. It's not just the bishop that's attacking the pawn, David. It's also the rook that is now attacking. So, oh. Okay, Levon Aroni, he defends one of the pawns with his king, the pawn that was attacked by White's rook. But now his pawn in the corner, it's, it's just dropping off. Um, oh, he didn't, he didn't, <laughs> he didn't capture it. I, I thought that he would have captured that in one go and then gone forward, forward, forward with those pawns. Yeah, I mean, I think Timur Rajabov, he could have captured that black pawn there in the top right-hand corner. He could have captured it. He would have been winning, but he just decided he doesn't even want to allow any optimism for Levon Aronian. So White defends one yeah. of his own pawns. Now that pawn, <laughs> black's pawn is still under attack. Yeah, he has to defend it with the rook, right? He has to and defend it with the rook. And then, of course, 
then of course, uh, well, now White's Rook gets moved. This is amazing play by Rajabov. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just... other level, right? Killer technique and okay, Levon Aronian. I think that pawn push, um, it's just pure desperation. And we see Levon Aronian shaking his head as well. He realised as soon as he made that move, it's just a terrible um, strategic decision. Um, Levon, he made that move with two seconds left on his clock and White snaps off that pawn in the corner there. Um, uh, this game is going to be over very shortly. All of wow. White's pawns. Look at those white pawns on the right mm, side. Two seconds. Okay, he just made us move with <laughs> one and a half seconds left. Oh, okay, so Levon is throwing those pawns forward, is desperately trying to confuse the issue. But, uh, you oh, know, his head here. look at that. That's uh, three pawns up. Yeah, White has three extra pawns right now. Black has one dangerous pawn. Black's pawn two squares from becoming a queen. But notice, Black's pawn, the square it wants to go to, the square it will promote on, it's covered by White's bishop. It will never get to its end goal. It will never become a queen. And then, okay, Timur Rajabov just steps across with his king. The White king now will cover that Black pawn. Meanwhile, White's four pawns, they will overwhelm um, the Black pieces. One of them will likely become a queen. If not... At the very least, um, Black will have to sacrifice his bishop for mm -hmm. some of what those white pawns. Um, Aronian just playing for tricks now. It's lost. Uh, I mean, last chance for him, really. Yeah. Um, desperate times. And uh, well, eight, seven, seven seconds for Team War here. So I guess the clock could be what he needs to hope for here. As uh, yeah, yeah, but I actually, just look at him. He doesn't look flustered at all. And it's mm. like uh, Sakushia says, okay. uh, Rajabov looks insanely calm. <laughs> Seconds. He, he doesn't look flustered, but he went down to one second there <laughs> and he moved his king. So White's bishop covering the square that that black pawn wants to promote on. Oh, I almost had a heart attack. <laughs> that. Um, one second left and he did find a good move. But um, it's, it is getting a bit close. That white rook suddenly trapped and the white bishop still just about stopping the black pawn from advancing. Two that... seconds. He's just made it, you know, he's pushed the pawn forward. He's inviting some trades. But now it really is a race. It just has to get going. Yeah, white's still winning, but he has given back a pawn and he's lost a bit of control. Suddenly black has something to hope for, at least. Mm -hmm. um, Black's king very active. Black with this very strong pawn. Um, it does feel like Rajabov. He had a cleaner way to victory. He didn't have to allow any of this counterplay. He didn't have to drop so low on time. Um, but Aronian, the, the pressure's back on him. How to, <laughs> how to build the pressure? Um, I would just step forward with my king, trying to go for that white rook. Um, it's not easy, though. Uh, Levon Aronian, he needs to come up with something quickly because white still has these pawns on the right side, which later on... Will yeah. A factor. So he's moved his. I would just retreat my bishop all the way back, and you <laughs> see it there on the board. So those two pieces are holding that dangerous pawn at bay, and uh, now I would be looking at uh, advancing my pawns because this bishop that the black that black has is actually just trapped. Yeah, um, the black bishop traps the white rook also traps, so they kind of balance each other out. Mm -hmm. But it will come down to uh, that right side of the board. Black's rook will, is rooks are so bad at. Uh, stopping pr uh, protected past pawns. Yeah. Those two white pawns on the right side, together they will win. Meanwhile, yeah. white also has this pawn on the left side. Yeah, exactly, just get going with the left one. I like the left one first, that's it. Make its way towards the queen. So now the, the bishop is being attacked and I think just a sim... You can just, just be move it. Yeah, you can move it with a check and then push your pawn one more square forward and that's it. It's, I think it's going to game over. Yeah. We're just looking for Timur Rajabov to move that bishop and he's likely to win the game. Um, if he doesn't move the bishop, then it might get a bit more tricky, a bit more complicated. The bishop does step forward. Black can actually make a new queen here, but white's bishop will sacrifice itself um, and long-term, one of white's pawns is going to become a queen. Mm -hmm. uh, Black's rook <laughs> chasing that white bishop. Um, <laughs> he's, he's trying his best to create some last threats. Oh, but... shaking his head there, Levon Aronian. Yeah, he's repeated the position twice. Okay, so now desperately hoping for a repetition of moves, but now the bishop goes to a different square and all the, all the while Rajabov is collecting 10 extra seconds. Yeah, Rajabov repeating the position there once, just showing who's in control, gaining some time on the clock and then putting his bishop on a different square. Bishop's are such long-range pieces. Um, it still covers that black pawn from becoming a new queen. Black, he's trying this last trick. He's trying to keep going for that bishop. If he can eliminate the bishop, he'll make a new queen. But Rajabov, closing his eyes a, a moment ago, he's just trying to calculate the win. Um, I mean, I would be very tempted to even just push my pawn, um, push my pawn in this position. 
Which of them? Uh, he's point. done it. Sorry. He's uh, it. he has pushed the pawn, and uh, now we're going to see the queen. The second wow. black is on the board. We hardly ever see that. <laughs> this. Finally, we get to see a new queen on the board, and this is devastating for Levona Ronian, and, of course. Yes. Another new queen on the board. Both sides have made new queens, but the key is that it's white to move first. Oh, very nice. Beautiful idea there. We'll show that a bit later on, and. Levon Aronian, he resigns. It's over and it is super dramatic now in the final for Levon Aronian. With the lost here, losing yesterday, he has to win the next game to stay in the final. If it's a draw, if uh, Timo Rajabo wins that, it will be over. Uh, Timo Rajabo will be the winner of the Air Things Masters final. So it's super, super dramatic now. What's going through Levon's head now, David? It's last chance uh, saloon for him. He mm. he knows he needs a win in the next game. He needs to pray. Uh, his fate is out of his own hands. Um, he just needs to put the pressure on and hope that somehow he can break through. It's not going to be easy. Mm. Uh, he needs to pick himself off, uh, pick himself up, forget this game, and just hope for the best. Yeah, we see him shaking his head there, and we also see Timo Rajabo not in any way celebrating here, Ivanka, but inside. How is he feeling? Do you think? Uh, inside, I think he is. They're certainly happy, you know, mm. how could you not be? He is so close to winning the Air Things Masters. If he gets a draw to mo in the next game, that's it. He's that's drawn he the match and therefore he has won their head-to-head -head and uh, he has to be feeling happy. But at the same time, we've seen him be exceptionally calm. Mm. So perhaps he's actually not thinking anything. He's wow. just like, OK, fine, let's focus on what needs to be done. And that is game three. Wow. OK, it is getting so, so dramatic in the final of the Air Things Masters. This last game here, ending with a win for Team Orojabo after you said... For a long time, wow, this is a draw, this is a draw. What happened, David, in the game? Yeah, so it did come down to those last tense few seconds, both sides dropping low on the clock. And actually, Levon Aronin, maybe he was the master, uh, the kind of creator of his own uh, demise in that game. He did contribute a lot to his loss. We do see in this position both sides with strong pawns, but the crucial thing is that white just has too many pawns. This white pawn, very close to becoming a new queen, and... Even if that doesn't uh, promote, then White has another potential queen on this side. We did see Levon try to complicate things. He brought his rook down to attack White's bishop, uh, just trying to get rid of this bishop so that his own pawn can become a new queen. The bishop did run away, and we saw a bit of cat and mouse here. The bishop running, the black rook chasing, and eventually we did see the advance of White's pawn, and this signaled the end. A new queen was about to... Uh, drop on the board. We did see that happen. Black's Rook capturing the bishop, um, allowing his own pawn to become a new queen. And once the queens came on the board, a very sudden end. And actually, um, I didn't even spot this. I thought White would go for checkmate. White has the move. Um, White's queen could drop down, for example, and give Black check. But Rajabov found an even more beautiful solution, mm. an even cleaner solution. Um, this is why we will say look for checks and captures, because they are the most forcing type of move. White captured this bishop, and actually Aronian resigned immediately. Um, Black only has one sensible move. His queen is attacked, and more importantly, it's check. He could capture this white, ro uh, white rook, but now we see a skewer. White's queen would step across, attacking the Black King, and when the king moves, uh, the Black Queen would drop. For example, the king moves, the queen captures the queen. White has an overwhelming material advantage here, and therefore, Levon Aronian decided to resign. <laughs> all be over after the next game in the final between these two. If Levon Aronian is not able to win that game, then Timo Rajabo will be the winner of the Air Things Masters. Levon Aronian, he has to win because he did lose that uh, first final match yesterday and he did lose now this second game in the final, uh, in the final match between these two. Timo Rajabo getting just a huge advantage here. Wow. Uh, next game will be so interesting. Levon Aronian will have the white pieces. He needs to come up with just the perfect winning plan, I guess. Yeah, it's do or die. A draw is the same as a loss, so he has to throw everything at his opponent. Yeah, he has to win both remaining matches. That's not an easy task when we've seen Rajarov be on top of his game. So, yeah, 
Levon Aronian on the brink of losing. Mm, all right. Well, the chess players, they're not the only ones being tested in the Air Things Masters. We also put our expert commentator, David Howell, to the test. He met up with Olympic gold medalist Axel Lund Svindal, a downhill skier, one of the best in history. Now, at some point, Axel would uh, choo- uh, would uh, teach uh, David how to ski downhill, but first, uh, it was all about playing chess. We're here today at Snow, and I'm very excited. I'm going to be meeting Axel Lund Svindal, a Norwegian Olympic medalist at alpine skiing. Um, yeah, I'm actually a bit terrified as well, as you see behind. It's a big slope and I'm British. I haven't skied much in my life. Luckily, we're going to be playing some chess first. Svindal is actually going to play against Magnus Carlsen later. What Carlsen doesn't know is that I'm going to train Svindal. Carlsen will never know what hit him. So I'm not a chess player at all. Okay, but suddenly you're jumping in at the deep end and playing the world champion later. That's, yeah, exactly. It's pretty brave. <laughs> it's, um, brave. well, I mean, I guess you're here to hold my hand, so that's why it feels exactly. somewhat safe. If you trick Magnus, that'll be the highlight of my life, pretty much, okay. <laughs> my chess career. Just kind of teach you a few things about what you should be aiming for in the beginning of the game. Okay, well, uh, let's Do start you... with that, actually. Okay, yeah. so there's three things to remember in the beginning, like control the center, ideally with a pawn, then develop some pieces, and then get the king to safety. Do you know about castling? Do you know about? Castling. And this one goes? Jumps over, yes. But these uh, what, towers, what do you call them? Yeah, rooks. Rooks, yeah. if we move this guy, then this guy has some protection. Actually, yeah. But with this opening, there's no way he um, could have gotten me to chess. He can't yet, have checked right? you no. yet, nearly no matter what he does. Yeah. So this is uh, also a part of our strategy then. Exactly. I was told when I was young, knights before bishops. Knight on the rim is dim. If we put the horse here, he can strike them both. What we want here is to attack this guy and this guy. The question is, how deep into action do we get him? How brave are you feeling? Let's go back to the beginning again. Okay. Uh, I understand that uh, chess is... Um, Relatively new to you? Um, yeah, I have a lot more time than you have, so... Um... Yeah, you have plenty of, plenty of time to think, plenty of time to talk. Okay, so I'll do my best at doing both. <laughs> we'll start. Yeah, that's a good first move. If you could attack that knight, that would be, would be good for you. Yeah, but I can, but then you have a horse there, I see. But I can attack it with uh, something else, maybe. Hold on. Well... Remember what I told you. Control the center. Knight before bishop. Get your king to safety. Nope. No, that wasn't it. That was a horrible move. This is a move that neither defends any pieces nor attacks any pieces. It's a good rule for, for life as well. If you do things that are, are inherently purposeless, then that's not a good idea. If you have a purposeless uh, move in life, um, doesn't seem very motivating. No. Oh, I forgot that I have little time. Actually, I'm nervous, which just like makes no sense whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> you have the chance to win that night back. Uh, don't talk too much. But now I'm coming for you. I'll give a check. This is uh, not awesome. Uh, so now the conclusion is very near. It is. And there we have it. That's the checkmate. Okay, I can't say that I saw it coming, but uh, I mean, I saw some pieces moving into the corner, but uh, I didn't see the checkmate coming. You sur- survived a lot longer than Bill Gates, for instance. So. <laughs> okay, that's actually probably the highest praise that I've ever gotten. <laughs> you feel ready? Oh, huh? I've been looking forward to this for ages. 
Is that uh, a little slight sarcasm? Yeah. But no. Bring it on. I'm excited. 15 years ago, I skied for less than half an hour. I got overconfident. I crashed into my friend's brother. He had to get taken away to hospital in a helicopter, and they oh. said I was a danger to everyone else. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. let's try to avoid that this time. I got you. No so, so. Oh shit, 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 sorry. I, I can't even talk. My legs are like jelly. Are we actually going down here? Yeah, but um, just to get you, uh, to build your confidence a little bit. Thank you. What yes. we're looking at is yeah. perfect conditions. Okay. So this just has to work. There's no way it can't okay. work because we got perfect conditions. Thank you, I feel more confident now. You do, right? 1% more confident, yeah. I'll go a few meters first and then okay. you can follow, okay? So I put pressure on this foot. Okay. Oh and my this God. foot takes me back. Just so move, how do I start? I just... So like, no. forward and pressure on the oh. left. Yeah. Oh, this is the... <laughs> I feel like Bambi. <laughs> <laughs> I get an image how you guys feel watching me play chess because <laughs> obviously you look like a beginner right True. But this is exactly how, this is how I look on the chessboard. Okay, good point. Do you feel like a disappointed teacher though that I'm still at a beginner level? So Axel, I've been thinking, could yeah. I give it one more shot? Yeah, I, I love that you're not giving up. Chess and players you, never give up. You feel ready for this, right? Bring it on. <laughs> so smooth at the yeah. end. Looking like so a good. pro in the end there, David. Yeah, that was definitely me at the end. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how do you feel about seeing this one more time? Uh, I'm relieved it's out there in the world now. Yeah. So <laughs> people can laugh at me, it's okay. But I well, really enjoyed it. Best day of my life. Well, you say people can la laugh at you. Well, some did. But <laughs> Anish Giri, I have to say, he was like, I'm a noob, but love this mountain skiing thing. Can you hook me up with ah. your boys one day? So he thought it looked like a lot of fun. And it wasn't just Anish Giri, Magnus Carlsen himself oh, wow. also said, also, David Howell on skis is just great. <laughs> <laughs> you got a fan there, David. Yep. And uh, then we had a tweet from Matthew Van Der Vaunt, who says, lovely skiing in lesson in set. Thank you, Bambi. <laughs> <laughs> and in response to yesterday's quiz, when we asked everyone, oh, yeah. how would they spend $60,000? Well, Chad did answer, David should spend $60,000 on ski lessons. <laughs> I'd still be falling over quite a lot after that. <laughs> well, I have to, David, we're so proud of you for doing it. And I have to tell everyone, it's important that you know that the hill that David started skiing in was super steep. That's not a beginner's hill. <laughs> so, I mean, not, it's, I'm not too surprised you did fall over quite a bit. Uh, you're just saying that, Kaya, <laughs> because you feel sorry for me. But thank you. It was so much fun. Yeah, good. I'm glad to hear it. Now, uh, we also have a quiz of the day, Ivanka. Yes, we are asking everyone at home to tell us their favourite chess moment. And we had some tweets. We have a tweet from Jimmy Cecil who says, my favourite moment in chess, the birth of oh. a new champion. And that historic moment when Magnus just won the world championship against Vichy Annan and has thrown himself into the swimming pool. And then we have another tweet from Dimitri P. who This one I can relate to hardcore. You have, uh, here's my... Two favorite chess moments, and then you can see it. Great win. You saw your chance and took it. Zero mistakes, zero blunders, ah. zero missed <laughs> wins. Pure perfection. And then there's a picture of us. Yes. Yay. A flattery will get you everywhere, Dimitri P. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and then finally, we have our final tweet, which is from Ilya Teklich, he says, my favorite chess ah. moment, meeting Gary Kasparov when he played simultaneous matches in my hometown in 2012 and getting his autograph. P.S. He won 
all the games must end. Then we can see a picture of the Simul and uh, beautiful. I do really like it when the top grandmasters go to towns and give simultaneous ex exhibitions. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. And you get to kind of get up close and personal with grandmasters. Mm, definitely. Yeah, and actually, when I was eight years old, I met Gary Kasparov and I oh. have his autograph framed. Ah. Um, it definitely inspired me. Um, his autograph, it looks like he's writing like cheese fox or something. <laughs> <laughs> Still um, inspiring when you meet these top players. They're all so, I mean, so lovely and so accessible nowadays. Um, Magnus Carlsen, for example, playing people online and... Um, yeah, I'm hoping that inspires many of the new generation. Yeah, definitely. Head off, isn't it? All right. Um, the third game between Levon Aronian and uh, Timo Rajabo in the second, the final match in the final is about to start. It could also be the final game. If it is a draw or a win for Timo Rajabo, then the, the match is over. He will be the winner of the Air Things Masters. Levon Aronian sitting there. He's ready with the white pieces. There's only one possible result for him here that he needs. He needs the win. It's the only result he can play for. And he actually made his move. Uh, and Timur Rajabo is uh, not here. Yeah, that's surprising. Um, Rajabov, surely he would have known that the game was about to start. And um, it'll be interesting to see whether they go back and give him the time that he's lost or whether he'll just have to continue having lost a bit of time on this, mm -hmm. on this first move. Um, it'll be, well, I'm sure he'll be at the board soon. Um, meanwhile, Levon Aronian playing with his king's pawn there, pushing the king's pawn forward uh, with white. That shows maybe he's going to go for a similar strategy that we saw nearly paid off, nearly worked in that first game today, um, where Lev Levon Aronian did get a winning position. Time is running, actually, for Team Morajabo. Um, in some tournaments, you see that it's an automatic loss if you're not there when the game starts. Uh, obviously, that's not the case here, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there used to be a rule. I think they've kind of done done away with it now that if you weren't at the board when the arbiter shouted go, then, uh, yeah, you're going to lose. Mm. But uh, I think that it's now a 15-minute time respite. And uh, here, I'm just waiting for Rajabov yeah. to dash across and make the first move. It's going to be interesting to watch the webcam now when he just suddenly appears. But almost two minutes lost on the clock here for, uh, for him. Imagine if this uh, game goes into a very tough, uh, well, time trouble for them. Yeah, and um, I do kind of hope that, um, I mean, if they did arrange what time they started, I do hope that they don't reset the clocks because actually it's unfair on Aronian that he's mm. having to wait. If they give Timor Rajabov his I time am back. actually getting word though that they will reset the clock. So reset. he will be back on um, yeah. 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, it must be, I mean, a bit of mind games here maybe, but Levon Aronian just having to wait. Um, he probably just wants to get the game started. He wants another chance to fight back. And, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's a shame for him that he's being forced to just sit. And Yes. Do you enjoy it when your opponents are late and they, they, you've been forced to sit there waiting <laughs> for them? I, make their appearance. I don't give them that opportunity. I'm always the one who's late for my games. Um, <laughs> actually, I have this thing. I always turn up three to four minutes late for my oh. games because I prefer getting in the zone. I don't really want to be talking to people before the clock start. Um, often I'll sit there and then suddenly someone just comes over and distracts me a bit. So I prefer to get in the zone. And I think it's a bit of mind games. Whoever has been sat there waiting is at a small disadvantage. You know, my father used to say that to me as well. That was always his justification for late timekeeping. No, 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 it's good. It's mm. good. Your opponent will have been waiting for you, yeah. getting frustrated. And, I, you know, I didn't like it. So, is it is it seen as disrespectful or is it, ah, he's here. Oh, and he says like, oh, so he's uh, <laughs> maybe not realising that he was. Yeah, you can see that. <laughs> like, what, what, what? <laughs> <laughs> that's the most expression we've seen from Rajabov. Yeah, that's true. He's always Mr. Cool. Yeah. Okay, well, he needs to make a move and then his clock will be back to 15 minutes as we see. Okay, we have yeah. started. Yeah, I think that was just a misunderstanding, maybe some miscommunication there about the game time. Um, definitely Timur Rajabov, he's not the type of person who would even try and disrespect an opponent. So um, we do see actually a repeat of the game from earlier. Um, and a slight nuance there, uh, slight nuance here. So in the last game, White immediately castled his king. He brought his king to the middle. This time he delays that decision. Um, both kings still in the middle of the board. Um, okay, actually, Levon Aronian does finally make that decision. He does castle the white king. But this is extremely um, risky stuff. We mentioned it last time. Um, in the game, the first game today, no pieces were traded off after 19 moves. Um, and a lot of tension build up, and that's going to build up, and this, that is going to happen again 
um, in this game. Um, Timur Rajabov, meanwhile, delaying the decision with his king as well. Um, I do expect maybe a short think here from Timur Rajabov. This is must be very rare territory, um, new turf for both sides. I doubt this position has been seen too much before. Um, in this opening, the Italian game, there's so many different move orders. Each side has five or six different options on every move, and that just builds up. Um, so there's almost an infinite, infinite combination of um, all the possibilities. And there we do see Rajabov try to trade off those light squared mm -hmm. bishops. I guess that's basically what we're going to see from Black here. Just okay. trading, 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 trading yes. <laughs> to just bring it to that draw and it will be a victory for him. Yes, that's all. Remember, that's all he needs to do. Mm. He needs to just hold the fort, play it solid, play the Gandalf approach, which is thou shall not pass. And uh, that's it. He has to be the wall. And the way that Rajabov has been playing, I think it's uh, within his grasp. Yeah, and uh, Rajabov playing the Gandalf approach. I think Levon Aronian also playing the Gandalf approach, but this time it's the fly you fools uh, <laughs> line. And he's just saying to those pawns, fly forward. White pushing a pawn there um, on that left flank. He's just trying to gain space on that left side of the board. Um, he's anticipating as well, Levon Aronian, with that pawn push, which side will Black's King Castle on? And if we bring up the analysis board, we can see, OK, Black has made that decision. Black castling his king this way. Um, Levon Aronian actually with this pawn push on the left flank saying, I dare you to castle um, on the left side because then I'll throw all my pawns forward and attack your king. That is why um, in this position, um, Timur Rajabov decided to castle the other way. And we do see White's pawn step forward trying to trap this bishop. Um, this bishop has no retreat squares. Rajabov creating that retreat square for his own bishop. I like White's position. I've been suffering too long for too many years on the black side of these types of scenarios. I just think it's easier for White to play. White has the extra play space on this side of the board. Black, meanwhile, struggles to find a plan. White will push forward on this side, maybe as well later push forward in the centre. Another promising position, I think, for Levon Aronian. Last time, the opening went well for him. This time as well, it might too, but will that be enough to win? It's uh, not easy to say. Mm -hmm. No, uh, I do remember you telling one of our teammates about this line with White and you were like, just expand as much as you can <laughs> on that side of the board and then just make life difficult. And we see uh, Rajabov has, well, Levon Aronian, sorry, has moved his bishop towards the centre. Yeah, White's bishop planting itself there in one of the central squares. Um, yeah, that bishop couldn't, um, well, it could have been captured by Black's bishop, Black's knight, um, couldn't have taken that bishop because it was pinned. And that is why Black played his last move. He's trying to kick back White's dark squared bishop, um, which is putting annoying pressure against the knight. Um, Levon Aronian, will he trade off that knight? Will he step back with his bishop? Big decision now. Um, often you notice the players, they do pause when trades are possible, when there's checks, um, threats, uh, stuff going on in the board. On, on the board, they do sense these critical moments, these key moments, very, very well. That's why Levon Aronian, he's pausing here. Does he allow some pieces to leave the board? Does he take that knight? What would you do with that bishop, Yvanka? I'd retreat. Uh, I'd retreat. I do like my little motto of pinning is winning. <laughs> but plus, you know, I always always think the psychological pressure of having that pin is just going to be bothersome for Black. And uh, as long as it isn't possible for Black to try to do this clamping thing and chase my bishop away with a pawn, um, as long as that carries a lot of risk, then I think that is always a good idea to maintain that pin. Yeah, so this is the pin right now. This is where the tension lies. Um, this bishop doing a great job if it does retreat. Um, the black knight is paralysed. It cannot move because the black queen would be a target behind it. And the key decision for Levon Aronian is whether black can break this pin along the diagonal. Can black push forward to try and kick away this bishop? It does, however, weaken the Black King. We saw this come back to bite Black in the previous uh, game between these guys in the first game today. Um, here, White has a key decision to make. Do you step back with the Bishop and maybe justify Black pushing forward? Or now in a must-win situation, do you go crazy? Do you just gamble everything? And do you sacrifice your Knight, um, potentially opening things up, <sighs> keeping this pin, keeping the Black King open, this could backfire. Sometimes it doesn't work, but this is the type of situation Aronian finds himself in. He doesn't. He won't worry about giving up a knight if it gives him chances to fight back in this match. Would you be bold and grab that pawn? <laughs> I have to say, it would be too irres irresistible for me. I, I would just. Uh, I'm itching to get going. Yeah, I mean, um, I would not even think about going for a sacrifice like that. 
Um, if given the opportunity, I think Levon Aronian, he's in that type of situation right now. He can't take things too slowly. Um, he is mulling over the options, so he's looking just two or three moves ahead right now. Mm. He's deciding whether he can retreat his bishop and allow Black to pu push forward with that pawn. Um, maybe he's trying to work out the consequences of a potential sacrifice, or he's debating whether to just play things a bit slower, a bit safer, mm. just play bishop takes knight here. But it does feel like that would play into Rajabov's hands. All right, well, if it isn't a win for Levon Aronian, then Timur Ajaba will be the winner of the Air Things Masters. And in the quiz of the day, uh, we did see uh, someone's favorite um, chess moment was when Magnus Carlsen won the World Championship match in 2013. Now, oh, let's, uh, is it drama on the board, David? Um, Potentially, oh. it will depend on Black's <laughs> next move. White just retreating there. He's inviting Black to step forward with that pawn, and we might see Rad uh, Aronian go for a sacrifice. So this is the key moment. Uh, mm. But Rajabov, he will think uh, for a while before making this decision. It's a key moment in the game. Mm -hmm. Well, about that World Championship match, Magnus Carlsen celebrating, throwing himself in the pool. Was that sort of surprising to the chess world, seeing a world champion celebrate like that? Was it something new? Yeah, I think it was actually. It was. Uh, we're kind of never privy to those kind of like abandoned, you know, fun moments. Yeah. We kind of always see the world champion, especially when they're just being crowned. They're in those formal pictures with the big laurel wreath yeah. around there. Yeah. So it was kind of a bit special to see Magnus in the pool, <laughs> completely drenched, with a big grin on his face. Mm. So yeah, I think it was a little bit different there. What did you do? You remember where you thought David when you saw it? Yeah, I remember. I was watching the games live, and when he clinched that uh, victory in the last game, I mean, I could, I mean, I could sense his emotion. I could sense the emotion of the whole chess world, and yeah. I think he's within his rights to celebrate. Oh, I mean, absolutely! All of us inside. Yeah. Imagine if we win a game, let alone a world championship. We want to celebrate, and um, it's great to see these players. They're human. Um, they're very, um, it's just a natural reaction and mm -hmm. I'm sure we'll see one of the two players celebrate after today as well. So David, I'm just going to ask you our quiz question. Oof. What is your oh. favourite chess moment? Oh, that's a difficult one. Um, <laughs> maybe it would have been kind of hanging out with Gary Kasparov at his house. Um, this was back in 2017, so I spent a week at his house. Just We played some practice games. It was just before he made one of his comebacks in a St. Louis tournament, um, and we played some practice games. Um, yeah, and he was very welcoming, just talking about everything. We were analysing things together. We were just hanging out, sitting on the balcony, right next to the beach, playing some chess, and that's probably <laughs> the highlight for me. How about you, Ivanka? Yeah, well, I, we'll get back to that because I'm just looking at the board. We kind of said what it, the nature of the game is all going to depend on how Rajabov plays. And he went for it. He allowed White the opportunity to perhaps sacrifice the piece. But in fact, Levon Aronian has said no. Mm -hmm. He has instead traded bishops. Yeah, and I'm shocked by, well, I wouldn't say shocked maybe, but I'm surprised by the speed of that decision by Levon Aronian. If we bring up the analysis board, we can see Black did indeed push forward with a pawn on that right side. Um, OK, actually, we do see some trades there. Um, so we won't go back to that sacrifice, that potential sacrifice. But Levon Aronian showing he's happy to play a slower game right now. Um, he's just, well, the light squared bishops have left the board. And now that dark squared bishop of whites, that bishop on the right side, it is a bit blocked in. It's had to retreat even further. I do think that Levon Aronian maybe just rushed past that last decision. Mm -hmm. It was a key moment and it would have changed the dynamic of the game. Um, Rajabov, he showed in the last game, he showed us yesterday in these kind of uh, simplified positions with the queens off, with lots of trades, he has been dominant. He's been out, able to outmaneuver Aronian. And it feels like Aronian maybe had an opportunity there to go all out attack. He should have at least considered it, but he played instantly. And um, now it's all about maneuvering again. Yeah, but perhaps this is a, uh, he's not been, uh, for want of a better word, brave enough, you know, because he did have to roll the dice. I understand that, yes, if you roll the dice in such a way, perhaps you're, there's no going back and you might end up losing. But here, it does look like the momentum has perhaps gone to black side because black was allowed to push a, a pawn on the right side, which we actually called the king side, uh, forward. And I think he's getting, gotten away with it. Yes, I think black has definitely got away with it. If we bring the board up, there's one problem piece for white, and that's this bishop. 
It's gone on a bit of a journey so far, but look at this bishop. It's completely blocked in. It's just hitting against Black's strongest point. This pawn is very well protected. Um, it's hitting against granite here. Um, Black's going to bring his knight round. For example, if White tries to open up the board, Black will just say, no, I don't care. I am just going to ignore that. He's going to bring a knight round, solidify this point. If Black can maintain this pawn um, nice and strong here, then White's bishop is just destined to be out of the game forever. White's bishop, you want bishops any bishops on open lines, open diagonals. You want them targeting things. You don't want a bishop locked in. Um, it does feel like Levon Aronian just making a strategic uh, error there. He's going to hope that that doesn't become a factor. But for me, I've, I've had these types of positions, especially when I was younger, having those bishops, it always comes back to haunt you. Having mm -hmm. one bad piece makes your position bad. Yeah, and I can remember actually showing one a position very similar to this as an example of how not to play with white. I was like, well, look how black has controlled the pawn breaks because, you know, in such a tense position with all eight pawns remaining on the board, both sides are kind of gearing up for that break. And if black controls everything, then David says it, that the problem of that bishop will start to tell because you're basically playing a piece down. Yes. And... Um... I mean, it will be difficult for Rajabov to make use of the fact that White is pl essentially playing without this piece um, because as soon as Rajabov tries to open up lines himself, maybe the bishop will come back in the game. But remember, Rajabov, he's probably happy to just keep control, to essentially do nothing, just slowly shuffle around, improve his pieces ever so slightly and just make sure that White has no way to break through. And then we do see White's knight does take a step back, um, centralising itself, but maybe not necessarily quite yet on the most active square. Um, Timur Rajabov, he's got a lot of choice, a lot of pleasant choice as well. Black knows that he has time to maybe bring the rooks towards the center, um, maybe just step forward with a couple of pawns, fight for some space. Mm -hmm. um, Rajabov, very comfortable at this, at this time. Yes. So would you be looking at just maneuvering your pieces? Just again, asking White, hey, the ball's in your court. <laughs> Show me what you've got. Yes, I do like that style myself. And I think Timur Rajabov also likes that style, kind of a counter-attacking style. You just wait for the right moment. You know the action is going to happen, but you let them initiate the play and then you can strike back or, um, yeah, the, just put the pressure on your opponent. Just put the burden on them yeah. to do something. Um, and that's actually something that we've seen Levon Aronian. If, if there's a weakness in his play, it has been he's been forcing things at critical times. Yeah. He hasn't been content with just maybe repeating the position or, or doing nothing. He just wants to do something. Yeah, and I must admit, Rajabov, we praised him so much in the semi-final against Dubov, right? Um, he killed any attacking chances that Dubov had in the positions because he knows he was playing the man. He knew his opponent's style in advance. And maybe he's just um, masterfully as well, just completely neutralized Levon Aronian style. I've done this myself. I've played Levon, I think the first four times I played him, I didn't win any games. Um, but then once I got a hang of his style, I did manage to beat him. And that was just by asking him, provoking him to come forward at the right. Uh, um, and he would actually, he Against me, he chose the wrong moment. Against Rajabov today, earlier, he chose the wrong moment. Yesterday, he chose the wrong moment. Mm -hmm. um, maybe just saying, okay, you are the one going forward. Maybe that's just a bit too much pressure and Levon hasn't yeah. been quite choosing those uh, perfect moments. Yeah, but one, one thing I find quite interesting is that I often associate this approach where you just invite your opponent to come forward with their pawns as very much the Armenian school of chess. Because <laughs> like, the Armenian grandmasters do it all the time to me. You know, they can come forward, come forward. And then once I'm like, yes, please, you don't need to ask me twice. They kind of prove that I've extended too much or I've made the position much simpler for them. And uh, I end up losing or maybe holding a tough game after 60, 70 moves. Yeah, so you think Rajabov is maybe using that Armenian philosophy, that Armenian strategy against him? Against yeah, it's just really? a... Yeah, I mean, it, but it just shows how flexible Rajabov has been in this tournament. When he needed to go aggressive against Nepomniachtchi, he really took the game and made it sharp. And then we saw a complete switch of style against Dubov where he killed the game. And uh, here he's kind of doing a very similar, but a lot more subtler, I would say. Mm -hmm. He's just saying, OK, I'm happy with the draw. What, are you, what, what have you got? And uh, Lavon just can't help himself. He's the lion. He lashes out. Yeah, and um, that's... Always, that's when the key moments happen, um, when one side lashes out, when one side loses patience and neither side has lost patience so far in this game. We do see a lot of manoeuvring. Black's Rook's now in the middle of the board, uh, just ready for any potential action. 
Um, meanwhile, as white, okay, white's, <laughs> white's rook also brings itself to the middle of the board. This is very classical stuff. This is the players following the rules, the outlines, the guidelines of what they were taught when they were young. Just bring all your pieces to the center and only then start to open things up. But who will open things up first? Um, we will see. It's actually not easy for any pawns to push in the center. Whoever pushes pawns first will leave weaknesses in their own camp. Um, definitely, I mean, this is very tentative stuff. I mean, both sides, back to that waiting game that we saw in game one. Game one did explode, though. Um, I'm expecting this one to explode a little bit later. But meanwhile, Rajabov must be quite happy. Mm -hmm. The white the white king is looking super safe <laughs> in the corner there. The black king, maybe not as safe. Not, not quite, but mm. the key thing is black's king, it's a bit airy, it has some weak squares around it, but white doesn't have any attacking pieces mm -hmm. quite close to it. Not just yet, at least. Yeah. Uh, but this is something to do at home, kids. Just keep that white king nice and safe behind a wall of pawns. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I do remember that line when it comes to weaknesses. It's only a weakness if you can use it. If mm. you can't use it, it's not a weakness. Mm. And uh, I think at the minute, Rajabov is certainly employing that. But... You know, the position has to open at some stage. And then we're going to start to see whether Black's king is in big trouble. Yes, and um, maybe that's why Rajabov is thinking right now. Does he have a productive move? Does he have a useful move? Um, if not, then what to do? What to do? Um, he doesn't want to open up the position himself, partly because of the match situation. It would just entail a bit of risk. And partly because, remember, his style is just counterattacking. He isn't the one to push things and force the issue. Um, actually, as black, maybe the problem is which piece to improve. If we bring up the analysis board, we can see that all of black's pieces are pretty much perfectly placed. This bishop on a nice long diagonal, um, eyeing up the white king indirectly. The queen, nice and active. Two rooks in the middle. Um, this knight as well, perfectly placed. This knight maybe gets in the way a bit. It clogs things up. But if black improves this knight, if he brings it towards the right side, he leaves weaknesses behind. There's a consequence to every move. And suddenly white's knight will jump forward to a square that was previously protected by black's knight. Well, we have a decision. Four. We have a decision, David, because, you know, we were wondering what's, what uh, Rajabov is going to do. And he himself was also wondering because now he has pushed a pawn to challenge. But now there's going to be some lines opening. And uh, is he ready for that? Yeah, um, I'm not sure. I think that maybe a bit of a hasty decision there by Timur Rajabov. Um, I always say, and I live by this rule, I only push pawns on the side where I'm stronger. Um, I only create that tension between pawns on the side that I'm stronger. And Timur Rajabov pushing a pawn on the left, set, uh, on the left side there. Uh, maybe he's not weak on that side, but he doesn't have many pieces on that flank. And yeah. it's not really clear what that move achieves. It's just trying to maybe ask, ask for simplifications. Well, at least uh, Levon now has a plan. True. <laughs> <laughs> we, it's always good in chess to have a plan. You kind of feel mm. a little measure of hope when you have one. <laughs> it's a bonus when your opponent gives you a plan, Exactly. Right? Okay, so now, well, Lavon certainly got his plan and now he is going for maximum tension on the left side. And uh, yeah, Rajabov has to take a decision. Yeah, it's as if Rajabov gave... Aronian a target and that's what Aronian does he immediately we called him a lion he pounced on that last move by Rajabov and that tension there on the left side somehow to me it looks like it might favor white um, white's pawns just slightly further advanced he has more space to maneuver um, and Timur Rajabov decides the tension is too much he gets rid of one of white's knights for his bishop so a bishop for knight trade there's a bit of imbalance there bishops and knights very different pieces and any imbalance in the position that will favor Aronian maybe who mm -hmm. needs to create some winning chances a bit later on. So black is less solid than he was just two, three moves ago. That being said, still hard to break through for white. Um, and I'm worried about that white bishop still out of the game for now. Yes, uh, on that subject, because I, I didn't quite expect uh, Rajabov to capture that knight. And so, you know, Levon played very quickly. He captured with a rook. And I didn't think too much of it as, until I started investigating the position. I'm thinking, that bishop is really, really bad. It can't move. And uh, it's very, very difficult now for Black to lengthen the diagonal of that bishop. And uh, yes, you can see there, there's, look at it, it's facing a black wall of pawns and there's just very, no way to kind of get it open. Yeah, this bishop completely blocked in. It also can't retreat. It's blocked in by its own pawns. Mm. Um, it's just hitting against Black's strongest point in the position. 
if White's bishop was on another square, if you imagine if you could transport this bishop over to another square on maybe on the left side, then White would be doing fantastically well. White would have the advantage. But it's this problem piece might be the issue for Levon Aronian. The play is going to happen on the left side. All the tension is on this point right now. The play is going to happen on the left flank. So White's bishop is just poorly misplaced right now. Um, and Black doing a good job with the Black Knights, keeping the king nice and safe. These Black Knights will hold together any weak squares around the Black King. Um, it does look maybe like a sensible decision by uh, Rajabov, those last two moves, just increasing the solidity there on that right side. Aronian, he's thinking now mm. he needs to come up with a plan. Yeah, it is a tense game. Not many pieces traded off yet, and we do know the situation that the Aronian it's win or go home for him. If he doesn't win this game, then it is over and Timur Rajabo will be the winner. Do you think the tournament situation at some point sort of crosses their mind here? Or are they professionals that just looking at the game, what's happening on the board? Well, I definitely think it has impacted on Levon, Levon, Levon Leronian's play because, you know, we saw an earlier decision that he could have really gone all out for the win and this would have involved sacrificing a piece. And he kind of did a, mm. I think he did a risk assessment and he thought, well, you know, what are my chances of succeeding and what is going to be the, the consequence mm. if it doesn't work? And he thought, okay, fine, it's too risky. I cannot afford anything other than a win. So I therefore I'm going to try to have some measure of control mm. but looking at this position now I'm it's very difficult to see White with any form of winning chances whatsoever yeah I think he did maybe miss a trick there by not going for that all-out attack um, he did have that one opportunity and we did see actually in the first game today Rajabov maybe struggling more than he struggled the whole tournament when everything has been thrown at him when he's forced on the defensive um, so maybe that would have just thrown Rajabov out of his comfort zone. Meanwhile, the current position, it's very stable. Still no pawns have been exchanged, no open lines for the rooks, for the queens. It's still tense. And meanwhile, Aronian, he's starting to feel that tension down to six minutes now, a time disadvantage. It's still, it's very hard to come up with that productive plan. Mm -hmm. And that's why he just shuffles a pawn forward on that right side. He's created an escape square for that bishop, which we've been uh, <laughs> so critical of. Um, that black, that dark squared bishop doing nothing for white over the last few moves. So that bishop maybe can step back now, but it's not the type of move which actually achieves too much. It's more of a safety first move and yeah. won't suit, suit Levon in this game. Yeah, I, 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 yes, it's, it's a very subtle move. Um, just taking that luxury move of uh, making a hole for the king. But... For me, the play was on the left. And so he, I thought he was going to divert some pieces just to get going there and just to kind of create some problems. This is very wait and see. <laughs> it's as if he spent three minutes on that last move and he thought, oh, I can't come up with anything, so yeah. let's just push a pawn. And uh, Timur Rajabov bringing a knight round, round now. I don't think that knight will actually capture White's bishop because White's bishop is just so bad. Yeah. But uh, it's just putting a bit of pressure on that side. Maybe the knight will jump into another square. Um, we say that knights on the side are not great pieces, but that knight is destined to re-centralise itself a bit later on. Um, Rajabov, meanwhile, he's got a big advantage on the clock, um, a significant advantage at least. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. Aronian, yeah, I'm struggling to come up with, a, with an idea even for him, and it looks like he's struggling as well. He does shuffle his rook across to that left side, so a um, bit more influence on that flank. Um, Yvanka, you mentioned that that's where the action might take place. But... I don't really see any reason for Rajabov to worry. There's no immediate threat. I think he might continue improving his knight. Um, maybe. Yeah, you, could, you called it that the knight has now jumped in. It's a beautiful square. There's a bishop. There was no chance of Raj <laughs> Rajabov swapping that bishop off. And uh, that is the dream post for any knight. Mm. I've even heard it's been said that if you get a knight to that square, that it's worth a pawn. Yeah, I've, I think it's worth at least a pawn sometimes. Um, at the moment, White's king is relatively safe. Lots of uh, lots of forces around that king. Um, White's bishop, White's knight, and the rook keep the king safe. But you could definitely see Black's knight in the white half now, causing a bit of havoc later on when the clock sit down. Um, if we bring up the analysis board, I think there's a key decision. Yovanka, do you trade off this bishop, which has been blocked in for so long? Do you capture this knight? Or do you do something else? <laughs> Look at those pawns. <laughs> you established... <laughs> oh. Kaya, what would you call those pawns? Ah, okay, I'm trying to think of a good word. Well... They look like they're just best friends. <laughs> just, Holding hands. Yeah. 
girl gang. There's yeah. five of them there. I, uh, <laughs> well, now it's crunch time, actually, because... Uh, they're not supporting points. each other, though. They're not supporting each yeah. other. They're standing in a... They're lined up in a row, and uh, they are planning to move forward. I mean, I do really like that move. I'm a big fan of pawn pushes. So... I feel a bit more inspired now about the position just because of those pawns. Yeah. Because he's pushed all of these pawns forward and actually there's a threat against one of them right now. Black is threatening to capture this pawn. Um, the queen last move stepping across. So the pressure is on this pawn. Um, how does its the rest of its gang help it? Um, okay, he just keeps those pawns on the squares. I think he just, uh, Levon Aroni, he appreciates beauty. He doesn't even want to move these pawns because they're just too aesthetically pleasing right now. Um, he's keeping the tension, White's Rook there, stepping across, defending this pawn twice with the Knight and the Rook. He's hoping that these pawns will help him to open lines a bit later on. And yeah, um, I didn't even realize really that the strength of this move, I think that suddenly it may be Levon Aronian. He's the one who holds the key when the position will become open. Mm -hmm. um, just that last pawn push. Oh, very impressive. Um, Timur Rajabov, meanwhile, has to deal with that girl gang, those pawns. <laughs> yeah. um, he has to decide how to get rid of at least some of them because if they march forward together again um, a bit later on, then they'll become even more scary. <laughs> wow, I, I've never seen that in just, <laughs> just five pawns all together on the same line. And actually, I have to say about this game that it's been, it seems like it's a very, very slow. We still haven't seen the white pieces come over to the, the black side. Just one black piece, so they're like slowly marching. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a very much a game of cat and mouse. Both mm. players are playing with each other. They're just edging each other out, sussing each other, and just trying to probe for weaknesses. Um, but those pawns definitely do have a lot of impact because, yes, as David says, it is now up to white when they will open the position. And both players will have to open the position at yeah. one point. They just can't carry on manoeuvring. Yeah, and I think Rajabov, he definitely doesn't want to open the position. So it's just psychologically... Um, it's a bit uncomfortable for him. That's why he's spending a bit of time on this move. It's a bit like an army, both sides. They have their battle lines and they're just looking at each other right now. Mm. And while they look at each other, um, the kind of the big troops behind them, they're just manoeuvring themselves to the best possible positions long term. But those, I mean, White's army line, it definitely looks like a bit of a shield wall just yes. <laughs> blocking off um, Black's potential play. And um, Rajbov, he has to remember, um, also White is the only one with a bishop left. And White's Bishop, we've been so critical of it for so long. But if the position does open up, if the centre does explode, then White's Bishop um, will be the happiest piece on the board. Bishops love those open lines. Um, so the last couple of moves have gone in Levon Aronian's favour. Meanwhile, Rajabov now about to tick under five minutes. Definitely seems surprised by this last move by Levon. Yeah, I think he was surprised that mm. White was able to build those pawns up. And there we see a bit of a waiting game again by Timur Rajabov, just stepping forward with the Black King. A solid mm -hmm. move, but a very non-committal, indecisive move as well. Yes, just uh, keeping the options open. I, I kind of call those moves creepers because they look like they're not doing that much. But at the same time, they are kind of linking the two rooks together with both sides of the board. And before you know it, maybe Rajabov can think about doing an attack right on the, on the right side. Well, we're going to see some trades. Some of those beautiful pawns are going to leave the board. <laughs> Yeah, one of those, <laughs> one of the gang has yeah. disappeared. Um, I'm slightly surprised by that decision by Levon Aronian. I don't think he needed to clarify that tension just there. Um, and remember, tension probably does um, favour him right now, just while Rajabov is slightly nervous. Um, yeah, it does look like Levon Aronian as well, ticking under four minutes now. He has to decide what to do in the centre. Does he open things now? Is this the moment? Or does he play the waiting game as well? Um, it's just hard to find a way to improve a piece. Mm -hmm. Well, knowing I live on Aronian, I think he will be looking for very committal ways. And uh, he has traded a pawn and now his queen has gone pawn hunting. OK, this does look good in principle. But one of my kind of my spider senses are tingling because when the queen goes on an adventure on the other side of the board, I'm always attracted to attacking the king. For me, this is the red flag where I'm like, OK, you want me to attack your king? Challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
And um, that was not the trigger for Rajabov to start pushing forward on the right side. He just goes passive. The Black Rook now tied down to the, the defence of Black's pawn um, on the left there. White's Queen is deep in the heart of, white, of Black's position. White's Queen looks impressive, but can the Queen actually snack on a pawn? Can that Queen actually achieve something before she gets kicked back? It's not clear right now um, exactly how White can make use of that active Queen. Um, if we bring up the analysis board, we can see that the problem for white, this white queen is that it's, everything's protected right now. Um, black is protecting this pawn with black's queen. Um, black's protecting the other pawn with black's rook. And if black gets given another move, black will use this rook to kick away the white queen. Wow, look at this. The white queen continues to insist. <laughs> the white queen stepping into the heart of black's position. But where's the backup? I don't really see it. Um, <laughs> white's queen is trying to attack something. I'm just not sure quite what. Um, uh, for example, as um, Timur Rajabov, I would be very tempted to just try and kick the queen away. Um, yeah, this is a crazy queen maneuver. Levon Aronian, a creative genius. He always finds moves that none of us understand, none of us spot. And um, will that move, that last move, shock Rajabov? Or will he be able to calm himself down and react, evict that white queen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my instinct is to chase that queen away as well, just to uh, get rid of it. <laughs> I, I don't know what it's doing, though, but uh, it can certainly... <laughs> If, if it's not that, I would be tempted to push pawns. But uh, I suspect that the queen... The thing is about this queen is it can... It's kind of quite nicely placed because it can move to the right, can move to the left. And so, therefore, I would be slightly more hesitant in pushing pawns. But uh, instead, I would ask that queen where she had it. And we do see that uh, the third game in the third place match between Daniil Dubov and Maxim Vajelagrav has ended with a win for Daniil Dubov. So that means they're all tied after three games. They tied also the first match. So the winner of the last game today will uh, snatch that third place. If it is a draw, then they will head into tie breaks. Do you think we will have tie breaks in the final, David? Or ah, is it hard for Levon to win this game? Yeah, I mean, actually, if you asked me before today, I think tie breaks would have been quite a likely option. And um, I think if Levon was able to strike back in this match, then he'd be a big favourite in the tie breaks. Just the momentum would be mm. on his side. But Rajabov has been so calm and <sighs> seems to be never troubled by any developments um, that happen in the game, all of the twists and turns. Rajabov takes them in his stride and does look like tie breaks are unlikely here. Yeah, I agree with David wholeheartedly. I mean, if you'd asked me on paper, I would have said, yep, sure, Levon has a great chance of equalising the match. But we've seen Rajabov be mm. so impressive. I've uh, never seen such calmness. I've never seen someone be able to adapt so easily. And uh, he's really taken the psychology of chess and just applied it here. He has chosen his openings perfectly. And... Uh, he I think it's, he's almost unbeatable. Yeah, it's looking so so good here. Timur Rajabov, who pulled out of the candidates. He was qualified, but uh, due to COVID, he pulled out. So we're not going to see him in the candidates. He does make a move, though. Yeah, such a shame we won't see him try to you know fight for that world title just yet. But he's still got time. Still mm. a young guy at 33. And um, there he does try to evict the white queen, which has just gone roving deep into <laughs> Black's camp. Um, how will Levon Aronian try and justify that queen uh, sortie? Um, it's not clear to me. Does he retreat his queen back to where it came from? Does he shift that queen across the board? Um, does he bring that queen? Okay, I was going to say, does he bring it to that right side? The queen almost looks trapped there, but there's <laughs> no way for Black to quite attack it just yet. Um, this is creative stuff from Levon Aronian. His mm. queen on the left side of the board, it brought itself up, it brought itself across, and now down to the other side. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't even have... Uh, well, that wouldn't have crossed my mind. Um, and actually, Levon Aronian, we did say that the, white king, the black king is a potential target. He's going to try and attack shortly. He's going to try and create some tension on that right flank. Yes, uh, the queen is... That's the plan. Yeah, I was wondering what that queen was doing. I was like, I can't, mm -hmm. can't really see what is going. But OK, now I see it. He wants to explode open the right flank with a pawn push. Is it simply a, a, a tournament move? Yes, he's going for the win. <laughs> yeah. He senses. And White's next move, if Black just does nothing, for example, if Black moves on the left, not affecting the position, White will push forward with this pawn, exploding things open here. He's trying to target this strength, this really strong point for Black. If he can get rid of this, then the path might be open 
towards the Black King. Um, likewise, actually, if Black tries to push forward this pawn, we see the strength behind White's idea. If Black pushes this pawn forward to try and trap the White Queen, the Queen is not trapped. White can snack on this pawn. The Queen and Knight um, kind of teaming up together there. So actually, White holds the key to this side of the board. White is the one who will open things up. Mm. Rajabov, meanwhile, a minute and a half, how will he deal with this idea? It's clear what Levon Aroni wants to do next. He's signalled his intentions. Um, now it's up to Rajabov, the counter-attacker, to react to this decision. Mm. These games on the top level, when one player has to win, is it usually that you tell your students or, or people new to jazz, don't do this at home? Or is it also that we sometimes see new ideas come to life when people have to win the games? Yeah, so uh, generally you kind of have the basics when you're teaching chess and you kind of encourage players just to kind of master those first mm. and then they, they can deal with the exceptions. Like you would definitely not encourage someone to go out there with their king all mm. exposed. No, that's a kind of, you have to have <laughs> some experience <laughs> that comes with a warning. And uh, certainly also this queen manoeuvre, which is very intriguing. It's kind of really quite radical kind of approach to this position. It's not necessarily something that I would also recommend other people to do because mm. Again, Lavon Aronian is a great player. There's actually some reasoning behind it. If you're just moving your queen around on the board for nothing, just because, you know, why not give it an adventure, then chances are that time is going to cost you. Mm. So definitely you have to try to understand what the players are doing and you have to understand why they're going to play like this and uh, what their plans are. Mm. Yeah, you definitely need to understand all the general rules first in order to know when to break them. And um, Timur Rajabov, he does not break one of the kind of traditional, conventional rules that we talk about because White's queen, which went on the attack, is now being traded off. Black stepping across with his queen there to try and get rid of White's, uh, White's monarch. Well, White's queen. Um, yeah, this is tricky. Levon Aronian, unfortunately, cannot avoid this queen exchange. Um, the queen exchange is inevitable. But meanwhile, what can Levon Aronian do? Um, to take advantage, take advantage of the fact that Black is the one begging for this queen exchange. Black is the one spending those two, three moves, getting the queens off the board. Um, Levon Aronian, he needs to come up with something here. Now, both players are about around a minute and a half. Um, Levon Aronian, I like White's position. It feels like White is the one dictating the play, Black just reacting. But there's still no real weaknesses to attack. Um, Black covering everything with the knights, covering everything with his own pawns. Um, Rajabov trying to play as solidly as possible here because he knows that a draw is good enough for him. And um, Levon Aronian going under one minute now. If it were just me, I would go for the queen trade and then try to figure out the difference. Um, he can't avoid it anyway. Um, White has to clarify the central tension as well. White's two pawns in the centre. Do you push forward? Do you exchange a pawn? Again, no wrong, no right or wrong decision yeah. there. <laughs> well, finally, that that bishop that we've criticised every <laughs> move of the way has finally left the board. So, uh, okay, we're going to see some trades, but the more tr more pieces that get traded off, the harder it is for Levon Aronian to actually get the required win. Yeah, he's just running out of pieces simply um, to win this game. I'm s very surprised by that last move hmm. by Timur Rajabov. Actually, I thought he would capture that bishop with a different pawn, um, or maybe even capture that bishop with a knight. Instead, he captures with a pawn um, attacking White's Rook. White's Rook needs to run away now. Um, the queen trade still inevitable. Maybe Levon Aronian will take those queens off the board first. Um, he is getting low on the clock, though, and mm. these tense moments, they have favoured Rajabov in the past when both players are very low on time. Rajabov just reacting a bit quicker. The queens do leave the board. Um, White's Rook will now move. It is still attacked by one of Black's pawns. Mm -hmm. So he, so uh, Levon has to choose now which line to occupy and he's chosen the furthest most line. And uh, OK, the initiative, I think, is still on Levon's side just because his rooks are better placed. So there's still some questions, but the clock situation does worry me. You mm. kind of want it to be the reverse, actually. You would want it to be Rajabov who is low on time and dealing with a slightly unpleasant position. Yeah, meanwhile, Rajabov's still so calm. He's been really consistent with his strategy, just getting pieces off the board. Now, with that last move, Black offering a trade of rooks. Um, that's the, it is just, for Levon Aronian, I think desperate times now. He's just running out of pieces. If, OK, he does trade those rooks as well. Mm. Um, I'm not so keen on that one. A set of pawns leave the board as well in the middle. Um, is he giving up? 
I don't think he's giving no, up he, quite he, yet. He can't give up. There's uh, still a life. There's still a pawn to be won. And uh, okay, he's playing tricky, tricky moves. Mm. Very unexpected. I expected the rook to dash down and give some checks, but uh, no. So white pushing a pawn forward to try and destabilize the black knight. There we see white's pawn attacking the black knight. Black knight has to retreat. White's only hope to win this game is those two black center pawns, the pawns next on the line next to the black king. Those pawns, they're doubled. Um, if we see the current position, um, these two pawns are the key. Black's king at the moment is keeping them both nice and safe. But if white can win one of them, then white will have some chances. The other target is potentially this pawn. It's very hard to get at. It's an isolated pawn for black. It's not protected right now. Um, no pawns near it, but it's hard to get at. And if black can hold these two pawns, of course, black will be easily able to draw this game. Uh, yeah, that's, that's why he's uh, zoomed his rook up the board and he has those pawns in mind. Yes, and um, those two black pawns, at the moment they look okay, they look safe enough, um, but Levon Arunin at least trying to put some pressure against the black knight as well. Um, it might be too little too late here. Um, he's putting the pressure on, but there's just not enough... Um, there's just not enough ammo left on the board to actually break through and win mm -hmm. this game. Timur Rajabov ignoring all of White's ideas, going for White's pawns now. Um, that black rook jumping forward. That white pawn is also isolated, the pawn next to the black rook. Um, it will drop off the board. Can Aronian whip up some distraction on the other flank? Um, it definitely looks like... Um, well, here's seven seconds, David. <laughs> Five, four. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, and uh, he's completely ignored it and he has taken the pawn. Okay. Yeah, so White capturing a pawn in the middle there. He's actually offering his own knight. So Black's king can capture that knight, but then the Black king would lose protection of the Black knight. Um, so we might see the knights leave the board as well. Everything being traded off. Um, I do expect... Timur Rajabov to capture that knight. I don't really see any reason not to. Um, just helps to kind of relieve some of the tension, just simplify things. Mm -hmm. um, if we do see it, we will see more pawns leave the board. It might become a bit of a pawn race. White's going for pawns on the right side. Black's going for that pawn on the left. Um, but Timur Rajabov, a big decision to make here. Yeah, I, I fully expect him. He's been so calm and so collected. I fully expect him to take that that white knight because that white knight is a bit central and it can cause a lot of problems and you kind of want to avoid danger. So there you go. You see it there. You're going to see a trade of knights and uh, now Rajabov will probably capture the pawn that is all alone on the left. Yeah, um, that's the most natural move. Mm -hmm. It's bit odd that he's even thinking here. Um, I think Black's play has been building up to capturing that pawn there on the left. So Black will be capturing that pawn and Levon Aronian, he's going to go for that isolated pawn we mentioned on the right side of the board. He's going to go for that pawn with his rook. Um, unfortunately for White, it does look a bit slow. White is playing without his king, remember. Mm -hmm. Kings are such important pieces in the endgame. Um, Black's king is super active. Um, but Rajabov down to two seconds. Ooh. <laughs> oh. okay. Imagine if he loses this on time. Whoa. Yeah, well, he played an unexpected move. He actually retreated his king to attack the, the rook and uh, certainly saying, I have the time. I have control of the position. I'm just going to take care of any danger before he captures the pawn on the left. Okay, so now is the time to play quickly. He's captured the pawn and, uh, well... Uh, just four pawns each for both sides now. Black has a trump card. Black has that pawn on the left, which is unrivaled. Okay, that's why he advances his rook, so that the black pawn is going to start running soon. Um, Levon Aronian, meanwhile, he needs to create his own passed pawn. He needs to somehow get one of white's pawns to start running. Mm -hmm. He takes a timeout with his king. Black's pawn yeah. plan is easy, though, pushing that pawn. Yes, and uh, you have to note how what square that uh, Rajabov put the rook because he put that the, the rook on the same line as this white pawn. So that basically, in effect, means that white's king is tied to the defence of that pawn. So very, very good endgame defence. Yeah, and white's rook goes behind the black pawn. This is a useful defensive technique for all of you out there to learn. Rooks belong behind past pawns. Mm -hmm. If your opponent has a pawn running up the board, Put your rook behind it. Your rook will control that pawn. It will prevent it from um, continuing to march forward. Um, meanwhile, Black trying to activate the king there and Levon Aronian using his rook to try and tie down Black's king to, this, to a pawn in the centre. Um, who <laughs> could break through here? I think it's 
definitely should be a draw with best play, but the players, they won't be playing ideal chess mm. um, with such low time on the clock. Mm. Um, both sides, they'll be trying to set tricks for each other. Actually, I mean, can can Rajabov get by brave and go, hey, hang on a second, let's go and help my pawn out. OK, so well, Rajabov did advance the rook, but this freed the king. Yeah, White's king suddenly stepping forward and um, Black can continue to push the pawn, but um, suddenly there's just no way to force it through right to the end. White's rook behind it, keeping an eye on Black's pawn there on the left side. Black goes for one of White's kingside uh, pawns on the right there. Yeah. Um, he's offering a trade. He's offering his. Okay, this allowed pawn. it a little uh, a move that we kind of call switch and zig, which is in between move. And so the king has come forward, and now rook takes pawn. And uh, Levon, of course, he needs to maintain all the pawns, so he has captured the pawn with check, and now. Rajabov captures the pawn. White has gone a pawn up temporarily. Um, okay, Black's rook has brought itself up, attacking White's pawn, but Black is threatening checkmate in one move. <laughs> Black is threatening to move his central pawn up one square, and the White King is trapped. It's not easy for Aronia to deal with this threat. It's a huge threat right now. Um, personally, I think that he might even have to give up one of his own pawns just to survive, just for the White King to survive. Okay, he gives a check, um, just slowing down Black's idea of that checkmate. Um, Black's king has to move, it has to give way, it steps forward. The threat is still in the air. <laughs> still Black's there. central pawn, if it moves forward, that is checkmate. Um, therefore, White has to block that pawn. White's given his king some breathing space. Um, this one, I think, I expect to see Levon, uh, Timur Rajabov, sorry, give a check with his rook um, right now. He knows he's very close to a draw. All he needs to do is eliminate the remaining white pawns. He's, uh, he's taken one. He's taken one pawn. And now there is a threat in the, in the position. Black is threatening to check the white king and skewer the Oh, king. is he smiling? He knows he's got it in the bag. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> the Von Aronian had... No, sorry. Timo Rajavo has started celebrating. He knows now he is the winner of the Air Things Masters. Yeah, the game's still going, but he's already celebrating. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first sign of emotion I've actually seen from uh, Timur Rajabov. It really I've is. never seen him kind of go like this. He's kind of taken all his victories with a very calm disposition. And uh, he's... <laughs> Levon Aroni is stepping forward with his rook, but this won't change anything. He's just running out of pawns. Black will now give check with his rook. There we see it. The White King has to step to the right. White's lost another, uh, well, another pawn has just been eliminated. Black's going to go a pawn up this time. It won't be enough to win the game, but remember, Levon, uh, well, Rajabov, he only needs a draw. Um, okay, we see another check. White's King has to sidestep. Black's rook can capture two pawns now. Mm. Um, I would capture that pawn in the middle, the most advanced pawn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he know the reason he celebrated is he knows the minimum he'll get now is a draw. And Levon Aronian just with White, he took it down to an endgame, but he played in his opponent's comfort zone. Rajabov yeah. just too good in these endgames. He's just, he does look invincible right now. And uh, there we see it. There's two rooks on the board and the game will end in a draw. And it is And there Rajabov we have it. <laughs> again. Who, Timur Rajavo celebrating. Oh, look how happy he is. He is the winner of the Air Things Master at 33 years old. Timur Rajavo, he retired from chess a few years ago, has made a fantastic comeback. And here he is, the winner of the first major in the championship. Champions chest or oh look how happy he is David. Yeah, yeah he's... <laughs> he just looks overcome with emotion, yeah. especially he did mention that he internalized absolutely everything. And uh, there it is look, is, is he crying? He is crying. That is beautiful. So happy that he managed in the end after a long tournament, nine days of intense chess. He wasn't the favorite from the start, but he's played fantastic Timur Ajabov. And he is the winner of the Air Things Masters. I think it's fantastic to see how happy he is about this. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. Actually, I, I, you know, we did ask everyone on Twitter what was their their highlight of their chess career, and uh, yeah, I think this is certainly up there for Rajabov. You know, twelve of the best players in the world, and. He's been supreme. Mm, and we did see, of course, Levon Aronian. He got so close, also played a fantastic tournament, uh, but didn't. he needed a win in this game. He wasn't able to. It ended in a draw, David. Uh, you said it basically the whole time. It, even if White did have chances here, it looked like a draw. What could Levon have done here? Um, it was very difficult for 
Levon Aronian um, at the end there. It was purely because he just didn't have enough pawns left. And we did see Black's pawn starting to run down the board. This pawn very, very close, only three squares from becoming a queen. It continued to push forward. White's rook was forced to abandon any aggressive attempts. It was forced to go passive behind this pawn, keeping an eye on this pawn. And actually, I think the key moment came a couple of minute, moments later. Suddenly, I was getting optimistic for Lavon. I thought suddenly White's king bringing itself forward. White's going to give check, force the black king away from the center. White's going to start snacking on pawns. But um, here, Timur Rajabov showed his quality. He abandoned his strength. He abandoned his beautiful pawn. Sometimes you have to give up the best parts of your position in order for, to make other gains. He gave up this pawn. He brought his rook across. We see a lot more trades, but he saw ahead here. He saw he could give up a pawn. White's currently got a three versus two advantage, but then this move, the key move, bringing the rook up the board with a devilish threat. Black is threatening to move his pawn forward and this would actually be checkmate. White's king is completely trapped, no escape squares to run to. This meant that Levan could not maintain his extra pawn advantage. And after a few more moves, we did see all of the pawns being eliminated. Um, he just hoovered up all the pawns from the board and we saw king versus king, a fitting finale, I think, to two real kings of chess. And he is ready now, the winner of the Air Things Masters, Timur Rajavo has joined us now. Timur, huge congratulations on a fantastic performance. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Today it was really tough. Yeah. Please take us through your emotions right now. We did see some tears. It really moved us. What was those tears about? Yeah, it's just, you know, trying to keep the, con I mean, focus and concentration till the, till the very end. And uh, it takes a lot of... Uh, like um, a lot of emotions as well, you know, to, to keep this this way of uh, calmness that I'm trying to produce, not to show the, if I'm happy or unhappy about my position. But uh, yeah, I mean, I I don't know. I mean, it just took me so much energy. I'm like completely exhausted. I I was trying to take Levon um, to the blitz part of the match. Uh, honestly, after checking his games of the preliminaries and then the knockout stage. He was playing like almost perfect chess and uh, very close to his uh, highest level, highest performance that he always shows like uh, when he's in top form. And um, some can say I was playing some kind of dry chess, but mm -hmm. uh, my point was to win the tournament, not to uh, please anyone, to be honest, because, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm a professional chess player. So, yeah, whatever. Was it exciting or not? I really don't mind because I just tried to win the tournament in a way I could. So. Yeah, I did uh, all of my best, but about the emotions, yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I mean, yeah, sometimes I can get emotional as well. It was really so hard mm. and uh, I'm so happy about it. And Timur, first of all, congratulations. We were all so impressed here by your play throughout the whole nine days. Um, what are your goals for the new year? Mm. Uh, how are you planning to build on this success? Yeah, I think that there can be a no better start of the new year, but there can be certainly a... A bad finish. We're always ready for that. <laughs> you should also know that uh, whatever your emotions are there or not, uh, let's say like my daughter sent me a message yesterday and she said like uh, that congratulations, like super like uh, dry, you know, like that congratulations was a good match, but good luck tomorrow in the next one match of chess or something like this she wrote. And uh, I was like, I mean, uh, can I really do it? I mean, it's so hard. And uh, I, I was sure that today Levon will put a lot of pressure on me, especially with the white color. So the first game uh, was really unpleasant for me. I mean, at, at some point I was completely lost, I guess. I mean, at least the chess bomb was showing like plus five or whatever. And um, yeah, that was really, uh, really annoying because I just felt that my black repertoire is kind of under pressure. And uh, yeah, I tried to keep my calm and keep, keep any position till the very, very end. I don't know what was happening in the last game, but certainly it was about the nerves. And uh, I was really afraid to lose this rook and game. But then I found this nice, nice uh, way of trapping his king on f4, uh, which um, just uh, made me happy because, I mean, otherwise you have to calculate all the time if this one is lost or this one is draw. I mean, this f3, e4 pawns and stuff. So it was really complicated. And you know that uh, Levon is putting pressure in every position till the very end, like all the top players. So I was trying to just keep my focus and uh, yeah, the plans, you know, to play uh, the other more or less eight tournaments that are there on the calendar. So uh, anyway, I'm so happy to be in the in the grand final so 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 fast. And uh, I mean, there could uh, not be any uh, any better start of the year, but uh, certainly took me like uh, all of my energy. I feel as exhausted as after the World Cup, more or less. So that's really cruel. 
So do you have any tips for getting better online chess? Because you really impress us all with your style of play, with the accuracy and your calmness. Um, the calmness, as I said, it's just uh, the way you see it. But uh, many people I know in my throughout my life, I know a lot of people who are like seemingly calm, but in fact, they're very emotional, like inside. But I'm just trying not to show the emotions, and that's that's the point. And uh, at the end, I couldn't because it was really uh, so tense, and uh, I finally saved the game. But uh, yeah, there are no tips. Uh, I mean, just uh, spending your evenings as, as uh, I mean, as good as you can. Maybe take some wine from time to time, but depends uh, on the player and so on. So for me, just uh, work this way. I was trying to prepare a lot, but uh, this was really really hard, and. Um, I was just hoping that I will not uh, uh, play against Magnus at some point. <laughs> <laughs> that was my real hope. And uh, when Duba won, I saw that, okay, maybe this is a chance. Mm. And uh, then when uh, Nipomnishi played the game against me and he won in the Blitz part, I said, I mean, okay, Carlson is not there, but I'm losing still. What, what is it like? Mm. And just decided to play this B6. It took me some time to decide for this B6. And I think that was a crucial moment for my confidence throughout the event. Later on, somehow, I just felt... Uh, like uh, like I, I was given a second chance or something like that. So before the second Blitz game against Nipomnishi, I saw a timeout, knocked out. So that was uh, that was really kind of, uh, I don't know if you believe in science or energy and so on, but uh, this was kind of sign that I have to fight till the very, very end. Mm, and we did, we did see your emotions when you realized here at Timor that you are the winner of the Air Things Masters. And we know uh, some years ago you retired from chess, you made a great comeback winning the World Cup in 2019. And now this, how do you feel about the place you're in in your career right now? No, 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 Kaya, I, I didn't retire, but it seemed for everyone that I, I was kind of retired. <laughs> but the point is that I just stopped playing. Uh, um, I mean, I was training a lot. Mm -hmm. Like, I was with Chuchilov, and uh, also today I was consulting him about the openings, uh, the choices I should make. But, uh, I mean, at the time I didn't retire. The, there was a problem. I, I've played this um, 2013 candidates tournament, and I just started to lose all of the games against the top players. So I said, I mean, uh, should I just stop it? I mean, uh, like, uh, like brutally, uh, what should I do about it? I mean, I just stopped playing. That, that was the, the only way to proceed. Because I was playing the super tournaments. I was uh, lacking confidence after the candidates. So I just uh, tried to take a kind of break and work on my chess. I completely changed my repertoire, started to play the Berlin, Berlin and so on. Before I was only playing the Kings Indian and like Sicilians and stuff. And from time to time, the Queen's Gambit. So Chuchilov said, I mean, this is not the way you have to uh, to be a trendy professional chess player. And uh, I've just changed my style and tried to play in the, some official events. That was that was the case. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. The World Cup really came as a surprise for me because I was really fighting hard there. But once I met uh, against Maxime and Ding Lijen, I was not sure I'm, I'm going to to make it. But um, with Maxim, I don't know, probably David remembers, or maybe you, uh, Jovanka remembers. I think they're, they're looking more, more uh, closely to the, to the, I mean, they were following that event more closely. Uh, Kaya, I, I'm not sure you were following this. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I follow English all your games, Timor, of course I do. Simba Shelagraf, I'm not sure you, you, you were following this. But there, I mean, I catched him on the preparation and th that was very important. Then I won the match somehow against the English, and, which was also surprising. And then, uh, I mean, it brought my confidence on a higher level, of course, because, I mean, before that, for many, many years, like since 2013 and 14, I was not able uh, to really perform on what I was supposed to be kind of a player on the top level. And I was just performing uh, much, much lower than, than I would expect and others would expect probably. And uh, this was just uh, due to the lack of the confidence. And uh, I gained it back at some point playing the Shamkir Super Tournament, like finishing on like 50% or plus one, which is very hard in the 20 plus category tournament with Carlson playing and so on. So yeah, I was I was really working hard on it and I'm still working hard on my chess. Um, yeah, during the pandemic, we did a lot of stuff together with uh, Anish and everyone on YouTube and so on. So people saw that we're unable to play a normal chess anymore. We're just, uh, you know, the vloggers, bloggers or whatever you call us. Yeah, but in fact, uh, we're working hard and uh, out of this 12 or 16 players that are playing in the preliminaries and in the knockout stage, any player can win the tournament. That's that that's the that would brings a lot of excitement to this event mm. because any of the players can really win the tournament. It mm. can be anyone. So, yeah, that's really exciting. And uh, I'm very happy to be uh, part of it and certainly to win this event, especially Masters, of course. Mm. And of course, the big question, Timor, how will you celebrate? 
Uh, well, I mean, um, until the morning, I guess. Ah. <laughs> Because I've, I've missed the New Year's Eve. Everybody was calling me saying that, uh, man, why are you not coming? And, and they were proposing different places. I have a lot of friends uh, here as well. And so, yeah, I was just saying I'm playing the tournament and so on. They said, come on, it's a New Year's Eve, who cares and so on. But I said, I mean, okay, it's, uh, it's a really important tournament, so I should really keep my focus till the very, very end. So, uh, yeah, I didn't celebrate. So now, now, more or less, I'm celebrating both the victory and uh, the New Year's Eve and uh, everything else. So I'm super happy about it. Fantastic. And uh, where do you actually rate this victory in your career? A very successful career so far. I would... I know that online chess for many are like... I mean, for many people who are asking, I mean, this the online chess is kind of... They say like, wow, there is OTB and stuff. Uh, now it's not serious, you're playing online. But um, if you see the videos, if you... I mean, take through the, all of the moments throughout the tournament, you can see that these players are really super focused. And uh, all of them are super competitive. They want to win. And clearly they want to beat each other, especially the top players against, um, you know, when playing, I don't know, Ironian, Carlson, Dubov, other players uh, in the circuit. Certainly uh, they want to beat each other. And this is, um, this is the thing. I mean, they take it very seriously. I and mean, we take most of our games very seriously. But sometimes, of course, there are some kind of, I don't know, backhouse chess or something. We don't take it seriously. <laughs> but this kind of professional classical chess that, I mean, you are playing, I mean, the classical way, not 960 or something. So uh, everyone is very serious about it. And you could see Aronian today and me and any other player. Like, uh, there is a, one other super exciting match, Dubov against uh, Maxim Vachelagraf as well. Uh, I mean, they're playing for the third place, but can you tell that they're playing for the third? They're like playing for the world crown, more or less. Mm, exactly, yeah. Yeah, and it's so exciting. I was uh, unable yesterday to focus myself on my matches because, I mean, on my games. And uh, I was just following their games. They were so exciting. I mean, this <laughs> night, four of Dubov and all that stuff. Yeah, so everybody takes it super seriously. I mean, this is the case because we're all professionals there and whatever our emotions, New Year's Eve and so on, we have to perform just like... Uh, you know, the medical workers, surgeons, mm. I don't know, uh, whatever. Yeah, just the professional that have to perform on the, uh, I mean, on the highest level they, they they can really achieve. So in this case, I think I've really played, I mean, today first game was, was really bad, seriously bad. And um, I don't know if I would lose it. Um, I mean, would I be able to come back somehow? But uh, yeah, I was really happy that I saved it. And it seemed that I'm on the verge of losing. And uh, it proved to be after I checked the, checked the computer's analysis, of course. Mm. Yeah. So I'm very happy that the luck was on my side as well. This is super important. In, uh, in this event with the super like players, like top players, without the luck, uh, you're just unable to win the tournament. Maybe Magnus can, but others can't. Uh, <laughs> yeah, can assume. Well, Timur, we are so happy for you. Big, big congratulations again on a huge win. And we'll see you again in the next tournament. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Big congratulations. congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> and a golden ticket into the September Grand Final. So exactly. To play for. Ah, a big day for Team Rojava. We saw his emotion there. We heard about his emotion, David. Definitely a big day for him. Yeah, a big day. And I think it's just a big day for online chess. As he mentions, these top players, they took it so seriously. And this, huge, this event, I think it was a huge success. All of the players showing that that's the future. Online chess and over the board chess hand in hand. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think a worthy winner and you could see the emotion. He deserved it. Mm. So. Yeah. yeah, definitely. He has shown throughout the tournament, Ivanka. He's been, he's been the best player, simply. Yeah, there's just been no question about it. He has delivered. You know, he managed to play some sharp chess against Napomniachi. He kept insanely calm. And then he knew what strategy to take against Levon Aronian and also Dubov. He completely dominated those two matches. So very much a deserved winner of the Air Things Masters. Mm. And we are now joined by uh, Levon Aronian. He takes the second place in the Air Things Masters after this uh, final one. Uh, what's your reaction? What's your reaction? <laughs> uh, it's a mixed feeling. Yeah. Yes, I'm upset with the way I played in the finals, but generally I've played well in the tournament. Well, you played extremely well in, in the tournament, definitely. Um, what was this final day like for you, you knowing that you had, had to make at least uh, one win here? Yeah. I knew that I have to take risks, but uh, yeah, probably I was a bit uh, taking a bit uh, strange decisions. 
I have to say, uh, the second game, uh, C5 was uncalled for. I, mean, I just uh, refused to repeat the moves. I thought Rook A7, Bishop B8, and uh, this is not a, not a way to play in the final. Mm. I can see uh, you're disappointed, but uh, one thing's for sure, Levon, you have definitely proven that you are extremely good also in this online format now. Heading into 2021, a lot of tournaments. Uh, what should we expect from you in the Champions Chess Tour going forward now? Well, uh, I, uh, I look forward to continue uh, showing my best, uh, trying to... Uh, you know, solve uh, some problems I had during during the tournament. I mean, with uh, with self discipline, so this type of things. Hmm. And what has been the highlight for you, though? Looking back at the, these nine long, very intense day, what has been the highlight for you? Well, definitely this combination today was very interesting. It was uh, it was. Uh, I think I, I got very excited uh, in the game one <laughs> when I got to sacrifice the rook with check. It reminded me of uh, uh, the game that Spassky won against uh, ah. Bronstein in King's Gambit. It's basically kind of similar. You also give your rook with the check, and then there is no defense. Uh, yeah, but at some point uh, in that the game, uh, of course, he, he could have played d3, which is absolutely brilliant. Uh, he he has to get the same position without the pawn f4. So this game was a uh, highlight as an interesting game. Other than that, of course, from tournament, of course, beating uh, Vashila Graf and mm. uh, uh, Nakamura was very nice, very pleasant, because I lose to them uh, quite often. Mm. Well, Levon, uh, we thank you so much for all your brilliant chess and, and for so much entertainment in uh, this tournament. And we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, guys. Look forward to the next tournament as well. Definitely, we do as well. Thank you, Levon. Levon Aronian, he takes second place. I mean, that's, that's impressive. We do have a 38-year-old and a 33-year-old, still very young, but two of the most experienced chess players fighting it out in the final. It was a great final. It was an amazing final. I didn't expect it to be so tense or titanic battles between open preparation and psychology. But, you know, we, you know, the thing is, we didn't entirely expect it to be a final between Rajabov and Aronian. But, you know, these are no underdogs or nor is it surprising in any way because these are the best players in the world. That's it, you know, they are just absolutely unbelievable. So I'm super happy that yeah. it's Levon Aronian and Roger Boff facing off against each other. And yeah, it's just brilliant chess. A brilliant chess. All right. Well, uh, actually, the Air Things Masters isn't quite over yet. We have gotten our winner, but it's still to be, si to be decided who will take home the third place. It's going to be Maxim Vashielagrav or Daniil Dubov. They have won uh, one game each today. They tied yesterday's match. So if we have a winner in this game, then we will have the third place decided. And what's happening, David? Yeah, this one, it is looking tense still. White does have a big advantage. White has a very strong pawn in the middle there. A very far advanced pawn, but it's not easy. There's still a lot of tension. Um, anything could still happen here. So although the computer does give White a winning advantage, Daniel Dubov, he still has uh, some potential to fight back in this position. Uh, both players as well, with a lot of time on the clock. Maxim Vashlingkraft, so quick. <laughs> Still got 10 minutes left. And if we bring up the analysis board, we can see maybe why White is the favourite in this position. It is because of these, oh, these two very far advanced pawns. Two potential queens here, and Black's pieces will be tied down defending it. Meanwhile, Black's strength lies in this knight. An octo knight, as Yavanko always calls it, this knight controls so many squares, eight strong squares. It's also nicely anchored by a black pawn in the middle here. So although white is probably in charge and these pawns will cause some damage a bit later on, black has to hope that somehow he can use the fact that this knight is so well placed. I would be trying to get my rook and my queen active here with black. If he can use one of those pieces to coordinate with the black knight, he might be able to fight back. That last move, however, may be a bit slow. Um, just pushing a pawn, it's not clear. 
whether that actually improves the black position enough. All right. Well, we are actually now also joined by our good friend uh, Simon Williams, Ginger GM, sitting in London. Hi, Simon. Hello, everyone. Ooh, How are you all doing? I, I love your shirt. Yeah, it's the last day. We're, we're going to spice it up a little bit, right? Very so, nice. Yeah. <laughs> what, so, Simon, Thanks. what's your reaction to the final and, and having the winner, Timur Rajabo, of the first major in the Champions Chess Tour? I think it's been a fantastic day and uh, he deserved to win the tournament. Certainly, no doubt about that. He played very cleverly throughout the tournament, not just on the board, but psychologically. I, I hear he mentioned in the interview there, his sort of game plan was not to impress spectators, but to just play good chess. I think he impressed spectators as well. Yeah. Uh, and he was he was just keeping things under control, which was a very good thing and waiting for his opponents to make mistakes in a lot of the games. Mm. So, yeah, and it was lovely seeing him cry, wasn't it? Yes. That, that bit of emotion was great. So How, how rare is that in chess to see the winner just so happy, so relieved, so much stress just coming out that they actually cry? I'm, I, I mean, it's pretty rare. I, mm. I'm pretty sure I shed a couple of tears against the two people in the studio <laughs> you're, you're sitting with there. Were they happy remember, tears or, or sad tears then? I, I think mainly sad tears <laughs> um, from me. I remember y Yvanka chased my king up the board and checkmated me. David just always crushes me. So, uh, <laughs> so it's, it, it's pretty rare. Um, but it's it's lovely to see it because it's you have to think the amount of effort that goes into playing it's it's like doing an exam for every day lots of times and all that tension is just released and that moment where where he cried it's it's just a beautiful moment I think yeah yeah Ivanka David have you ever cried after chess games before. Uh, yes, <laughs> it does tend to be a bit more on the sad side, you know, when you've lost a, a critical mm. game. But uh, yeah, I'm, there have been tears and dances of happiness. Mm. And uh, I completely relate to that, like, overwhelm of emotion after you, you've won such an important event. Yeah, and likewise, actually, just as recently as uh, the end of 2019, I lost a key game in the final round of a tournament. Yeah. The, there's a huge amount of money online. Um, also, my career goal of becoming world champion, it was snatched away and I cried a lot after that. But my next tournament in the final round, I managed to win in the last game to get England some medals. Ah. And I cried with joy after that. So roller coaster of emotions for sure. Fantastic. All right. Well, we are now following um, the game, the, the last game in the match for the third place. David, what do you think about what's happening on the board here? Ah, uh, Simon? Or Simon. <laughs> I'm missing I, you guys. I, it, it looks very good for White at the moment. I mean, White, as David pointed out, has this very strong pawns in the middle of the board. And uh, I also like White's rook and bishop. They're very actively placed. Having a rook on the seventh rank is, is, is a very aggressive placement of the rook. The bishop is sort of striking across the board. So at the moment, I would, I would probably I'd go for MVL to, uh, uh, to win this one and take third place. Uh, I don't know the time, though. The time's pretty low. OK, they've both got enough time. So, yeah, MVL to win, I'm going to say. Mm. And, uh, I mean, what a match this has been for the third place here. Uh, is it only one game ending in a draw here? Yeah, I mean, these guys are just, like, mad, aren't they? I mean, they, they don't do draws. Uh, yesterday was crazy because Duboff took a, a two-game lead, but then MVL won the next two games. Uh, I think they're two of the most aggressive players in the whole tour. So when you've got like fire versus fire, you're bound to have some kind of explosion. And they are, they're doing that on the board at the moment, certainly. Yeah, what's happening, David? Yeah, it does look like White has snatched off a pawn on that right side. Um, so currently, White is a pawn ahead and we do see a trade there, knight for bishop. White's two strong pawns, though. They're both surviving. Even if one of them drops off, it does look like uh, a potential potential future queen there. And um, just while we see these simplifications, uh, Simon, we've seen two t tournaments now of the Champions Chess Tour. What are you expecting from the rest? Who do you think will be favourites to claim the overall title? I mean, I, I think, again, as Rajabov said, it's so open. All these players are capable of winning the tournament. Uh, and it just sort of, I think it depends who's having a good time, you know, who's on a roll. I think Magnus has got a lot to prove. So um, in the next one, the next tournament, I, I would be certainly back in Magnus, being the world champion, having that to prove. He's going to be really hungry for the title. And 
betting against him is going to be a dangerous thing to do. Uh, but it, it's just fascinating. Anyone can strike and have a good run if it's their day. Mm. We did actually see Magnus Carlsen. He was super frustrated, of, of course. But after uh, being out in the quarterfinals, his tweets actually revealed he was maybe more frustrated than we're used to. Yeah, he was. He certainly came across as a bit dejected, mm. and that was a little bit surprising. I, you know, but Magnus is an amazing player. I happen to think it actually wasn't a reflection of his form. I think perhaps it was maybe the time zone, or maybe he mm. was in a country that was a bit too warm. And uh, I think we're going to see a, a very inspired Magnus on February's tournament. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, Simon, uh, we have a. Okay, let's do this move first. Your thoughts on this move, uh, Simon? Um, I, I think White's still doing well here, um, but it's not as clear because the more pawns that get swapped off the board, uh, I think the nearer a, a draw it gets. But as you can see from the swingometer, I don't know if that's what you call it, <laughs> but it is it is plus five there. Um, and MVL looks pretty pretty chilled out, doesn't he, at the moment? He looks he looks kind of relaxed, and uh, I think uh, I think it's still going his way, mm. definitely. All right. Uh, so, Simon, our question of today to, uh, today <laughs> is about uh, favorite chess moment. Uh, we're always putting you on the spot with these questions. But what's your wow. favorite chess um, moment? I'm. I, I think it was probably when I first got my grand. Like, it's called a grandmaster norm, and obviously becoming a grandmaster is one of the toughest things to do in chess, and it's everyone's sort of ultimate game gain in a way to get there and uh, I did this by winning a game in the British Championships and I got my first they call it a Grandmaster Norm you need to get three of these and the rating to become a Grandmaster and, and that was I think I was shedding some tears of joy like like Rajabov when when that happened so mm. uh, that was very memorable certainly all right I can definitely understand that there's how many Grandmasters are there in the world what? Oh, there. another tricky question. Yeah, I mean, sorry I, about that. I, I, I think it's actually roughly like 1,800. Wow. Um, I, I, I'm guessing. But now with so many people having resources available to them quickly, that number's in, increasing quite a lot. So, mm. But about 1,800, I, I guess. Wow. You guys are so impressing. Oh. <laughs> I have to say. All right. Well, Simon, it's been a great tournament. A fantastic first major in the Champions Chess Tour. Thank you so much for joining us every day. And... Definitely looking forward to see you again in the next tournament. Definitely. And yeah, thank you so much. And uh, I'll be back next time, hopefully. Looking forward to it. Thank you, Simon. Cheers, Simon. Thank Bye. you. Happy New Year. Cheers. Bye. Happy New Year, guys. Bye. Bye. All right. Our favorite ginger GM, Simon Williams, uh, in London, in England, where you guys are from, uh, watching everything that's happening in the Champions Chess Tour. And we, uh, well, this game, I mean, I'm with my untrained chess eye, I'm just looking at the bar. And I must say, isn't this completely winning for Maxim? <laughs> it is completely yeah. winning, but the players, they don't know that. Mm. They don't necessarily realise that. Uh, Maxim, he looks confident, but there are still pitfalls. There are still tricks to avoid. As Simon mentioned, if pawns disappear, um, then it will become much more difficult for White to convert his advantage. Um, if we do bring up the analysis board, what do you think, Ivanka? Which pawn is more dangerous? Black's far advanced pawn, two squares from becoming a queen, or White's pawn? Yeah, I think that there's some there is some danger in the in the board actually because I was just looking at this position. I was thinking, well, you know, Dubov has pushed forward with his pawn. Why not push forward with the white pawn as well? And I'm thinking that if that happens, there might even be a case where he just absolutely doesn't even bother to defend that pawn. Yeah, I think white will, black will actually ignore this. He will sacrifice his rook. Uh, so maybe the most natural move, pushing this pawn forward, it might be a blunder. Black will push forward. If white captures this rook, making a new queen, black will just recapture. And suddenly, although black is a pawn down, he will make a new queen and black will save this game. And indeed, actually, in the current position, we do see there, um, just below the screen, Black, white only has one winning move, so white is winning, but he has to find the move, bringing his rook across, shifting this rook across, attacking black's rook potentially, and also keeping an eye on black's pawn. So, although you're right, Kaya, white is completely winning. He has to find this move, mm. bringing the rook across. This is not the type of position where you're winning long term. You can play any move and it's going to win. There's only a tiny, really small margins here. He has to find this one shot. Oh, and he does! <laughs> he does. Wow. We do, we do doubt the power of the magician, the magician Maxim, and uh, he finds it. The, the, the great thing with these two players is that when it comes to these aggressive opportunities and these tactical tricks, they're 
deliver. They see and spot the danger. Yeah, especially Maxim Vashligrov with his mathematical background, um, with his degree in mathematics. He's very good at calculating these lines. Um, he just works them all out. He sees um, the final destination very quickly. He knows what he's always aiming for. And um, I think maybe Daniel Dubov, head in his hands, he might have missed that move. He might have suddenly got optimistic that he was holding the game. And he actually would have been holding mm. the game, saving the game, if Maxim hadn't found that move. But it's looking difficult now. Yeah. Um, Black's pawn simply will be controlled by White's rook. Um, it does look like White's outside pass pawn, that white pawn on the left uh, flank there, it will be the most dangerous of the two pawns. And it doesn't look like Daniel Dubov has a way to even try and save this game. Um, for me, I would just push the black pawn forward and hope for the best. Um, it shouldn't quite yeah. work. The computer yeah. actually saying that that is the only move that will make Daniel Dubov's situation even worse. Yes. Um, <laughs> I think when in doubt, push past pawns. <laughs> um, just what else is there to do? It's hard to find an another useful productive move. If Black's pawn disappeared, if Black's very far advanced, advanced pawn disappears, he just has no counterplay. He just has to sit passively and wait for the doom yeah. uh, to come. Yeah, we're fully expecting that Black pawn to advance because, like David says, there's uh, nothing, nothing to be done otherwise. And uh, the alternative is res resignation, and that's uh, never a pleasant thing. Yeah, Daniel Dubov, he definitely won't resign quite yet, but if he doesn't push the pawn, he might be forced to. Um, I'm struggling to think what else he could be considering here other than pushing that pawn. Daniel Dubov now under one minute. Um, yes, he has a difficult position, but he needs to at least bluff and pretend that he has some counterplay. The Black's pawn is his best chance. It's his best hope. Um, what else could Daniel Dubov be thinking about here? I'm not sure. Maybe he wants to move the Black Rook away, but then the Black pawn will drop. Yeah, and only 30 seconds left uh, of this game, possibly left in the tournament for Daniel Dubov here. Mm -hmm. He needs to make a move. Yeah, perhaps this is a, it's a situation. Okay, he has moved the black rook, so now it's attacking the pawn, which is White's pride and joy. <laughs> yes, but of course, but okay, can he take that? No. So um, white has options here. Um, I think maybe one option is stronger than the others. Um, Black just moving the rook across here. He is eyeing up this white pawn. So it's a double attack right now against the white pawn. If white chooses to capture Black's pawn, for example, rook takes pawn, there's a bit of a decision to be made. Okay, he doesn't do that, but Black essentially could save the game perhaps by taking white's pawn off the board. We do instead see white st being stubborn and persisting with this white pawn. Um, Black's pawn pushes forward, but now we see why Maxim Vashaldorov, he's in complete control. The queen steps back. Together, the queen and rook, they are controlling Black's pawn. White's pawn, meanwhile, nicely defended. Um, white also has the idea of breaking the blockade of this pawn. Black's rook temporarily stopping it from marching forward. White will break this blockade by pushing his rook forward attacking the black rook mm -hmm. and giving check. Um, and essentially, I think white is going to win this game yeah. because black's pawn just cannot push forward anymore. This can, pawn is well controlled. With 10 seconds left, I'm desperately thinking of ways that Dubov can perhaps hold the position. Can he slide the queen at one square diagonally and try to attack the pawn? Okay, he has, well, he made his move with one second left there, David. Whoa. And, uh, and the he, bar just go, shoots in the air. And uh, you can just see Maxim's inst instant response. He just checked. I think he might be going for a checkmating attack. Oh, so yeah. Maxim Vashilagrav. And the, actually, we do see the computer says mm. plus 100. That means the computer sees a forced checkmate. <gasps> White now going for checkmate with his queen. Um, the Black King forced out into the open. Um, Daniel Dubov, he knows that Black King will not survive much longer. Um, I don't think there's any way for Black King to survive. If it steps back, Checkmate will happen. It's mate in two. Um, instead, the king steps forward. White's queen continues to chase it, snapping off a pawn as well. Um, White's queen, it is doing the hard work. Now we'll see the white rook join the party. Mm. Black's king is out in the open, no shelter. It's doomed. And Daniel Dubov, he resigns. He resigns, and that means that Maxim Vashielagrav snatches that third place. Wow, after... I, this must have been the most impressive fight for that third place with all of the games except one ending with a win. Maxim getting most of the wins here then. And he is the winner in this match against Daniil Dubo. Wow.
I mean, these games, with only one ending in draw, how rare is that, David? That's extremely <laughs> yeah. rare. These top players, they're all so good that they often balance each other out. But seven out of the eight games they played in, against each other were decisive. Seven decisive games. Yeah. That just shows how combative they both are. And yeah, they're not very solid, but they do love to play for the win and gave us so much entertainment. Mm. Yeah. And we did get in quite late in, in this game after following Timo Rajabo, the winner of the tournament. But where did Maxim eventually win this last game? So the key to Maxime's victory came at this moment. We did say that the most natural move in chess is to push this pawn forward, push those past pawns. But this time, the natural move, it would have rebounded. It would not have given white a win. Black could push his pawn forward. And when white captures this rook, um, black will recapture. And next move, making a new queen is unstoppable. Black would be right back in this game. Instead, Maxime Vashelegrav found a very cunning idea. He used his rook to block black's rook and its support of his own black pawn. And just a few moves later, we saw Black's Rook sidestepping, White's pawn suddenly doing the damage, and White's queen stepping back, keeping complete control over the black pawn. And when Black brought his queen forward to try and support this pawn, we saw Maxime Vashelegrav pounce. He took advantage of the fact that the black king is not entirely safe. He dropped his rook up to the top of the board here, giving check to the king. The king stepped forward, and now a checkmating combination here. Um, the queen steps forward, attacking the black king. Um, the king is checked. It only has one square. The white queen as well, protected by the white rook. Black king had to jump out into the open, but kings don't like such vulnerable, such airy squares. And we did see a very accurate move here. White gave check. If the king steps backwards, we'll see checkmate. Um, the queen would step back and this would be checkmate. The black king completely trapped. Um, instead, the black king stepped out even further into the open after this check. Black king stepped forward and a few minutes later, Maxime did use the remaining attacking piece. He used this rook to bring itself down, giving check. The black king it could survive maybe one more move, but it, there's just no shelter. Checkmate is inevitable. Maxime Vachelagraf showed off his ruthless killer instinct there. And we are now joined by the third place winner, Maxim Vajelagrav. Congratulations on getting that third place. And I mean, are you feeling exhausted right now after the most interesting and entertaining third place match? Um, yeah, it was definitely a very difficult match. And um, especially considering I didn't feel so well. Uh, I mean, I, I was already feeling exhausted and uh, Daniel gave me a, a lot of interesting positions to think about uh, in both days. So, yeah, that was really tough. Mm. What What is it about your styles that just give us this super public uh, friendly games, just so entertaining to watch for everyone? Um, well, I think there were a lot of uh, unnecessary blunders on my side. Um, which made the games, uh, well, at least entertaining. Uh, I'm not sure about interesting, but definitely entertaining. And um, yeah, I don't know. I just got off to the, such a wrong start and uh, I managed to, to recollect myself uh, at the end of the day, but I, I really didn't feel uh, like it was a good day of chess. Mm. And Maxime, the tournament ended on a high for you today, but um, it's a new year, a new start. What are your goals for this year? Um, what's next for you? Uh, my next event is in Vike, so I'll be playing there, hopefully. Uh, next week, I, right? Pro, pro, provided I don't get positive to, to coronavirus, but so far... I, ah, crossing our fingers for, for that. <laughs> yeah, I've probably dodged it so far, I mean, for the, since the beginning of the epidemic, so... Um, so it starts, I think, in two weeks, but I'll be there earlier to, um, you know, fulfill my quarantine requirements. Mm. Well, and then obviously, hopefully, candidates tournament being played later this year in 2021. You are showing, showing great chess here already this year. How are you feeling um, before hopefully uh, ending that tournament? Yeah, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be fun, of course. I mean, like... Uh, I'm obviously looking forward to it because well it's been paused for for um, like nine months now, so clearly clearly there's uh, a lot of expectations for me and for other other players involved in the candidates so and even for Magnus because I mean by now he probably also wants to know who, who is going to play in the next match so 
yeah, definitely lo looking forward to, to preparing for that and uh, to be playing um, exciting and good chess. Mm. And uh, will you be indulging in some celebrations tonight? Um, not really. I mean, I, there are a lot of things I should have taken care of before the event started that <laughs> I have not yet done. And given, given that I'm going um, to bike in a few days, uh, I don't think there's much time for celebration. <laughs> All right. Well, Maxim, congratulations so much on a great tournament. And we'll see you again uh, in February when we have the next Champions Chess Tour tournament. And good luck in Vikings as well. Yeah, thank you very much. Good luck. Yeah, Maxim Vajelagra taking home $25,000 as the third place winner in the Earthings Masters. And it is about time to look at the final results in the tournament. We had preliminaries heading into quarterfinals where we did have some huge surprises. Daniil Dubov knocking out world champion Magnus Carlsen and Levon Ronian knocking out Hikaru Nakamura. Wesley So was also out, knocked out by Maxim Vajelagrav. And then in the semi-finals, Timur Rajabov and Levon Ronian, they were the strongest and they did face each other in a very thrilling final. But we did end up with the winner, Timur Rajabov. He won both the matches and he is the first winner of a major in the Champions Chess Tour. And third place, as we know now, it went to Maxim Vajelagrav. It's all done. And here we have the standings in the Champions Chess Tour after two tournaments. Timur Rajabo, he is on top, earned so far $65,000. Levon Aronian just behind him with $45,000. And the top eight players here with Daniil Dubov uh, earning $15,000 in total. They are automatically qualified for the next tournament starting February uh, 6th. Exciting stuff. These other ones will have eight wild cards. Who are we hoping to, to get in the mix there, Ivanka? Well, I'm kind of hoping for Anish Giri because uh, I really like his style. I, I like his banter mm -hmm. and I think no tournament would be quite complete without him. Yeah, we also have a vote. I think the, the premium members on Chess24 and holders of the Champions Chess Tour Pass, they can go to the website and vote. And one place has actually already been voted for and decided, and it is Ding Li Ren. He is going to play that tournament, the Chinese fantastic chess fair. That's, that's, a, that's a good result, I think, for us. That is a good result. He's a great chess player. Dynamic Ding is what I call him. Yeah. And we still are waiting for seven players. It's a regular tournament, so that means 16 players will feature in that tournament. Uh, okay, wow, it's, we're closing into the end of the Air Things Masters. It's been a fantastic tournament. And today, as always, we had a question of the day, Ivanka. We did. We asked everyone at home, what is your chess, your favorite chess moment? And uh, we had some great stories, great images. And here are some of our favorites. Ooh. We have a tweet from Gunther Blauvens, my favorite chess autograph. Oh, so, OK, my, this is one from Marion Otetea. My favorite moment is when at a national chess competition, I met a girl Aww. and fell in love with her. Now we want to explore more places and to see you on Valentine's Day with your life partners, visiting the world without restrictions and happy with your family. Fantastic. So very nice to see such lovely tweets. And then here's one from Gunther, Gunther Blaufens. He says, my favorite chess autographs on a football field. Ah. And you can see Vladimir Kramnik, Veselin, Topalo, Fabiano, Levon, all taking their posts on, on autograph paper. And then we have a tweet from Stanislav. My mm. favorite chess moment was in the first week of November 2019 when I managed to win those two cups on the left and on the right. And preparations and a smile of Casey made my memorable moment. Ah. Chess makes one happy. I also quite like the fish in yes, the middle. That is a strange <laughs> trophy, but yeah, absolutely. Um, and our winner Ooh. is, yes, uh, this is from N Nordia um, Asman. My favorite chess moment is when I met my mm. husband. What a great, and you have a great chess wedding cake. And wow. <laughs> Nordia, you are a winner of our Air Things device. Uh, one of these beautiful objects that measure the air quality in your room. So congratulations. Well, actually, congratulations on more levels because chess found her, her husband. So. Definitely. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Yay. And another uh, one who's had a 
Great day today, a beautiful chess moment is Timo Rajabo, who is the winner of the Air Things Masters, the first major in the Champions Chess Tour. Finally, Ivanka, we got more than a month now until the next um, Champions Chess Tour tournament. What will you do this upcoming month? Oh, I will just prepare, <laughs> get <laughs> yeah. ready, get ready, get motivated for the chess because it's just absolutely inspiring to see these chess players get out into the action mm. and I've loved every second so far. So I'm motivated and start playing online chess even more. How about you, David? What will January be about? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm the same. I'm going to be playing a lot online. I'm going to be watching some ch videos on Chess24, Chessable. I'm also going to practice my skiing skills. Ah, <laughs> great time for that. January, a lot of snow in Norway. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the first major in the Champions Chess Store is finished. The Air Things Masters with Timur Rajabo being a fantastic winner of the tournament. We have been so happy to celebrate Christmas with you guys, to celebrate New Year's with you guys during this. This tournament. I'm so happy it's 2021. We're heading into a fantastic Champions Chess Store with eight tournaments to go. So a lot of fun still to come. Thank you for being with us for this tournament and we hope to see you in the next one. Bye! Who's the one to crack first? Or is it? Ah, yeah, we have seen uh, pose that we saw mm. yesterday. And you know, we saw it before. Does he capture this? He's thinking about the position. Born made this Italian.